That was by the uh, creator of uh, Interview with a Vampire. Is it, it didn't Byzantine get that much or hype. Byzantine? It's probably Byzantine. I, I'm just. I don't I've only heard it as Byzantine. So. so anyone who does something else that I'm not familiar with is has probably to be killed. Byzantine. Wrong. Probably anyway, wrong. Uh, they should uh, probably just, kill themselves. Oh yeah. God. So yeah, the, the editor will sure take that out. Uh, Byzantine. Did anyone ever see that? No. The first comment but, uh, in chat is Mando. No. <laughs> Mando. I, I haven't been able to bring myself to watch it. I, it's I just can't bad. It. It's funny. I got, it's I got bad. dragged into watching it by a friend, and that shit's <laughs> funny, dude. It's so shit. <laughs> I love Mando. I know, it always with... lifts my spirit. That's a stupid Dorian crocodile full attack. Name and title, they say like three times just to make sure you got it. That's as I they really make yeah. sure that you know his name so that he can be in the episode for four seconds and be completely inconsequential. Yep. Yeah. Really I'm good. sure he'll come back. The big <laughs> crocodilian with the blaster proof inside of his mouth. <laughs> yeah. He's so stupid. Uh, I, I, yeah, uh, if the whole season was out right now, I'd watch it all with, with rags for you, Mel, and we'd, we'd laugh the whole way. Yeah, this would turn into an mm -hmm. impromptu live stream reaction of <laughs> Mando season three. What dumb shit happens today? And don't worry... Uh, the EFAP TV episodes are on the way for that one, folks. All right, it's just mm. we've been working a lot of stuff. You got your Last of Us. That's still we got another episode tomorrow for that. Sex. Yay. It's gonna be interesting. Who knows what's gonna happen? Yeah. Um, but yeah, sorry, we I were know. just talking about vampires or something, or whatever it is. I, I couldn't have been bothered with uh, Mandalore, but I had a I had an argument with somebody online. He can't take off his helmet uh -oh. ever, right? That, that's what the, that's what the uh the, <laughs> it's a good question only, <sighs> only eat and it has to be in private there are no family dinners no, it's not in even, Mandalore. no i don't know that that was the it, every time she talks about it it's removing the helmet at all yeah yeah i think that's, that's, shitty, yeah. that's shitty writing though but then if you want to yeah, be like mm -hmm. well no it's just as long as he's not seen with it off but then episode four of season one is still bizarre when the, the kids are just one casual glance away from seeing him without it mm -hmm. that was, that was either, well it's the thing either way that's a bad scene for him yeah. Regardless I mean, you, of what the helmet rule is. Because she says, did you ever remove your helmet? Then you are banished or whatever. That's what she says. Did you ever remove your helmet? That, yeah. Like a straight up question. No qualifiers. So that makes me think that he's never allowed to remove his helmet. Like, But they have to what, eat and like take care of their fate. Like that's the thing. It's dumb either way. And the show seems to bounce between the two. So I, I, I went a step further. I went in like a deep dive. I'm like thinking like, what are the all the ways and reasons why you'd ever need to have your face exposed i i wrote a whole tw uh tweet about like i think 12 different things so not only to eat eating drinking uh cleaning your face so you didn't get all the oil dirt and gunk that would become turn your uh, your face into like an acne covered monster whatever face, well if you right? keep the helmet on Shaving. during sex it doesn't matter so <laughs> yeah the helmet <laughs> stays on <laughs> uh but no i was thinking like eye care what if you can't see what if you need to get an optometrist to, to check your eyes what if you need to get your teeth work uh, like uh brush your teeth what if you need to get a tooth pulled what if you need to get a cavity filled mm -hmm. like there's so many reasons why you need to have your face exposed now <laughs> everything your visor just breaks and you in the back need to repair tank. it yeah 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 your, if your helmet breaks your visor breaks you need to debug your helmet Is there a, are you like immediately banished forever Helmet Back to tank will fix the helmet. Lady. I don't even remember this dumbass show. Is the rule even justified <laughs> at all in any way? Or well, it's religious it just... or whatever. So. <laughs> yeah, but they, like, I don't think usually they know. there would be something underpinning that, you know? Like, but I It'd guess be much... just, just don't take the helmet off because we need it for marketing. It would be much like basically, you know what it, it probably came from? It's just like the helmet is cool, the helmet stays on. That's probably the entire thought process. And then mm -hmm. somebody is like, what if that's part of the lore? It's so fucking but, stupid. Huh? Well, it's what, the it, what it Marvel. Yeah, what it what it what it should have been, it should have been something kind of like uh like in Islam where you pray to pray to the, the sun rising sun or whatever every every so or often Mecca. throughout the day. It should have been something along those lines where certain times of the day or certain periods of the day it must stay on. But the idea that you can never remove a helmet after a certain point in your life that's just I like that though it should have been something less retarded like islam well <laughs> i mean even the characters in the show are making fun of mando for his retarded cult so i think he's like it's not a cult <laughs> Blah. it's not a cult it's a cool club <laughs> it's a cool club it's a tight-knit community of religious-minded individuals that promotes tolerance and love and 
This is the yeah. way, though. This is the way. That's the thing. When you're a part of them, they're like, we're going to do your ceremony to put your helmet on. You're like, and I can never take it back off. They're like, nope. And you're like, can we delay I... the ceremony? Like, can we, <laughs> can we do it later? Like, um... Can I do it on my deathbed? I haven't what do you think had about... a shower you... today, so I kind of want to do that first. Uh, hold no, up. Don't we make the rules here? Can't we just can we just allow ourselves to shower? We have a second Mandalore council or something. Like the think council. about it. It goes even deeper. Like the most effective way to take out a, man, a Mandalorian would be to just sneak up behind him, take his helmet off. Oh no, we saw your head. You're now excommunicated forever. But I have the dark saber. Shouldn't I be the leader? No, shut up. <laughs> Fucking dark saber. Dark is so cool. I it's like, hate Star Wars. Whoever has cool. the dark saber is such a cool character. They keep hammering down. It's like, cool. oh, they didn't follow me because of the dark saber. Well, I have it. Yeah, but you have to go take a bath now. Yeah, so you're shut stinky. up. Well, hello. Hey, Dev. Hey. Hola. Are we here to talk about Atomic Heart? We've been waiting no, for you. Yes. That's why we're talking about are Star we, are, Wars. Are we going to, to all of us are going to now pledge our allegiance to the motherland Russia against the <laughs> against the encroachment of NATO and all this shit uh, that we're wait, doing? You guys haven't yet. <laughs> I've already signed up to Collective 2.0. I don't mind. It's, well, it's yeah. just cool to know that this is what happens in Russia because I've never been there. So it's just you play this game. <laughs> this it's is like, every this day. Is Russia. Accurate Russia look, simulator. Look, look, <laughs> looks much more modern than I thought it would be. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they have... It sounds a lot more American than I thought as well. That's the weird <laughs> thing. <laughs> <laughs> that British granny is just running around. A lot of British grannies in Russia. Mm. You leave Granny Zena alone. No, Zena. I will talk about her a Zena. lot today. Oh, probably. whatever. Oh my god. Um, all right. Well, the most reasonable thing for us to do is probably go, as they say, around the horn and give a quick version of our experiences with the game and uh, I guess what uh, what we thought broadly of it. Uh, Rags, what should we do in terms of a, an order? Who knows? Let's do all the people who actually played through it, and then we'll have uh, myself and Theo <laughs> and I'm bringing, uh, and we could be at the end, uh, and then we can do our uh, little take as well. So sort of cap Did you guys only off. try it? You guys only no, I, it I'm having it. a, I've got a computer issue right now, which I'm trying to solve by the way if there's anyone in chat who knows a shit ton about computers dm me on discord please it's been well, uh, weeks and weeks so i know um, a shit ton about computers what's the problem oh we, let's do this another time <laughs> let's uh, do it another time so, <laughs> the um <laughs> uh, basically crashing issue the game works uh, everything works perfectly on my computer but whenever i play a game like 30 minutes into it the game just crashes to desktop um so uh anyway um, bu, bu, oh, yeah, bu, bu, I, can, I can DM you later if you like. We can talk about. Please it, like, do. Yeah. yeah. I I, okay. I think I I've, I've been running through a whole bunch of attempts to fix it, and sometimes they work for a little bit, and sometimes they don't. Uh, so we will, we'll see. But well, yeah, those who played the game, I think they should go first, and then those of us who have just watched the live streams, we can cap it off at the end. Very well. Uh, that means we'll just go from left to right, but with that in mind. Indigo, did you complete it? I assume you did. Yeah, against all odds, I completed the damn thing. Um, yeah. <laughs> against all, right, all odds? Give your <laughs> broad like overview. Yeah. Go! Uh, liked it. Did the, it took a different direction, both gameplay-wise and story-wise, than I thought it would. Um, enjoyed it, but like basically had to temper my expectations because it was not the sort of Bioshock-esque game that it kind of purported itself to be. Easy um, right into some really, really uh, game debilitating bugs that I was able to. What's that basically word? Basically, game debilitating. Sorry, I have my aligners in. Um, that that's definitely the word. Carry on. That's so okay. rude. Uh, you nailed it. But uh, yeah, I'll get into that later. But uh, yeah, I had to, I had to basically go into the d data files and fix some some uh, major issues with the game. But uh, oh, okay. was able to finish it and liked it. Uh, have a lot of thoughts about it, both good and bad. And uh, but yeah, it was definitely not the type of game it was probably advertised to be. So I could see people being disappointed by that. And also, performance-wise, it was great, but a uh, lot of bugs, a lot of bugs and uh, mm. issues. So yeah, it, it's not quite the game I thought it would be, but I enjoyed it all the same. So Mark, go. Hi everybody. Um, so I I did finish Atomic Heart. I'm pretty happy about the fact that it was on Xbox Game Pass, and I did not have to pay seventy dollars for it because <laughs> that's also ninety three forty nine Canadian on Steam. Not a, not a good time. 
to be <laughs> a Canadian gamer these days. But uh, when a game like this is on Game Pass, I think it's kind of perfect because it's a lot of fun at times, but it's also kind of horrible in a lot of ways. So uh, I, I enjoyed my time with it to an extent, but I'm pretty happy that I did not take a specific financial hit. All right. For me, uh, for those who watched my playthrough, you'll find that I said it there. This game is filled with things. It's an absolute crazy mixed bag. Well, as a person who's played so many games in my life, so weird to see a game that just feels like there's stuff everywhere that I recognize, but at the same time, it doesn't feel like it's an actual like game on its own. It feels more like a showcase of stuff that they've seen in other stuff, and then lots of really uh, great efforts toward creating a world that all this stuff is housed in. It's almost like a game museum made by people who, uh, who've who been inspired by other stuff, but haven't quite cracked how or why these things work. Um, I I enjoyed a lot of my time. I also fucking hated several moments. And uh, yes, filled with weird bugs, weird choices for mechanics. Um, but at the same time, plenty of opportunities for fun. So it's uh, the, the, the thing I thought about this game when I was finishing was like, what a, what a conversation piece this will be. There's so many things to say about it, but... That's, that's, that's the broad view. What about you, Metal? Oh, Atomic Heart. Uh, it's a very fun and very confused game. Uh, I've, I've had a blast playing through it. Uh, the, 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 the English dub is something else. Uh, I tried to play it in, in, in Russian, but I realized there's so much conversation happening while you do things, and you can't read the subtitles in that time, so I went back. Yeah. Uh, and just embrace the cringe of the of the dub. Uh, it is. Uh, I mean, people have already been typing crispy critters from the get go, yeah. and I hate that people still write it because I hate it so much. And that means it will never stop. It will never ever stop. It will never go away. Um, crispy critters are eternal. I still don't know if the game wants me to take it seriously or not. I think it does, and it. No, I won't. I refuse because your dialogue is cringe, and your character is weird. I think someone in my chat said it's, the character is like Duke Nukem, but with like less than twenty five percent of the of the charm or something. Oof. Uh, it's it's quite a weird one. I think there's there's a there's some missed opportunities to have like a really fun shooter kind of dealio where you can fuck around with abilities and whatnot, but it's just it just tries to tell some weird high concept story and fails horribly. Alrighty, uh, that'll be Dev next. Uh, is he here? So, <gasps> I I must admit, I only played half of it. Oh. But, 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 I was there for the whole thing, because me and my friend handed off the controller every once in a while. Oh, that, that's fine, yeah. That's yeah, fine. so I, st I still got to see the whole experience, I still know, I still know what's going on in the game. Um, I watched him struggle more than, than I struggled. But I think he, we also just like had some bad luck of the draw because he got like the glitchier parts and I got some of the easier stuff. Um, the, yeah, all you guys are pretty much correct when you when you like you're talking about how you know it feels like a Bioshock, but kind of not really because there's that there's that open world section in like the middle where it's like okay, well you have Bioshock s controls with the guns and the upgrades and the powers, but now you're doing something a little bit different, and it it, it really feels like they. They had played a bunch of games. Okay, no, no, you know, what, you know what it feels like? It feels like they, they took, like, Bioshock, maybe Skyrim, maybe some other games that were really popular about 10 years ago, and then just slept with them under their pillow. <laughs> and then absorbed some knowledge through osmosis, and then made their game. And that's basically Learned what Atomic it. Hearts is. All right, which then we'll go back from left to right, but with the peeps who have not... Uh, it fully at least uh fringy go first um yeah i'm part way through i'm playing it now i yeah i'm gonna have the least to offer on this one um i presently find it kind of like incoherent it seems like there's a lot of elements in play all at once but i'm not seeing like what it's all funneling into as sort of a, i guess a core like experience or statement that the game has to offer um, and I'm finding it occasionally fun and occasionally frustrating. That's more or less the gist of it for me. Uh, which makes us jump over to Ragu. 
All right. Uh, so I have not played this uh, aforementioned computer issues. Um, I watched Mahler's play through, took notes. I've got my notes pulled up here on the right hand side. Whoa. But the I guess the shorthand observation is, wow, what an incredibly visually appealing game. What a what an so much work and effort went into these wonderful designs, the architecture, the robots, all the knickknacks and doodads. I love the way that this looks. I mean, this it really does look like a Soviet Bioshock. And um, you always wonder between the time a trailer first releases and the finished product, how much of that will change. But at least visually, I think it kept an incredibly awesome Soviet city of the future vibe to it. And I really, really appreciate that. Um, of course, the dialogue and the story um, are, are cringe, awful, <laughs> uh, terrible. <laughs> Um, the game is horrifically poorly paced in terms of how these are delivered to the player. The gameplay looked pretty fun. Um, I can see how you could get a lot of, uh, you, you could have a lot of fun with uh, the enemy types and with the stuff that you have to, you know, shoot them with. Um, and, and there's a, there seems to be a decent amount of variety in the places that you go. I was thoroughly impressed visually with the boss fights. Um, but uh, ultimately, it seems like a massive mixed bag because much like other games, that might be you know, have decent gameplay and be visually very, very appealing. Um, if you have characters in a story that are just awful and you hate, you know, like like Wolfenstein Youngblood, then they're just sort of this grime that covers the entire thing sometimes, and that just affects the whole experience. Um, I, will, I do plan on playing it, though, once uh, my computer's back up and running in that regard, because um, I do want to experience it. But wow, what a what an incredible mixed bag this game seems to be. Alrighty. And finally, Theo, what are your Hello. thoughts on this work of art? Okay, so I guess for context, I haven't touched it and I, I wouldn't unless this was sincerely a Bioshock level game because I tend to prefer faster shooters when I'm looking at for FPSs. So hmm. unless it was really something special, I probably wouldn't have touched it. Uh, however, I've seen everything that the game has to offer, and it's kind of weird because it feels it uh, it feels like a AAA product in the sense that it's got this you know design by committee. It's got all of the stuff in there. It's got all of the trappings. It's doing all of the things. It's doing it's pulling itself in a bunch of different directions to cover all of its bases. But rather than feeling cynical in that sense, rather it feels sincerely incompetent. <laughs> if that makes any sense. Like, the developers sincerely really just had so many different ideas, and they really wanted to get them all into the same package, even though that was never going to work out, because it deprives the game of having any sort of core identity to stand by. It's pulling in every different direction tonally, gameplay-wise, in terms of presentation and how it wants the player to engage with it. It's just, it has no idea what it wants to be, but it's not, like, cynical in that sense. Rather, it's just they genuinely didn't understand how to reconcile all the stuff they wanted to get in. I'd be inclined to agree, but uh, there you are. Mm -hmm. That's everybody's intros for what they thought overall. And now I'll, we'll probably just open it up to having a chat about it overall. But I feel like it makes the most sense to start right at the beginning. The first thing I want to say is Very that when I fucking start. started this game, I thought I may have screwed up. Because I... <laughs> When it just okay. drops you onto a boat and everything is happening around you, I was just like, oh shit, uh, have I, like, have I loaded up chapter two or something? Because <laughs> yeah, it, it really it, 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 same it is abrupt. It just starts up. There's not, it doesn't feel like there's much of a, um, and it's kind of hard to say because I could imagine the developers being like, well, what are you supposed to get? And it's like, well, I don't know, like, uh. I guess a lot of these games start with a cutscene, and your character is in some kind of neutral position, not like, I feel like I've already made several choices that I'm unaware of. Uh, uh, and, and I'm just, I'm, I'm here now. And, and again, you get like a sense of like, oh wait, because if you read everything that you get through this game, uh, of this game through the lens of Bioshock, like, oh I guess, because Bioshock and, uh, Bioshock Infinite and Bioshock 2, like the, the, the games that sort of, you get a blast of city as soon as you start. But I feel like already it's like, oh, I think you may have misunderstood how that works. You're not supposed to just go straight in. You usually get like a yeah. subtle intro that, that evolves quickly into a big thing. So the game takes you from the world that you kind of understand to the big fantasy, cool city setting. Yeah, because there's even... Yeah. The, the key is to play that very matter-of-factly, which might be difficult to do, but it's possible. 
to just say, yeah, this is how the world is. It's yeah, to try and get you in, like, feeling this is a bustling world that you're just... There's people speaking, and there's subtitles attached to them, and I'm just like, am I supposed to be reading all of... No? Yeah, okay, we're moving, we're moving. Just I feel pick. like the, uh, the, the obvious way to start would be, I don't know, him in, like, a pretty normal-looking mundane apartment, and then he opens the door, and then, oh, wow, it's, like, this crazy, like, future city. Mm. Yeah, it goes downstairs, gets on whatever this boat is, and then we're here. Yeah. Like, that would have been way less jarring for me. This, like I said, I thought I'd made a mistake. Um, but then I was just like, okay, this is it. This is Atomic Heart. This is what the game is. And that's probably speaks to one issue I ran into throughout the game is that it's either, like, you think you're having a mental breakdown because there's so much dialogue going on at the same exact time, <laughs> or there's, like, an hour without a word. Like, it's such a weirdly yeah. paced game Very in terms of, like, paced, input. Yeah. Yeah, like there's tons of overlapping dialogue where I'm like, oh god, am I supposed to be listening to this person talking about uh, a code to unlock their dog, or should I? Oh, these people are <laughs> complaining about this, or oh god, it, it, this person wants me to put on this thing on my head. Oh, and then and in some cases it's kind of cool because it has like that kind of breakaway system where you can walk away from somebody and you'll be like, not enough time right now, bye. And it's like, oh, that's a cool, de that's a cool detail. But other times you're just like. I've literally had like multiple NPCs talking full on conversations to me at the same time. I'm like, <clears throat> my brain can't take this. <laughs> Sometimes well, the felt... same NPC. Have you ever yeah. felt that like yeah. the 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 Dead Space, Bioshock, uh, people in the world, the games in the world, they know that there's a limit on just how much information they are even allowed to get out through audio logs, text logs of any kind. Like, you, there's a limit, right? You can't you can't go too yeah. far because players are just not going to be able to keep doing that. You get. It's almost like an allowance, and they drip fed, and they're usually dropped in places where they know that you're not doing anything particularly interesting. Like, yeah, this game does not yes. give a fuck. <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> hey, here's an audio log that's ten fucking minutes long. Here's a text log that's like seventeen essays. Here's a cutscene that you're wondering if it's ever going to end. And they yeah. really just... run the they really run the gamut from relevant to the lore and the world to absolutely nonsense. Too. Some of them are just like you're like I. I don't even know what this was trying to get. Was this a joke? That's actually, that creates a problem for me because um, there's some stuff you know, like cutscenes are probably the hardest ones in terms of uh, information, hard information of like, you know exactly, yes, I'm supposed to listen to this and pay attention, fine. But when you come across just like a computer, did how many how many of you guys read everything from the computers? I, I nah. did it for like half of the game, but there was so much nonsense and things that didn't yeah. matter that I just stopped at some point. When you get to the end in these in these archives, there's like ten computers. It's like I'm not gonna read any of them. Fuck you. Oh, yeah. You've <laughs> been wasting my time so much. I don't care. I stopped I, I, I really think... early. Yeah, I, I actually... just for... <laughs> uh, no. Go ahead. Go, go ahead. No, just for context, I, I on a uh, Xbox Game Pass, they actually have a, a an API linking to uh, how long to beat, and supposedly this is an 18 hour game. And it like 25, 30 hours for completionist. I spent about 36 hours on it and I was not a completionist. There mm -hmm. was so I... much just like noise and information and text <laughs> yeah. logs and audio logs and just random shit to read. I started reading most of it, but then eventually I just skimmed through and then I, I read every attachment I ran, I ran across, but there are hundreds of employee dossiers with like social credit scores and backgrounds and stuff. There's just like, <laughs> yeah. so much information and no way to kind of sift the uh, the wheat from the chaff in this game. So yeah, you could you can really dig into all this stuff and most of it's probably completely unimportant. Yeah. And I just like, yeah, I wish there was like a little bit of like I think Deus Ex did this thing where they had like almost a way to highlight important emails so you can kind of look like oh this is something important. This is something I should probably read. But yeah, it's a, a lot of information. I was almost late for Metal's show because it took me a while to finish the game because I killed probably four to six hours wandering around the open world, kind of wondering what the hell the game expected of me. <laughs> I didn't know if it was a stealth game. I didn't know if it was like a Far Cry style game. I wasn't sure what my objective was because I, I had a fundamental misunderstanding of this puzzle. Where you, It's the one where you have to pull the two sort of accordion looking... Um, parts of the okay, statue yeah. to start the festival and i just mm. didn't understand what that like i was like okay maybe i don't i have an ability that i get later that lets me activate this so i just started wandering around <sighs> it, getting into endless encounters of, of respawning enemies that of uh, stealth alerts that would never end and i'm just like what what am i even doing in this game <laughs> and um yeah so i i, I burned a, a significant amount of time just doing that and still managed to not find the AK-47 in a game which <laughs> takes place in Russia. 
I am. Oh, um, well, to be fair, you've got, you've got the sequence yeah. on the screen. You are told uh, how, where where the AK would be, the recipe, and then you get. We'll talk about it in a second. I was going to say what I was looking for was this part nearly actually killed me. It was uh, you find all these pieces for this robot lady, and then she's like, "All right, now we're going to head oh, yeah. to another direction." And the first thought I think I had, I even I don't know if I paused to say it to people, but I was just like, "Please." Don't do it so that we are limited by her walking speed. I swear to God. Yeah, like yeah. if I have to. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You've played video games before. You don't. Well, you know this is bad. No. Don't do it. Yeah. <laughs> that was, I think, one of the two parts of the game that I really didn't enjoy is, is the hunt for all of Claire's body parts because it's just, it's <laughs> like you're constantly coming back to the same spot and you're going over that. You're just retreading the same ground. For and they like, keep like respawning shit tons of enemies to slow you down. Yeah. And the uh, the other part was um in the first act when there's just that there's that long uh dearth where all it is is like plant monsters and there's no lore there's no story there's mm -hmm. nothing and it, it those two parts of the game got to be like a bit too much for well, me but like what it's, is this that's happening on the screen this, she she goes yeah. through this whole area and she just talks about these machines and how they like they do have a use IRL that's beyond yeah. just killing people by the way and it takes I her ages I think it's a joke at the player's expense. I think that's what they're trying to do. <laughs> so this is something we brought up off stream and we're about to bring it up now. There's mm -hmm. a little meme out there where there's a little stick man and he says, Aha, I'm retarded. <laughs> and then someone else says, Oh, look at that retard. And then he's like, jokes on them. I'm only pretending to be retarded. <laughs> 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 so yeah, the problem is... is it... <laughs> Where, when you're like, lol, wouldn't it be, isn't this funny, like, how games will fucking annoy and bore the shit out of you for, like, an hour with crappy things like this? And then you're like, yeah. So Hi, I'm really like, a lot of that, Please don't too. put it in your game. There's another game I played recently that, was that another... had a sequence exactly like this, in that you're looking at a bunch of robots, and it turns out they do actually have real-life functions as opposed to being video game enemies, and that's Hi-Fi Rush. Only in Hi-Fi Rush... It's all done through like uh, data logs that you can just look at. You can just yeah. read the entries for them and then go past. There's no one like they're not actively making fun of the fact that you're having to just walk down a staircase very slowly with someone telling you about all of these things, stopping each time. They wouldn't let me hurt her. <laughs> it wouldn't. Yeah. <laughs> and I feel She's like been a lot. <laughs> She's been through a lot. <laughs> I feel like the P3 was kind of written around that, kind of lampshade the annoying, just busy work they put you through. But I, 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 I here's like a note to all game developers. If you're writing dialogue, it's like, oh, this is effing annoying. I can't stand this. Why am I doing this again? Maybe change your, maybe change your game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, your character saying that this is annoying and awful only emphasizes the fact that this is annoying and awful. Maybe come up with a more interesting scenario. Like, yeah, that really good point about the, Claire sequence that was a, one of the weirdest sequences I've played in a game in that I went around this entire extremely well designed you know visually from a visual standpoint elaborate you know set piece this gigantic facility with multiple branches and and interesting things going on and lore and giant you know set pieces and stuff to put together a robot that I've seen that model of robot like 20 times already. Yeah. It's just like the weirdest sequence in the world. There's even one point, uh, uh, and we're skipping quite ahead, but one point where you actually go outside and there's this whole under, uh, there's a water uh, area and then you have to climb up a, the polymer and you end up getting to a door, which is actually an exit door. You can exit the entire facility. I did that thinking that's what I was supposed to do at that point. Then it told me, oh yeah, you have to go all the way, climb all the way back down. <laughs> Go I think and you did exactly what I body. did. Uh, it was oh, only... I did that too, I think. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's... I, okay, I we're going to have to yep. talk about that then. If every one of us fucking... Did. I thought I was an yeah. anomaly with that shit. Because, yeah, I think it's in here somewhere. It was like, so I, I climbed There's all the way path. up, and then I yeah. looked at the at the marker. It's like, wait, why is it going back down? That's where it came from. <laughs> was What? I was like, oh, and, I guess I went. Yeah, the see, wrong I'm on, way. I'm on the surface world now. Then I sort of like half remember. I was like, wasn't I building a robot? And then someone in chat was like, yeah, yeah you're gonna have to go back. Yeah, and I was exactly. like, oh, fuck it, L. Yeah, <laughs> yeah not only that, but I as well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I okay. I finished that entire sequence with all the platforming and everything like that. Got outside. I'm like, oh shit, these guys are. This is outside. I'm in the open world, and I'm my yeah, objective is yeah. still back there. So I came back in, and I'm like, oh well, I'm not gonna go through all that annoying platform again. I'm gonna jump into the water, and I did, and then I got stuck while climbing out of the water 
and <laughs> I had to restart. And because of the goddamn checkpoint system, I had to do the entire sequence over again. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, it happens. So I, that happened a Actually, couple times. Yeah, that happened to us too because when we climbed out, we got stuck on one of the metal sheets that are kind of yep. laying diagonally. And the, the the room that you're showing right now, Mahler, there's like a bunch of diagonal metal sheets. Yep. And you can very easily get stuck in them, and you just can't, you just can't move. As on. a person who got stuck about thirty times in total across the whole playthrough, I can indeed believe you on that Man, one. Man, I must have gotten super lucky. I didn't get. I don't think I got stuck. There's so game. many different times that I was like, I can jump from here to here, right? And then I'd start, and then I'd be like, you're stuck. And I'm like, ah. Oh. The and then I'd be like, uh oh. Is strong with this one. I'd start to fear platforming because I'd be like, did I save recently? Because yep. I can't just, I yeah, can't just go around willy nilly platforming. Like just this. be your default state as a gamer. Just fear platforming. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I got stuck. I got stuck on the some games. Yeah. I got That's stuck on Prime some... Remastered just came out. It has pretty good first person platforming. It does That's actually. And that, 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 there's, mm -hmm. there's one key thing that Metroid Prime did all the way back in 2003 or whatever that it Downward still does. Tilt? Downward tilt. Yeah. If you're platforming in first person, <laughs> you should, and, and you're, you're making like a jump, the camera should tilt downward a little bit so you can see where you're going to land. Metroid Prime, and I think Prime 2 and 3 all did that automatically, and that should be something that is um, normal in first person platforming, but it's not. It's the only game that I've that I've found that does that. All right. It's a bit easier to control with a mouse and keyboard manually, but for a console, first person shooter especially, it's. I don't know why every game doesn't do it at this point because it it makes it makes a world of difference. There is legitimately so many things to talk about in this game. What I'll keep doing is just resetting us back, <laughs> so that we uh, that we <laughs> might that's fair. talk there's about a couple things around. here and there again. But that's totally fine because, like I said, there's no fucking way we can coherently go through all of it. We'll have to just yeah. uh, run around. Because I was gonna say, like, how did everyone feel about the blast of this world at the beginning? I, I was stunned um, by the performance for an indie game, especially. It, it's a really well optimized yeah. game. Yeah, this will this will probably come up over and over, but the fact that this is this studio's first game, like that's legitimately incredible. Yeah. Um, mm. This is yeah. for a for, for a game that is trying to do so much, that has so many working moving parts, that's got a world that's of this size, this kind of enemy variety, this kind of stuff in it. It is legitimately very commendable. Um, yeah. it never feels like an indie game, really, or at least it didn't look the part for the most. It's, it's not an indie game. It's published by Focus Entertainment. They're, oh, okay, I gotcha, I gotcha. Yeah, they're they're oh. not indie, but yeah, first game, um, first game out of the gate, really, really well, uh, impressive though. Yeah, like I a think... B, B tier publisher. Like they're they're the one. Uh, they're sort of European THQ, I guess. Focus. They did yeah. a Plague Tale, which is pretty good. The first one, at least. Yeah, they did uh, the Sherlock yeah, like games that and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, that second wasn't so yeah. good. <laughs> Surge. Well, well, I guess uh, so. This is the so this is the publisher that did the um, the Sherlock Holmes games. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Although they need it. to get a fucking clue and learn how to write dialogue. Oh, oh, um, yeah. we did it. Um, anyway, uh, kind of from the get go, we should probably talk about it first because it rears its ugly head. First, from the get-go. Are we done with the fucking the, world? Jeez. Well, that, that's... We haven't even started the world. <laughs> I just did. I just introduced it as a well, topic. Sort of, you bastard. Yeah, I know. I, you you I, can I introduce think... a topic, but it's not like starting. What? Point, point <laughs> being, it, it all goes together. It all goes together. It all goes together. All right? Um, how, the, how the protagonist interacts with the world, I think, is very bad. This okay, character does let's not talk about like dialogue, he, then. That's fine. So, well, it's oh, not. Well, I was gonna actually talk about the opening. <laughs> so was I. <laughs> okay. Fine, Dev. You're you're the this guest. Is going as well We're as good the hosts of the game. <laughs> yeah. Crispy critters. We'll, right? we'll all Crispy get to critters. it anyway. <laughs> Crispy uh, critters. I think, no. I, I think I, I'm I'm a bit more forgiving of the opening than you guys might have been, because I still got. I didn't even that get to say what I thought of the opening. Really. Mahler, oh, I thought, I thought you did. I thought you did. Oh, well, sorry. But it's okay. But basically. Fine. I, it it basically I was I, I could I could see what they were going for I could see that, that they weren't doing it that well but it was done well enough that I could tell and I was being a bit forgiving because it is an indie game right so or a, a small public a small I, studio a, a large publisher but still these, these uh, guys, I'll, I'll they're, clarify they're the Munfish is an is an independent developer and they the game is being released by Focus Interactive but Munfish is actually yep. a remote studio so they're they're sort of all over the world none of them are in the same place. They're all just a bunch of people who decided to work from home. That's kind of that kind of makes a lot of sense. 
Yep, same thing with yep. Ori, yeah. Ori in the Blind Forest, Ori in the Will of the Wisps. Moon Studio oh, no. is totally remote. It, it feels like five different studios were told to make different games, and then they kind of yeah. stitched them together. <laughs> <laughs> it feels you like, yeah, I, they were told to make I, five different games, and they kind of succeeded. Interesting contrast to Ori, eh? where a game where everything comes together so well, oh, yeah. and you can yeah. contrast it to this game. Like, wow. I guess <laughs> well, that, uh, that strategy can go either way, huh? I was happily yeah, struck by the, this will being pretty cool and interesting and new and different. I was like, this yeah. feels like a, a sci-fi fantasy crazy nonsense thing, but it all, I don't know, kind of fits together in some ways. And I like the, um, yeah. the crazy, wholesome nature of everyone and everything. And then obviously it's all going to fall apart, which is clearly inspired by um, a Bioshock thing. Because the... Uh, one of the things people said about Bioshock 1 when it was super popular and came out was like, oh, it would have been neat to see this functioning and then as it fell apart and then by the time you hit Columbia and in, in Infinite, they do show you it functioning before it falls apart. I have my own things mm. to say about that, which is going to run, but that's all I'm going to say right now. And then it's mm. like, this game is kind of like that too. They're like, we're going to show them it functioning before it falls apart. And it's like, okay, fun, cool, I guess. But um, this part here where you can get off the boat and start talking to this guy, I think this was already what put me in a really bad place uh, in terms of dialogue. I was already just like, this is a lot of information. I'm not even 100% sure yeah. what they're talking about. And uh, I don't even know if I was supposed to pick this up. And that was kind of what I wanted to add on to what was being said earlier. I couldn't tell the difference between information that doesn't really matter and information that does. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I had the same <laughs> feeling with this guy. I was like, okay, let's go around. Let's check out what his people have to say. By the way, at this point, I had the dub in Russian. So I was reading all Good the subtitles. a lot of reading. I, I said to the stream, I was like, I, I don't think I'm going to be able to... There's a lot of you are listening. And so then you yeah. need to all be reading. And I need to be reading. And it's just like, this makes for a very strange stream. And then I don't know how I'm going to do this when I'm starting to shoot things or solve puzzles. Yeah. yeah it becomes I, very uh... clear very quickly. It's like, oh, you're doing a lot of talking while we're going through these dungeons. And I'm doing things. While I'm concentrating on this, I can't concentrate on the subtitles. While also okay. running a stream. It's like, no, I'm just going to go back to English. About <laughs> it's halfway through the much. game... I tried to go to Russian about halfway through the game after I realized you could have the subtitles in English and the game in Russian, which had to do this, like, go to the main menu and back and forth, whatever. I tried it, but, yeah, there's so much that isn't. There's so much of the stuff that isn't subtitled that I just went back to English as, as yeah. cringe as it was. But even the Russian has some poor delivery and, and recording. Like, some people are just kind of... You could tell that they did all this, like, all the dialogue is done in different... Par probably different countries. <laughs> I mean, I, like... I couldn't, I couldn't tell, but I had people that speak Russian in my, in my chat apparently, and they were like, "Oh, that's some horrible dubs." It's like, is, is it? I, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Russian. Yeah, <laughs> well, so that's okay. the trick with the for, foreign languages. Yeah, when you throw that in there. It's like, eh, hide, you can hide back that bad acting. At least well. I can't tell here. It's like, yeah. <laughs> well, and then yeah, on it top felt of more legitimate, but yeah, on right. top of all of that, then there's just the amount, the sheer amount of information. Oh I yeah, got a, a really bad blast of that. With I speak to that guy for eight move on to the next person that speak to a bull in this kiosk and they're like hello and it's like hi and i can know? i like, can ask oh. her about biology robotics or <laughs> gunsmithing and i'm like dude i, I, I just know. started the game i don't want to get like a <laughs> come on like, you've, just, <laughs> you've just got dropped into demonstrate the game, these like things like halfway through it you haven't been eased into the world at all you've been put on a scripted sequence going through a bunch of things that are like displaying the world to you that you're still probably trying to internalize and properly process so that it actually sits in your mind and then there's that one long really long long conversation with that guy which just dumps even more upon you and then she just heaps even more exposition on top of that like people yeah. can't process this much at once i would there say it's already enough bandwidth to like filter it into your mind it's enough for the average player to walk around and take all of this in you don't need yes. a character reading out and like literal wiki pages of how everything works here it's like you got you can't do this you can't it's yeah not work. um i think the reason they did it is because they knew they would have no other opportunity to do it you know they do a it for the game what do you mean well, no, no, like, they, like, there wouldn't be a festival like this with NPCs selling things or, like, trying to give you a newspaper or whatever. Like, you wouldn't oh, I'm have fine this with that, again. but we gotta, you gotta do it, like, it's, it's pretty much comes down to pacing every time, right? Like, we yeah. have that robot in the kiosk, she could be saying, the dialogue could be way more sprucey, and you could have, like, reason for any of these things happening. People talking as you go past them that give more information, and quicker, dude, fucking quicker. Some of this stuff yeah. is, like, takes forever, it's like paragraphs and paragraphs, talking, 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 just like... You gotta find another way, because I'm up for optional uh, sources of information that are much more detailed, which you could argue a lot of this is, 
but I'd simultaneously argue, like, I don't know which is important again. That's a big problem. Yeah. I'm not sure who I'm supposed to be talking to, if anyone. Yeah, the, and the you're a player who's found their first interactable NPC. You're probably going to talk to them. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And I did, and yeah, I yeah. regretted it. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's just basics of player behavior, which is why, again, I think, you know, it comes down to sincere incompetence. Because they just don't understand how to get all of this information to you or that they don't even need to. Yeah, I'd say Bioshock kind of uh, nailed the sort of drip feed of input that was just enough to get you invested in the world. And they do like a little interlude to get you to introduce you to Rapture, which they obviously, they obviously, this game, the developers worship Bioshock, obviously, because they like did the whole fly around. Here's, here's the different places you can go eventually. Here's the, here's our world, you know, kind of slice. At of least they stopped of short of making but... overt references. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh. You Bioshock right? I, I, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm very much okay. joking. Okay. <laughs> we'll, we'll be referencing Bioshock throughout this more than likely, and we will get to the part where they reference it pretty hardcore, but uh, it's, it's <laughs> the primary influence. Uh... Bioshock 1 is a gold standard in a lot of different ways. I um, I remember getting super into it not too far along away from when I first played Dead Space, which not long ago we talked about how gold standardy that game is Yay. for a lot of different mechanics. Um, lot of things want to be them. Uh, I say them. I don't, I don't think there's that many copycats for Dead Space, but there's a lot for Bioshock. It, uh, Rapture is... Even Bioshock Infinite is a bad copycat of Bioshock, unfortunately. I hope they do better yeah. with um, whatever the next one is. Judas, right? That's what it's called? Uh, yeah. Yes. We'll see yes. about that. It's a new, new studio. New studio, same guy running it. Apparently it's a smaller team, though, than the, the team who made the original About Bioshock 20, 30 people, I think. Yeah. So, but, I mean, like, you don't need that to make a game look nice, even, so... If, as long as the design is really solid, I'm, well, I don't think a bad style. Oh, on. Bioshock yeah, one and two just... had a style to the way yeah, things yeah. were, the, the way that they looked. What are you talking about, Rags? Bioshock funnily... Infinite has a style. Oh, mm -hmm. it yeah, <laughs> yeah, it does. Yeah. Sure, but, sure does. Funnily, yeah. funnily enough, uh, Ghost Story Games is actually Rational Games. He just rebranded. It's the exact same studio. He just after weirdly enough after Bioshock Infinite, Kevin Levine was like, "Hey, I don't want to do big, big, overbloated games that are that like TV. published." And, and he just like by 2k it's not very he, he, weird though it seems like a lot of uh directors of big budget like triple a games have stepped away from those big studios to go to smaller teams or start smaller teams yeah he basically which I feel like he, has a lot he like let go of i think two-thirds or like 80 percent of his oh i think it was even staff. more than two-thirds yeah because yeah, the like team most was of like maybe staff, 200 yeah. 300 and uh ghost story i think this was called is like yeah. 20 or 30. That's uh, but it is, it is the same company. That makes Deep yeah. Galactic. Yeah, technically the same company. Yeah, but that's too. happened a lot with people where, like, <clears throat> you'd assume that being able to direct, like, this huge AAA game is, like, the dream job. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's, mm -hmm. like, a really challenging and frustrating experience. Well, hey, it reminds me of all those uh, VFX artists who end up working for Disney in the animation dungeons. Oh, well, yeah. I guess this is different, right? Because these are the guys in charge, but it's like, I guess if you're in charge of a big team, how much of the game dev work that you probably started doing and like doing, how much of that are you doing, you know? Compared to if you're in a team of like 20 or 30 people. Yeah, yeah you that... have so much more creative control and stuff like that. and You just so... get to actually, yeah. you know, do some do what you want to do, like, kind smart, of. Right? Rather than just having to be an administrative, like, you know, in charge of all of the managerial stuff um or maybe he really thinks bioshock infinite sucks maybe he knows <laughs> maybe, i saw people discussing it the other day very negatively and there was a tweet that i really enjoyed being like wait do we not like it now is that is that i saw official a, now? <laughs> I, I saw a tweet that was funny along those lines that said it's kind of crazy bioshock infinite is like one of the it's like one of the few things where there has been an absolute reversal in the perspective on this game yep when it came out, it was getting Game of the Year awards left, right, and center. Uh, and now it's just generally regarded to be bad. And there's a lot of different good. reasons for that. But, you no, know, yeah, I agree. And, and it's interesting because um, one of the things he was getting shout out for, in regards to what you just said in terms of its reception, people were showing this tweet Cliff Blazinski put out where he was like, it's a pity Roger Ebert has passed because video games just got like one of the most seminal and impressive representations of games as art in the form of Bioshock Infinite ever. 
Uh, <laughs> like, why would why statement. would why would Cliff Blazinski, who's been in the industry at that point, would have been like 15, 16 years? Why would he have said something like, "Does he not think Unreal is art?" Or does like, he not does he think that? that bio well, I'm sure he would say using? he would say no. They're all. It's just that this is the best one we've ever had, or something like that. I mean, uh, yeah, that was. 2013, I've said this a lot, but it's true. 2013 was the year when I think games journalists and like that sphere were the most insecure about their jobs and their profession. I mean, insecure in terms of that they thought that people thought they were a joke or something. And so you had like The Last of Us and Bioshock Infinite and maybe Grand Theft Auto 5 to some extent, where it was like they're kind of lashing onto it. it's like RC. Ah, games are mature and serious and tell great stories. It's like, where have you guys been like forever? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Under a rock. Yeah. That's very Man, that actually reminds me of something, because... So this is a bit off-topic. I hope you guys don't mind. Oh, we is, don't mind. What? We, we can we can round on it about EFAB, a bit. <laughs> Engine wow. on EFAB? Bullshit. Bullshit. Have you guys kept your finger on the pulse of JRPGs are racist? Yes. That's, uh, it's been <laughs> wonderful. Oh, that, because they're not <laughs> putting, happening uh, right now. People it's happening right now. Finger on the yeah. pulse of racism. Yeah. Yeah. No, no. It's the Skill Up interviewed Yoshi P, or Naoko Yoshida, who is the guy who is the one who runs Final Fantasy XIV and is the director of sixteen. And uh, he is not a fan of the term JRPG, and it has caused a discourse. Yes. Okay. Why does he not like that term? <laughs> I think it puts uh, him in a box. Uh, it's not just that. A pretty it's big that box, it, it, but it's it just a genre. Viewed, yeah, it was yeah. viewed as a negative and sometimes discriminatory term well, by make Japanese games. developers. Uh, well, hold on. By, by Japanese developers <laughs> back in the, in the late 2000s and early 2010s, specifically because um, Western um, uh, game journos we're shitting on we're shitting on uh, like Japanese studios for making for making you know Japanese RPGs basically mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. now that's that's Thanks. been like now that that's filtered into Japan then filtered back to us there's there's this idea that if now nowadays the same people who were shitting on the Japanese back then and saying that it was basically some form of bene benevolent racism that uh, JRPGs got higher scores than they deserve now they're saying, oh, if you don't like JRPGs, you're racist. That's oh, how, nice. like, the same people are saying this now, 10, 15 years later. Well, it's and Dev, such a, a weird fucking story. That's Dev, you just made a video on Forspoken as well, which is basically, I, you kind of say it, it's the, the millennial writings nadir, that it's, it's yes. an example of Square Enix trying to not make JRPGs and make a Western game, but they can't do that because... Exactly. That's not what they so, do. They make so, JRPGs. So, so look at all the JRPGs that that Square Enix has made in the past fifteen years. They've all been like they, they've they've tried really hard to be Western type games and mm -hmm. how they control and how like they're laid out. Even even like Capcom has given up stuff like Mega Man to make you know just subpar Resident Evils, right? So th there's something going on in in Japanese game development right now where they're trying really hard to be like the West. And I think it's probably doing them a disservice. And I think it's because how the market treated them like a decade ago. There, there, there's an interesting story here that I'm still thinking about and I'm still researching. I'm still kind of developing it, but something's happening it's, right now. Mm -hmm. It's very, it's a, it's a strange time. Ooh. It's an interesting argument too, because there's some very, very, very Japanese games, RPGs that I don't consider JRPGs like Dark Souls, for example, that's a super Western yeah. game. Even though not not a not a bit of it was developed in the West, basically, well, other than maybe localization, but uh, yeah, no, like JRPG for me at least, uh, I, I consider it more of a uh, mechanics and yeah. uh, eccentric thing where you, you don't have a particularly uh, nonlinear storyline. Generally, you have a turn-based combat, a la Final Fantasy, Dragon Quest, etc., and you have named characters. Uh, with their own kind of static backgrounds, things like that. Whereas Western RPGs generally have a character creator. You can customize most of the things about your character. Uh, generally more nonlinear. Um, generally, I mean, there's the, there's a billion different types of RPGs, right? But that's kind of the more me mechanical uh, distinction I make. But like, yeah, Dark Souls is a super Western style RPG, whereas Final Fantasy uh, one through, I'd say maybe 12 or 13 are probably very much in the JRPG style of games. So that that's how I make the distinction. But yeah, there's plenty of uh, RPGs coming out of Japan that I would not define as JRPGs.
There's a game called Sea of Stars coming out in August. That's a Canadian game, but it's it plays I like Chrono Trigger. Really yeah, yeah, yeah. That was gonna make that exact yeah. exact comparison. Oh, that's yeah. Canadian yeah. bias already coming out. Well, yeah, <laughs> yeah I know. I mean, too, we're, we're, yeah, it's, we're it's we're the superior game. race of uh, North Americaners. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's plenty of Western made uh games that are in the vein of jrpgs like i just played a game uh chain deck chain echoes which is yeah, very much yeah. like chrono trigger and and uh zeno zeno gears things like that so yeah there's gears. It, there, delta rune plays like a jrpg yeah, yeah absolutely so yeah totally uh strong uh earthbound references or uh inspiration there so yeah it's it's more mechanical but uh i i just want to know in the future at one point when people adopt that you know as a slur so it's like what's up my jrpg <laughs> <laughs> I've had a few people recommend Chain Echoes to me, like in my chat on my streams. Oh, it's good. It's really yeah, good. I, I hear it's, played, yeah. it's quite quite the good Chrono Trigger like. Yeah, as, basically, as Chrono Trigger played. and uh, Zeno Gears had a had a sixteen bit baby. That's basically. Yeah. How I, I love Zeno Gears too. Zeno Gears is great. It, it's also kind of strange that that we do this with Western RPGs and Japanese RPGs because you know the the Metroidvania was a Japanese er, it, the, the Japanese made it first, basically the first mm -hmm. Metroid game right we, we don't have western metroidvanias and and japanese metroidvanias we don't have western roguelikes and japanese roguelikes we don't have western platformers and japanese platforms but we do it for rpgs i'm not sure why it's just a I'll bad title uh, genres have gone yeah. through tons of names like for longest time i'm i'm probably one of the older people in this group but for longest time we called any first person shooter a doom clone so that yeah. was just the, the bad <laughs> we, of that. I, I, an error. I yeah, we, vaguely remember that. I was very young when that was happening, though. We still get them. Yeah, still I'm, coming I'm a 90s in, like, child for sure. Souls like managed to just yeah. become a thing. Like it, it was said casually, yeah. and now it's just it's pretty much you know a language works. Like uh, Mel mm -hmm. playing that new game, I was like, so it, uh, just, you know what is it? And it's like Souls like is probably the best way to communicate quickly what it is, and that's just what happened with JRPG mm -hmm. versus RPG, I would suppose. Yeah, Cause Cause it's it's yeah weird because it's weird because you. If you it, tell it, tell people, oh sorry, go ahead, Theo. I was just gonna say when you say JRPG as opposed to just RPG, it puts a different kind of picture in the person you're talking to's head. It's not yeah, a more specific one. person, but it's, it's very anime specific, and yeah, yeah, it's gonna be you know maybe a pixelated turn based like statistical progression sort of linear story based RPG where you go and kill God or something. Mm. Just like if you say CRPG, <laughs> though, you immediately will pick. Most people will immediately picture an isometric perspective, whereas yeah. there are like you could argue Knights of the Old Republic is a CRPG, but it's sort of a behind the back perspective. It's still a CRPG though because of all the gameplay conventions surrounding it. And it, I mean, it was uh, actually I kind of think of it Knights of the Old Republic's Canadian as well uh, as Bioware, <laughs> but um, I, I actually didn't intend that. But if Knights of the Old Republic were made in Japan, it would still be a CRPG with a slightly different perspective than a traditional CRPG. It wouldn't become a JRPG, you know? Yeah, it's, and there's, I mean, like, there's first person uh, CRPGs too. So it's it's a super yeah. complicated thing and, and trying to assign a specific genre to any type of RPG, like an RPG is such a broad term. You can describe Fallout New Vegas as an RPG. You can describe Final Fantasy 14 as an RPG. You can describe Final Fantasy 7, which is a completely different game as an RPG. You can describe uh, Deus Ex. Um, We've almost uh, reached the end of this dialogue Ultima. tree um, where genre yeah. names suck. Because as someone in chat just said, yeah. it's like MOBA is a terrible fucking name for yeah. summarizing <laughs> that. It's like multiplayer, <laughs> multiplayer online, online battle, battle arena. It's like, that is That's so useless. So quake then. You know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And But the thing is, game. these names have evolved past what they actually mean like in a literal sense. Yeah. It's more so what yeah. they evoke in everyone's heads. Yes. Nowadays, uh, mm -hmm. RPG seems to refer to a, a general set of mechanics as a part to, like, actually what you're doing in them as in playing a role. Yeah. Yeah, and it generally it means just, like, character progression that you can kind of carve your own path through that. But then I know, yeah, like, light like RPG Diablo. elements is in so yeah. many games now. It's, it's a base like level just, well, two, two letters, like. XP. So, so if you want to bring it back around, you can say that Atomic I'd Heart love to. is an RPG. Yeah. It's a it's an uh, e -R e e RPG Eastern uh, European RPG uh, clearly, or an R clearly RPG. a shock like a shock like game shock like uh, yeah but it, hold yeah, on it has it, it, it has numbers yeah. it, has a, it has a skill tree and upgrades it's an RPG I think so, that's so modern it has one dialogue game. choice so you, you <laughs> Yeah, literally one meaningful dialogue choice, which, uh, to be fair, I don't think there were that many meaningful dialogue choices in Bioshock that I remember that really mattered. I think they're, they're, most of it was pretty much linear. But I will say, and this is actually something that's very interesting about this game, this game wants to be Bioshock, but it does not 
it does not fulfill its promise in that uh this game I don't has think a pretty it, hmm? it doesn't know how to yet yeah and and this is actually a really in, interesting conversation because another terribly named uh genre is it, I, there's no better word for it but the immersive sim genre which is the mm. kind of bioshocks the system shocks the deus exes the uh prey 2017s thing games, games like that this game wants to be that but there's actually not even skill tree wise like the skill tree is pretty good in this game it's pretty basic but it's it's okay there's a couple things that are kind of missing from this game like i i completely devoid of any sort of stealth upgrades so the stealth is not really a viable option in this game at all no but really the, the the secret to any good if you want to call it immersive sim shock like whatever terrible names but there's no real yeah. genre name for it yet but a, a good shock like is actually not in the character progression it's in the level design the level design is what informs those games of how you play them and if you notice i don't know if kevin levine said this or if it was warren specter or somebody smart who made a lot of those games said this where basically they're their goal in every single level was to provide three different distinct ways of finishing that level. And so you can identify the games by their level design more so than their actual mechanics. Because in, for example, in like, a, go back to like, you know, Deus Ex 2000 or whatever it was, right? Uh, the first, the first you're dropped into the shattered remains of the Statue of Liberty on Liberty Island and uh you have to take out some terrorists etc and uh you can either go through the front door shoot everybody in the face and uh trigger all the cameras and everybody what comes at you robots and turrets whatever come at you or you could uh sneak behind and lock pick the back and maybe uh crawl up to the you can literally sneak by everybody and get to the the terrorist leader um without killing a soul or you could uh hack into the security systems turn the cameras off or turn the turrets against the the terrorists and defeated that way so there's like three distinct paths to, feed, to finish that level right and atomic heart does not have that generally there's one path there might be some side objectives there might be a hidden chest here there might be a, a vent over there to get some extra loot or whatever but generally there's one distinct way of finishing it that inside though outside it's more like far cry far cry it, it is a bigger inspiration to the outdoor areas in my opinion so it's a it's a weird mix for sure yeah, I felt like I was getting some Far Cry on the outside. Um, <clears throat> to roll us around, I'm gonna uh, the the you got it. Yeah, you're looking and you're moving is all down. You've got exposition and worlds down, and then they give you your first mechanic question mark with the um, the scanner. And I thought this was a really intro uh, strange introduction for a mechanic because are you supposed That's to do anything with it are. here? Are you supposed I don't to do think anything? So. I think you just use it, and it's like, oh, look, they light up, so, and that's it. Uh, I mean, I feel weird talking about this, but typically when you introduce a mechanic, you have the player use it in a useful way so they understand what yeah. it is. Yes. Yeah, that is a very much a one-on-one yeah. -on -one thing. And when I had it, I was in this room for a little while being like, what did I miss? Was this something that <laughs> you were supposed to find? A secret exit? Something to pick up? Yeah, yeah. I know what you're saying, but I actually immediately got it. Because this I actually like this part quite a bit. Because it kind of reminded me of... Um, of they live you know that movie yes you, how did it remind the glasses you, of that? you can see well because when you scan you can see who's a robot and who's not because they glow right and i was like oh my god we're, we're gonna be we're gonna we're gonna be bumping into like humans who look com they never did this they should have but <laughs> i was thinking you're gonna bump we're gonna bump into human characters who look and act human but we scan them and they're gonna be robots there's no that humans in that room thought. well no i know but like the the point is is that like the fact that they glow, I think, was really striking. And that's like, oh, it, it really stuck in my mind as soon as I saw that. Because I was like, oh, okay, so humans don't glow. Robots do glow. They're going to do something. Some humans this. glow, Dev. We know this. Dev, I feel like... what I mean, though. Like, it, it just... It, it really stuck in my mind because I was thinking that it's going to be like a Terminator story or something. Uh, they that didn't is, do that, that, that which, is which so is waste. York. <laughs> like, I don't even know what to do with that. I'm just like, the, yeah. the, 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 I don't know how to draw anything like you have from that. It's I don't yeah. even think oh, that the game has thought of that I at all. Got what, oh, all I got uh, was, oh, I can see them through walls. Okay. Is there anything here? Oh, I guess not. I'll leave. Well, yeah, so and this is the thing. It's not even a thing to loot. Really, it's so a really you can easily general... see the things you need to loot. It's a wonky introduction Detect because you you should have had in this room the all the uses of it, right? Purple are like key items, blue is like uh, loot, white are just interactable, or just people, robots, whatever. It's like, why weren't all of these things in the room, and then you scan, you go, oh wow, look at this, and then you have like a legend, just to give you a quick understand. I didn't even know what the purpose of my scanner was. 
It was only later oh, on when yeah. people were like, why aren't you scanning to see what loot you've missed? And I was like, oh, that's that's, that's what it. that does? Okay. Yeah, because I, I, I knew from the beginning, like, that was it. I yep. had, like, traumatic post-war flashbacks <laughs> of Dishonored's Dark Vision thing that just completely broke <laughs> the game in half. Uh -huh. yeah. I'll, I'll, a detective I'll, vision. Era. Take, you know, I'm not sure what people... To, I, what that people shouldn't be about. controversial. That shit makes oh, the game I, I impossible to fail, so... I'll, I'll make an old yeah. reference, but... Uh, but uh, everybody should play uh, Super Metroid from 1994 because I'd say that that game probably has the best one of the best games of ever. Any game I've played, one of the best games yeah, ever. Yeah, good. but it has a, an exceptional understanding of how to teach a player something. <laughs> well, so this is I, kind I of missed big when, one. When... I, I missed the uh, Shine Spark Jump tutorial, and oh, no. every, <laughs> I, and I I basically say that it's a hidden mechanic in a video I made on it, and <laughs> oh. The Nintendo fans <laughs> let me know about that in the comments. Uh, yeah. I get it. The, the little animals teach you guys. I know now. Yeah, or, 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 or. Why, um, Metroid like d has to do that is because you need to use these mechanics. So it's like, all right, once we get yeah. you into the room, all right, you've got it immediately. This is how you use it. It's like, oh, cool. And then usually it will prompt a memory in your mind about, oh, I remember like a place that had a door that looked like that or... Well, exactly. Yeah, I couldn't um, get to it now. So the Metroidvania was born. It, well, yeah, yeah. And, and the, yeah. the DNA of that. In this case, yeah, the DNA like, of that is in all games. Is, yeah, pretty much. Like Mario does it too, right? In terms and of much more. It's simple as simple as like. But in this case, Bioshock, yeah, right? It's like that door that is locked up, and there's a there's a control that's sparking, and you're like, I don't know what that is. And then you get your your plasmid, and you're like, wait, does this? And it's like, use this soap, and you're like, oh my god, that works. That's so cool. And you know, that's like the simplest, most obvious way ever. And hence my initial thoughts on this game. The, the, the people who made this, like, you know, you know, games, right? You're not supposed to give me a mechanic and introduce it in such a way that I have no idea what the hell this is for, really. Obviously, you can read the um. The, the big old paragraph tooltip, but like mechanically introducing it so that I can bind my memory and experience with it straight away. That's like a really standard, obvious, 100% 101 mechanical developing tool. And they do it with a couple of other things. You know, even the simplistic, um, God of War does this, right? Where you get a new move and then it's like, right, you have it infinitely in this room. And we're going to send hordes after you so you can just yeah. use it, get used to it. <laughs> And then it's going to be a, a bar that drains every time you fight stuff. So, like, so that's just a really normal way to teach someone how to do something. I just thought it was so strange. And it's it's also strange they give it to you well before you're going to need to use it. Yeah, well, because right. you've got that's a why. lot of like opening tutorial level, you know, introduction left before the game actually yeah. begins. <laughs> and, and that's why I mentioned Super Metroid, because almost without fail, that game will give you a new ability and will lock the door or will will trap you someplace until you use that ability yeah. that you just yeah. got Learn this game, to get God out of damn it. it. Yeah. Learn so the it, fucking it, mechanic, it, you, loser. You <laughs> literally like, can't the exit thing. the room. You literally can't exit the room until you use it. So that's like a great way of just like, hey, use it. Use it, bastard, right? Yeah. But I mean, Zelda this, does that. Hollow Knight does that. It's pretty common. Because yeah. by, yeah. by using it, you're getting it into your brain's cognition and your understanding yeah. of what things you have at your disposal to solve the problems you're going to run into. When there is a tool here. so much earlier. It's like... there's a cup there's a couple of moments in Atomic Heart that does that, but I, I don't know about you guys, but I got like tutorial Tourette's for this game. Like it occasionally just like, <laughs> hey, by the way, you zap something and it'll open a door. And I'm like, I'm yeah. a little oh lost. Oh my right god, now. you've <laughs> just triggered yeah. the fact that <laughs> so... we somehow managed to take Doom Eternal's tutorials and make them worse. I don't know what sections should necessarily go in, but I'm just gonna talk about it now. When you have like, let's just make it easy, it's a gun. And this game will be like, you pick up the gun and the game freezes and a tooltip comes up. You start reading it, but unfortunately it's triggered the audio in the background, which is your stupid glove being like, you've picked <laughs> up a glove. What you need to oh, do yeah, is pull yeah. the trigger and bullets come out. If you shoot the enemy and you're just like, I'm, so, I'm wow, supposed to be listening to you. Modern world we live in. Or am I supposed to be reading the fucking tooltip? Don't make me choose one or the other. Like, what is this? Like, yeah, or, or they show you, you read it and then the glove tells you again, even though you just read it. It's like, oh, uh, yeah, I just read that. I'm already Why annoyed that they would deliver it twice. Twice, but yes, uh, yeah, pick yeah, one or the yeah. other. Zero and seems... in your ability to just understand things. Oh, they just bombard uh, you. <laughs> Which is funny, right? Was... Because my whole complaint about the fucking glove was that it's ill-placed and ill-delivered. But then everything else going forward, they can't resist the fucking glove shouting at you everything you're supposed to do. And your, even your character is like, shut the fuck up sometimes in the game. Which again, only steroids. pretending to be retarded. Yeah. Talking yeah. gloves in the future of the industry. No, I don't know. Like, if Mimir on steroids would just be like, the, <laughs> a, like a crazy version of Mimir. This is like, um, <laughs> like I don't know. This is Mimir on like horrific, man. 
Licht is like a really <laughs> depressed and intoxicated Mimir. He just doesn't You'll want to have to push for the In the same he way, right? He constantly misses his cues and then tries to catch up. Remember when we were covering Ragnarok, especially fucking the, the, the review of like, oh, hidden loading screens, man. We had to like reset and be like, okay, hidden loading yeah. screens are a good thing. You want them yes, to be hidden. Yes, they are good. Uh, what you what you're saying is you can tell it's hidden and that it's annoying and still boring. It's it's basically the bad feeling of a loading screen, but now you you see everything on screen as fake, something like that. In the same way that Mimir is often, very often, an exposition deliverer and someone who lets you know about the hits coming from behind. And they were like, "Can we make the character really engaging and fun so that we can kind of hide that that's why the, he's there?" Meanwhile, the, the fucking glove. <laughs> like, you already know. He's um. Well, some, even if he does tell you some stuff you already know, that's fine with me, right? Like, as long as they couch it well, in, I think like, that's, a... Yeah. Well, that's kind of I'll one of the biggest it. issues I feel about our protagonist, is that he should <laughs> know a lot of this and act like a lot of this is familiar to him, mm. but he doesn't... The, well, well, not to skip to another topic, but I don't feel like this character belongs in this world. Which no. one? Both of them? The glove the and the man? The man? Right. The protagonist. <laughs> yeah, P3. I was going with the glove, but yeah. yeah the, the glove this is... Guy... Yeah, the glove's fine. The glove is telling yeah. you all the things, regardless of whether or not you should know them or not. But I don't feel, and this isn't just his familiarity with the kind of world he's living in, in terms of the robots and the technology and things, but the way that he treats other people and seems to react to everything around him. But that's its own thing. This game has some well, really well, doesn't he have amnesia parallels. or something? He has brain damage. Um, yeah, yeah, what, yeah. What's that, Mahler? Amnesia. Yeah, his brain, <laughs> brain wipe. Well, he's yeah. he's got... Yeah, he he's he only remembers things from like a couple of years ago, but still, like he he's around this stuff. Well, he, he walks with a lot of confidence about this world and the people he's talking to in it, and yet yeah, apparently he's yeah. forgotten basically everything how everything works. Yeah, he doesn't. Um, which is kind of one of my kind of big complaints, honestly. The more I think about it, um, while the world feels really um, neatly Soviet, um, our character does not. Our protagonist. What do you mean? What made you say <laughs> that? <laughs> this, the protagonist. First off. Um, I don't know what the fuck crispy critters means. <laughs> Nobody. Oh, oh man, I, um, I I'm a crispy as a critter. right out there with the CC words. No, eh? make uh, it stop. Do you want critter. me to spoil it and tell you what it means? I would love because I think I know what you're gonna say. Well, yeah. So go ahead and you say it. Oh, you be the one well, to say well, it. Well, what am I gonna say? Um, that it's a it, it's like a military reference to. Um, oh, I had a different. Things. I wouldn't. Have, I wouldn't no, have it's not actually. Critters deep dive actually. Okay. So I'm, I'm curious about what you're saying. So, uh, I had a developer of the game, one of the guys who worked on it, in my Twitch chat. Nice. And and he told me a bunch of information. And one yeah. of them is that Crispy Critters is a really bad translation of a Russian saying that basically means um, burnt pie. They they use like burnt pie as a as like a as like a slang for like Crispy oh this fritters. this this went <laughs> south you know fuck I can't oh, the believe pie this is got burnt. ruined the food is yeah the pie the pie is burnt it's and okay. it, it, it was it. so it was so mangled in translation <laughs> it came out as crispy critters they, and they just went with they it I guess they hired somebody right they hired like anybody like you you're from America. Um, you're just a guy. Does this make like? Did they not have anyone to do any sort of like local? Yeah. Okay, Sergey speaks uh, great English. So, so I asked him about that too. All American and he girls, they love said, me. <laughs> he basically said that they didn't have much control over the English version of the oh, game. Okay. But that was, like, that was probably oh. that, that. That was more the publisher side of it, and oh, it, just, no. it just went to shit. The well, entire that less sense translation, then? the entire English translation was complete shit, and they know it's shit. And um, nice. also, it was recorded like months apart, and you can kind of tell by listening oh, okay. to the characters talk. Well, okay, uh, because yes, it feels like it's, it belongs to a completely different, different game. World. Like, yeah, the character has nothing to do with this world. It's uh, no. and everything he says. Yeah, he, he, there's even parts where he says like, "You are one crispy fucking critter" or something, like, and it's like, <laughs> what? Yeah, yeah. yeah you, you can tell that that, that the you are one trying to fucking these buy. these critters <laughs> get real crispy. And you're like, okay. well, it's. it's not I, I I realize we would go on a crispy critter tangent because how couldn't you? That should be the name of the game. Um, I thought we closed. It, they, they basically it's, use the way that we use shit show. There, there. That's the equivalent. It's like this is a shit show. Yeah, um, actually, I went on a crispy critters deep dive because halfway through the game, I'm like, what the hell does this mean? And uh, I I read a bunch <laughs> of posts and I also did. Uh, I actually watched like a full playthrough, not a full one, but I, I skimmed through a playthrough of a Russian version and actually use deep l uh translation features to get a rough idea of what they're saying and interestingly enough 
a lot of the characteristics of the of the main character were similar in Russian, but he was he was still short tempered and and kind of uh, you know it, it, he was impatient, but he was a bit more respectful than the English version from what I could tell from the translations. So that's interesting. They made him like a complete nut job oh, in, yeah. the, in the English version. <laughs> yeah, but um, yeah, it, yeah, like it's it's like roughly, a nineties cartoon uh, character, thirteen year old. Yeah, like it, in the Russian, I want to be when I grow up. Yeah. yeah. In the and Russian version, he says "fucking a pie." Apparently, uh, a lot of yeah, a lot of the uh, a lot of the swearing, <laughs> a lot of the swearing are are uh, local Russian kind of idioms and stuff like yeah, like "fucked pies," "fucking pies," "fuck cakes." Roughly, that's what the the original <laughs> saying was. But in in each language, they'd have to come up with a completely new saying. So in Spanish, it's roughly "burned motherfuckers." In Brazilian, <laughs> it's like smoked rotting flesh. That's like that. That's like, that's holy like, hell. Every, <laughs> smoked rotting single, flesh, single, Batman. Single, yeah, take it single, down a few peg. Yeah, every single language has its own thing. So it's like, okay, that's weird. But some of the other swearing things, like, are just simply that's a Russian term, and it's difficult to translate. Like, one of the things he says is like a yob uh, which is one of the worst things you can say in Russian. It basically means fuck your mother. Um, so they obviously replaced wow. that in the in the English version. So there's a lot of weird Russian only sayings that were probably difficult to translate. So they just, but how did they land on crispy critters? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it would have been better or worse in terms of funny if he just kept saying "ah oh, burnt flesh." Damn it! Uh, <laughs> I, I probably wouldn't and have minded it, if he just. It, it, uh, broke down into Russian. That would have been okay with me, actually. But whatever. It's like a Russian swear. Yeah. Well, I will yeah, say like this, every uh, once in a while, our like uh, English. Yeah. <laughs> this voice yeah. actor really hey, just hey. web with it, huh? Just out of curiosity, what was the German one? I don't know. Something about probably something about the Polish. Polish. <laughs> but um. Damn but schnitzel. yeah, crispy critter aside, um, if it could ever possibly not take center stage, I never felt like P three was a citizen of the Soviet Union no. in the sense no. of him caring about the lives of his comrades, what this meant to the, the, the USSR, his, 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 how he saw himself as a part of this, you know, this collective people, how he viewed his duty, how yeah. he, you know, saw that, you know, how he looked at patriotism. Because every once in a while, he's like, he'll be like, oh, we got to kill that traitor. Uh, and then at the same time, he's just like, he doesn't seem to care about anything that's happening. He has protagonist um, man syndrome. Yeah, he absolutely. Is, uh, he just feels like he's from like a person um, in this world. It's from a box of generic characters that was dropped into this game. Well, it has nothing we, to do with him. Yeah, I figured because like the, he he is um he is unbelievably cringe, I find. Like he just mm -hmm. says so many things that are lame and annoying. And he's doing the thing that I think a lot of people have been talking about. Yep. This has prompted the conversation about, you know, silent protagonists, those were the days of whatever. <laughs> yeah, like, when you play, when you play yeah, a game it... like this, it's like, holy shit, dude. Can you, like, say one interesting thing, please? Yeah, like, yeah say one thing so that's insightful. to listen to it. Look at... It's violently funny. Like, so when he... Um, got... Sorry, go ahead, Rick. In, in the last segment, there is a part when I think you are in the uh, uh, Pavlov complex where all the organics research is happening. And it stands out because it's such a like a, a normal human thing to say that the protagonist says. He essentially says, um, like, isn't it a shame? Isn't it terrible that all of these brilliant scientists who are working for the betterment of mankind are dead now? And of course, I'm putting it way more charismatically and interestingly than he said it. Um, but he essentially says to the effect that. And it was, it was like shocking to hear this human-like <laughs> thought come out of P3 <laughs> that it legitimately was like, I need to make a note of this event occurring to the point where I remember where in um, uh, the city he was when he said that. And I shouldn't be doing that. If you have a good character, I shouldn't be like, oh shit, he said something that like a human would say. Ah, <laughs> make a note, brought it down in my diary. What's the day? He's performing for me, like he's performing for the player. Mm. And it, it's oh, man. Also, the fact that the voice actor delivery is very much like, yeah, I'm a really cool guy, yeah. and I'm some really. I was making them. Um, His talks with Charles remind me of like school presentations from people who have come in to talk about a certain subject, and they're trying to like pretty it up for the children so that yeah, they'll actually be interested. It's, it's, making... it's always it's very repetitive in terms of the. He, the he just gives snark flavored voice. prompting questions so that Charles well, that, that can whole, continue like, expositing yeah. at you. Is uh, something that like I kept adding on to him, but then there were sub cutscenes or sub deliveries where he would actually do the. <laughs> it's like oh, don't actually make that <laughs> or, sound, dude. He would just say, "You just get." 
sorry, Fringy. Sorry, go ahead. I was just saying this. Like, it's like it, he's doing the meme. He's actually doing it. Shadow like, the Hedgehog. Okay, yes. Ironically. <laughs> Isn't it weird that we got two games within a, like a month of each other? This game and Forspoken, where there's a really out of place protagonist who's super cringe who talks to his arm. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. Isn't, isn't it an also isekai, super know? weird that and, people were complaining that Isaac talked too much in Dead Space? It's like, what the fuck well, are you talking about? Because uh, we also it's a, 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 a real quick like, spoiler. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Okay. Go for it. Yeah. A, a real quick spoiler is that in both this game and. Atomic Hearts, yeah, Atomic Hearts, and for spoken, the the storyline of the the arm, like the arm sidekick, is the same storyline. Yeah, they oh, both really? go bad in the end. Yeah, it's weird. Isn't yeah, it? oh, well, okay. they're, 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 they're like the final villain. Kind of yeah. daring today, or, aren't we? Spoken is now ruined for me. <laughs> and no, it's it's just like I don't know. I'm never going to play it. <laughs> on uh, <laughs> okay. on okay. some of his lines, um, by the way, one of the ones I yeah. uh, someone's highlighted in chat that had me go for a while I was walking to like this just. Death and blood everywhere. And he goes like, uh, you know, this was a nice place until everyone until died. Everyone died. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> Did you think that was funny? Was that no, that's the problem. Funny? Some people would be like, you see, you see, the game is self aware. It's like, well, no, it's is not. It like, it's there's, not like, there's, there's like, only a couple of those lines that, funny? in a different context, would be really great. But like, yeah, because like, you know, I, I think I said when I was listening to, it, I was like, imagine Leslie Nielsen said that in a Naked Gun film where they're going through a facility. It's like, this place was great <laughs> until everyone yeah, died. Yeah, well, that's, that's the thing is, I'm finding it very hard to latch onto what the tone of this is supposed to be. Is this meant to be serious or is this meant to be goofy? Or are they, the tone are they is yes. to it's all the over the place. And they're really what's well, because the thing is, is that you could go for something that is serious and kind of goofy and and sort of camp at the same time, but it's like it's real hard. And I almost feel like thinking about the dialogue in this game. It's like. You know, at some point you have to think about: Can I do this? Like, am I good enough at this that I can I can make this work? That... And if not, then you can back away from having the character talk so much because if the character that you're playing as is talking all the time and it's not funny or interesting, like it's just yeah, pretty it's... painful. Especially yeah. when he starts talking with the glove all the time and all the yeah. answers he gives are like so one note. It's like. No, he would never betray me because he saved my yeah. life. And that's his whole narrative mm -hmm. throughout the whole game, basically. Until he goes oh, like, God. oh, that's actually a little bit suspicious. We have Did to... You guys... I just reminded myself because I was going through the different yeah. cutscenes when... Uh, so the, the the thing is, like, we got a bunch of these people in these rooms and she's trying to prove that she has complete control over it. And he says, okay, make the fat guy jump because he could use it. He needs and then it. she <laughs> says, why don't I make them all jump? This is communism! Like... Ah, then she gets really angry as well. It's like, okay, <laughs> calm down. Which is like, wait, what? <laughs> why is your problem with it's, communism? It's, it's this, it's this crazy guy. Or it's whatever. communism after all. They can all jump. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the, there's basically two two passable ways to do a story. One, tell a really good story. Two, make it very minimal. If your story sucks, it's at least okay if it's like kind of in the background and doesn't constantly constantly interrupt your gameplay. And this game, unfortunately, does neither, at least outside of a couple points. But like, I, I agree. Like, they, it, it seems like the protagonist is completely divorced from the actual game world. But occasionally, you will get that, like when you're talking to one of the corpses that is that are still kind of half alive due to the uh the thought Ooh, mod on his some, head and and, yeah. and 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 sometimes he's just a complete uh some asshole to, say, to them you know? but, yeah but occasionally but occasionally he's like oh wow that's kind of awful and tragic that they're in that they're in eternal torment and regret mm -hmm. even after they died and they're basically just wallowing in sort of a weird limbo and that's kind of tragic like occasionally he'll acknowledge that and i'm like oh man I'd actually feel something right now if he wasn't just calling somebody a crispy fucking critter. Yeah. <laughs> well, so yeah, yeah, to be fair though, was, there, there were are... a bunch of these corpses that had some uh, interesting things where it's like, oh, yeah. is this like, could it play into the story? And I don't think it actually ever did. None of them do. No. Um, not, not, no. not necessarily. Oh, they didn't grip me anywhere near was... as much as all the. Do you guys remember all the characters in Bioshock? Yeah. Like the, the uh -huh. like engineers or plumbers or uh, mm. just like convenience store clerks, different characters that you see a lot of. Um, I think one of the ones that, like, so they, they tell stories as they progress through. Meanwhile, these are all, like, seemingly disconnected, random. You have no idea what you'll get from them, nor what your character will say. And I, I think at one yeah. point, uh, the main character is, like, sad about the death of someone, and then your glove is like, is it because it's a woman? Or oh, yeah. Like that? yeah that was I was like, what? The, uh, that was awesome. <laughs> I love complex. Yeah. And it, the only one that I, I actually kind of felt a little bit of something about was during actually during that horrible horrible sequence where you have to find like five different body parts and put it together. Um, 
there was the subplot of the, I think the tour guide who was touring a bunch of students throughout the facility and you're supposed to find them all and basically report to her that they're all dead, you know? But one of them opens up with like, I wanted to die today. And basically she was feeling suicidal over a breakup and now she realized how wrong she was. And only after she'd actually died, did she realize her mistake. And I'm like, oh, yeah, there's, some, there's, some, oh, there's, there's something interesting there. Oh, they didn't really do it that well, but that's an interesting story that you could have actually probably developed a bit more. And, and oh, the concept, you're talking to dead people's brains, essentially, but they're still like, they can't move, but they're like yeah. conscious. Oh, like yeah. that's Very like a whole thing that just sort yeah. of gets yeah. I wonder if there's a, there's a game we could compare that does that with <laughs> exceedingly oh, amazing one? results compared. Oh, can't talk about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, it's just another one. movie game. <laughs> movie game. <laughs> another so, another movie game that takes place on water. <laughs> I, I I do know that you know sometimes the, you know the, the the tone shift is obviously a problem, right? But there are a few moments that were legitimately funny. You know, the, there was that one moment, you find a data log where it's a person talking about like a new form of communication and how they can now use, um, they can now use punctuation to make faces, like emojis. They didn't call them emojis, but you, that's what they're talking about. And people are saying, there's no way that'll never happen. That's ridiculous. You, you can't make a smiley face out of a, out of a colon and then a parenthesis. And like, that was kind of funny. I laughed, you know, there was, there, there was one guy who was dead and he was like, just lying there and he's like. You start talking to him, and he's like, "Yeah, I know I'm dead." And it was kind of like a funny conversation. Like, there's there's some mm -hmm. decent humor in this, I think. I I actually really liked the train conductor. He made me laugh a lot. Actually. Oh yeah, the train conductor. I, I think it was. I it's think like, that guy was pretty okay, hilarious. Okay. A little bit charming. <laughs> yeah. I just I, I never quite understood exactly what I was getting from this game, and so I was always yeah like out of step with it, I guess. It's very surprised. It's not. It, it's a very interesting game to talk about because it's not like, you know, obviously it has some very strong inspirations from anything from like the first person Resident Evil games to Bioshock to Far Cry to Prey 2017 to all these other games, but it's very unpredictable at times. <laughs> uh, like, well, you could definitely say I, that about the fucking Bunny Vision. Yeah, the Bunny Jesus. Vision is like what yeah. the hell. And did Why you get you what bunny? that what that was? Did you get what that was? Uh, I, your I brain, collect, brain damage, right? I guess. That's the no, 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 no. No, there's actually... That, a, yeah, go ahead. It, um. it, it puts you in, in a happy place uh, mm -hmm. while you uh, go into combat mode. So this is basically yeah. the same thing. Yeah, yeah, but why a bunny? No, yeah, Mel, what the fuck? <laughs> why Wait, what? is it a bunny yeah, place? Well, it didn't <laughs> catch it. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we, we know why it's happening in like that. I'm talking about why the fuck yes. is it bunny? Basically, like, you're basically okay, in collective. I, th yeah, I think okay, you're yeah, basically in collective 2.0 um, while you're basically, your body's being used as a, as a brainwashed super uh, assassin, right? But the bunny thing is actually that headless, that kind of like faceless cat you see at the end. Yeah. That's fluffy. That's fluffy. And th those dream sequences, as freaking weird as they were, and they also freaking weirdly used the soundtrack to Annihilation. I don't know if, I don't know if you guys caught that. Oh, did they? They literally used, they really? used the soundtrack to, to Annihilation in one of those sequences. Yeah, look it up. It's crazy. Oh, yeah. okay. Um, uh, legally, I, I assume. Yeah, yeah, I was about to say. Legally, I assume. <laughs> Oh, these are Russians, sorry, but yeah, yeah I, I heard it. I'm like, wait a second, is is that the the creepy song from Annihilation? Because I've seen, you know, I've we seen take songs from Natalie Portman film. No one say anything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a great, a great music from that. No film, one wants to claim responsibility but, uh, for Annihilation. But yeah, you're you're playing <laughs> you're playing the faceless cat that you see at the ending, Fluffy, which is also the password that you use to log yeah, in. Yeah, the chick. Uh -huh. That you that uh, sh the chick used to. The doctor, I forget his name, but basically the doctor that was turned into the bit of polymer that went into the glove, that particular scientist who's now polymer, mm -hmm. he, I think he either has a pet or genetic monstrosity, whatever called Fluffy. You're playing Fluffy in that in that weird uh, sort of collective 2.0 VR system. But this all makes that, complete sense to me, yeah. Mm -hmm. But you see that thing just <laughs> running around in that vision as well, all, all yeah. the way at the end. Yeah, so, so you're playing that little weird does, little like um, ball ball headed cat thing. Is collecting the apples completely right. irrelevant? Yeah, yeah, oh, it's just for so. an achievement. I collected them all. Yeah. I think I collected them all, and I I, I got the achievement yeah. when I collected the last one. <laughs> that was so, interesting. A a lot of the dream sequences, as well as um the plant enemies in the game as well, it really just felt like the development team had like an asset pack, and I was like, we just put this <laughs> in the game. It all felt appropriately like science gone wrongy 
to me. I especially well, sure, like sure. the animations and everything. I, th I I never got the sense that it was. It that didn't feel slapdash like to me, but um, I don't know. It, it, it felt very sectioned off. Either I fight the flashy plant people or the robots. That's, uh... Call me a furry, but I enjoyed playing as a parkour koala. You're a furry. You're furry. <laughs> <laughs> I felt like it lacked intention behind it, other than to be weird, which is, <laughs> you know, go off. But I think you need to do a little bit more than yeah. be weird. By the way, what a shitty, happy place to put you in when there's everything exploding and people dying around you. I don't know. It, this makes him happy. He's a, weird guy. His... He's a weird yeah. guy. <laughs> I guess. My happy place is Bloodborne, so. Oh, okay. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, it's it, that was that kind of caught me off guard. And, but the one thing I can't really criticize that much of the game are the environments. Like, I get stuck in the environment with the environmental, like, uh, Geometry. I, I had a lot of issues with the level design, but the environments themselves are absolutely fantastic in this game. I will say that. Like, really, really oh, yeah. well done. Oh, yeah. Like, the everything. The art direction is great overall. Yeah. The art direction is really cool. The and buildings, the, the windows, all, all the appliances, like, a lot of work went into making this world feel super, like, like I said, Soviet city of the future. Yeah. yeah, like so um, Soviet punk, basically. I, I really, really yeah, dug I the, the, the design. I like the the robot design for the most part. Even the weird little mustached kind of guys reminded me of like a weird like Soviet version yeah, like of butlers. like the iRobot guys. Mm. Yeah. But someone uh, in the chat said that a lot of the assets in the game were used in Control previously, so maybe they did just get like an asset pack from somewhere. Oh. Maybe that's possible. Ah, I don't remember the enemies like that in Control. Uh, maybe I think just the environments, like, not the enemies. Oh, okay. The very like brutalist in control, like very uh, yeah, like, yeah, angular. Yeah. Right. Control. Yeah, and the, and it, the game also, I don't know about you guys, but uh, the game ran really well for me. Like I was able mm -hmm. to yeah. get a yeah, solid 120. Yep. Um, I, I also enabled the LSS because I I just like a stable frame rate, but. And I, I found out the hard way that this game runs in UE4, which is kind of an interesting parallel to uh, yeah. Bioshock because Bioshock came out, came out right around the time where uh, Mass Effect One and Gears of War came out, which was the the big new shiny Unreal Three engine. And Bioshock actually runs an Unreal Engine Two, but you wouldn't be able to tell because they did some crazy things with that engine to make it look as good as it did at the time. So this actually runs in Unreal well, Bioshock Engine Four. Bioshock had a style to it. It had a yeah. Oh it yeah. Had a, everything looked a certain way. The textures and the way things were kind of shaped. Uh, it and it all fit together, much like. This game well, say, uh, so, it's kind so, of yeah. interesting that Bioshock has aged very well mm -hmm, despite yeah. being built on a more an Unreal Engine 3. Uh, I don't know. Like, I'm not sure. Like, Gears of War is, um, I don't think that game has aged very well visually <laughs> compared to something very like Bioshock. Very muddy. Yeah. Muddy, yeah. That, was, uh, oh, yes. that was kind of uh, sort of almost, that's like the defining feature of a lot of Unreal Engine 3 games is like very muddy, whereas like Bioshock is, has got a lot of clarity and a lot of it comes through in the style. I think I have the impression with this game as well that it will age fairly well as well for the environment design more so than I think anything so. else. Yeah, so it shows you that it, the engine is less important than you, how you use it. How you use it, exactly. Mm -hmm. and, and also, I don't think you could be able to uh, push, pull this kind of stuff off with a UE5. Like that, that opening sequence where you're in a parade where you see literally hundreds of robots all marching down the street with flags and stuff. Yeah. That was really impressive. The, the scope of they were all. very sparse with the, the the flags they were carrying, but yeah, yes, that was they fair. Were, yeah, yeah. The, I, they, I I knew the reason why they didn't all have flags. It's got to be like yeah. fucking nightmare cloth, to have all of physics, those. Yeah. Cloth, yeah, but still, but, you're like this is this is decently impressive. Yeah. I'm not going like insanely incredible, but this is like your good start. You know. I just kept getting yeah. like senses of man the man hours the absolute yeah. man hours absolutely when you're playing this game or watching this game as the case may be you never get the sense that they cheaped out much um it does feel appropriately um high budget also the thing the nature of the mistakes or errors or whatever we consider to be the the missteps they all feel like decisions were made with uh, not as much, I don't know. I don't want to be as harsh to say not as much thought in it, but uh, some of these things are just like, why did you do that? Why wasn't it this other way? And uh, yeah, I suppose it things like the dialogue tripping over itself a lot. Oh. Um, you know, the, the little walking sequences where it's things like that, where I'm like, you just you just 
didn't have to make it this way. You know, I you weren't I, limited by funds. I don't know if it was one or two instances where I had a triple layer of dialogue. Um, <laughs> yeah. I was like, how the fuck did I even do that? But several times, and I was baffled by it, that campaign dialogue was interrupting campaign dialogue. I was like, I didn't even know that was possible. Same did character ever, like, slow talking down? over itself. Did you ever, like, slow down? Because if you walked too fast, you would get overlapping dialogue, or you would, you would have your... What you're you're listening to like an audio log, and then you run into it a, a campaign dialogue on top of your audio log. And you're like, oh, my brain can't take this. I just kind of like stop and listen I'm, to it uh, and then move forward. Comes across as a basic thing you're supposed to be able to achieve. Like you 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 build like you know if you've got five seconds of uh, audio to play and a, a hallway yeah. that can be passed in four seconds. Like, well, let's just make the hallway eight seconds. So we, I, you know, uh... It's just like a simple problem solve. I'm I'm playing the game right now. I, I just got stuck in the terrain. Yep. Yeah. I can't move. <laughs> I'm stuck. That happened to me earlier while I was playing, but I could dodge out of the way. Now I'm just stuck. Oh, I, well, so I something of a solution awesome. you might be able to do at some point when you later play the game was uh, that I did. I got my rocket launcher and shot myself out of being stuck <laughs> a couple times. Um, That's interesting. I cost you that health, of that. course. Dad. I, I got awesome. I got stuck on the bridge after defeating a plush and. Uh, <laughs> Like, I'd been playing for about 15 minutes, and I got stuck on some train. I'm like, I really don't want to have to restart after this. So I just, like, jumped and dodged and jumped and dodged for, like, three minutes and finally got out. But, yeah, that, that's a recurring problem for sure. Oh, dude, where was my, where was my last Are, are we talking Bye. about glitches? Let's do it. Why uh, not? Sure. Okay. We're, we're jumping all over the place. Actually, we'll get back you, to you, the dialogue eventually, I'm sure. Crispy Critters will return. I mean, you were, guys, <laughs> we're just talking Avengers about the over. The overlapping dialogue. Did you specify oh, okay. the ones just in the uh, in the cutscene itself? Like there was, of course, the, the ones that overlap while you were playing. But the way they edited the audio together, they kind of started the end of their sentence, but then the next character already started talking. Like they overlapped that. Well, a yeah, lot there's of times. um. Did you notice that? There's that, and there's uh, the actors delivering lines like in different that don't match the state of the characters. Yeah, yeah. You get a that's lot of that. That's just direction problems. Yeah, there's right? amateur problems. You, you, yeah, like when you're you in can't... Polymer, P3 will just talk normally. It's not It's not like faded or muffled mm -hmm. or anything like that. It's just, you know. It's going to be because we were talking about how, yeah, Dead Space, you've got, is it three versions of dial uh, dialogue for Isaac? That's what I found out. It's the uh, full health, low done. health, and then running. Spider-Man did the action. same thing. Yeah. They had different dialogue for Spider-Man depending on whether he was standing or walking or like web slinging. If he was web slinging, it'd be more grunts and like out of breath and like, Ugh, you know, like yeah, I'll, I'll get around to that. Yeah, that's cool. And then yeah, and then Dead Space did the same thing too. It's like this sort of attention to detail is always really cool. You're yeah. doing a lot more work for something that a lot of people won't notice, but they do kind of notice it. Yeah. Well, um, well, this one you can tell pe the people were not in the same room when the dialogue was yeah, recorded. It doesn't feel like they're talking to each other. It's the it's it's a good example of talking at each other. I would yeah, say probably the best example of that I remember is a game I covered from uh, I think 1997. I think it was where it actually had I think four or six different versions of dialogue depending on your character. Basically, early in the game is a normal human, then he gets infected by this this kind of uh, monstrous kind of transformation, and so he has a different voice then. And then if you use this certain ability, like if you give into the monster form a, a bit more, you get even more monstrous and you'll transform even further and have a different voice. And so you have basically throughout most of the game, you have uh, not a semi-monster and full monster voice. And as he becomes more monstrous, he'll he'll like speak in more of a rah, kind of monstery tone and uh, speak in less words. So it's a completely different voiceover line. Mm. But also the game mm. has a, a mood uh, switch where you can be friendly or mean and it's a toggle that all actions <laughs> you do well so you, you can you can if you're in a if you're on the light mood you'll open up the door normally and everything like that if you're in a dark mood you'll kick the door open uh if you're in light mood you'll say hey can you help me out with this thing and if you're dark mood, it's like give me this thing or i'll rip your eye your heart out or whatever and so every throughout the whole game depending on how transformed you are or your mood it'll have completely different dialogue lines and, and actions and stuff and sometimes if you're in a dark mood you'll like threaten somebody and they'll start to shoot you so it's pretty funny how, how much detail you can put into that but obviously it's a, a lot of extra work to do that because uh, the player money. can just like tune the game to their own mood when they're playing it's like i'm pissed <laughs> off today yeah. i want my character to be pissed off also yeah basically 
Um, so did we want to talk about just bugs, glitches, and flim sure. flams of all kinds well, um, throughout the game? I have a really big bug I want to talk about it once you guys are done. We, because I could go through, I just sort of have random notes because we're going around randomly anyway. I could just like knock them out one at a time and we can uh, for bugs sort of go or... through if you like. Uh, no, not for bugs, just general notes uh, that oh, okay. I was putting down. Oh, well, uh, just because um, Dev seemed excited to, to talk on, on that. All right. Yeah, that sounds we, good. If Dev is excited it. about bugs, so... I would never want to take away anyone's <laughs> bug excitement. So, Dev, did, so, uh, did everyone, you play on everyone... PC or, or did you play on console with the Game Pass? PC, I, the Game Pass version. Oh, did you, you can get play the Game Pass on PC? On PC. Yes, that's what I did. Did you get the near module module bug? Yes, I actually wanted uh, to, to say oh, that, what is that now. <laughs> I, oh, it has I a name. That's always good. Yep. Yeah. Uh, it's basically the the best resource you can get from enemies. You only get them from bosses, and you couldn't pick them up. Oh, that's not good well so yeah if I could, a more broad one as an example of picking stuff up there were just several uh loot related items i, I yeah. uh, that were there and i just couldn't pick them up it was like press f it's like <laughs> yeah, yeah no nope, just can't pick it up I'm mm -hmm. uh, and i'm talking a lot like one per significant area at least uh just this, like, game, okay. this game would kill and this would game would kill somebody with ocd if you're trying to go through the entire game and pick up everything you will just have fits and be on the floor after like the first the first area because <laughs> there's some, yeah, just, some stuff you just can't loot. Work. Yeah, yeah, just yeah. sometimes it doesn't work properly, which is very bizarre. There, there's a lot of there's there's a lot of cabinets that are just tipped over on the floor, yeah. and it gives you the the inputs like press F to loot. Yeah. And you do, and it's like yeah. nothing happens. It's, like, yep. it's, yep. it's not allowed. She's like, oh okay, so you're lying to me, I guess, or it's bug. I don't know. <laughs> <Lied to me. laughs> the game's like this is a this is something you could loot. Like it's maybe detecting the model or the prop, but there's like nothing inside it. They didn't program it to actually have anything in it. Yeah. something like that probably. Yeah, it, it, and it's a it's a kind of a fault of their. They did the whole Magneto thing where you can suck stuff out of drawers and out of off of shelves and out of cabinets, right? So I got that's what so Magneto is. I felt sick of, like, sick of that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so how they did that was they basically made each individual part and item real items in the game world, uh, and so you had to target them with your F key or whatever you bound it to. Interesting, to, to, considering uh, to, the game runs as well as it does with that. Mm -hmm. yeah, 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 and that's how that's how they make it. So they actually flies uh, every single item actually flies out of its container and into you. I found that out the hard way because of the near module bug. I uh, grinded for for hours trying to get um, neuro modules because all the best upgrades require one neuro module each. I killed a Pleush, and as you know, those guys are uh, an effing bitch because they they uh, take a long time to kill, especially it depends on the what weapons difficulty. you use. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, really? Okay. You I could stun lock them with the grenade launcher. The, yeah, the fully upgraded uh, melee weapon thing. You just freeze them and then. Fuck them. God, you can fuck yeah. everything oh, up with okay. that thing. I, I, yeah, I had an okay time with them just with the, my melee weapon and a fire cartridge in it because uh, they're they're pretty weak to fire. I had pretty good. Uh, the the one two punch of the polymer jet and the uh, ice jet kind of froze mm -hmm. them in place. That was a pretty mm -hmm. good tactic as well. But mm -hmm. they, they're yeah. they have, they're pretty tanky. They have a lot of health. So <laughs> the the polymer I, jet I, was my. Uh, what was, what was the. Uh, uh, Oh, so uh, metal cool, metal commander right? came up with the term for my build. What was it? A, a coom shocker? Oh yeah, it's a coom shock. Coom <laughs> yeah. shock. Coom oh, because you build. spray out all the all the polymer goop and, and then yeah, shock, shock it. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty shock funny. Build. You know, on the um the fact that things were picking up properly, all that we we've already mentioned getting stuck in in the land, there would still be as well just jumping up to stuff you wouldn't grab. You just you just refuse. Yeah, someone just refuse. Yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah. Uh, people who watch my playthrough this part was fucking stressful for me because I, i'd gotten up here right it's on screen if you want to see what i'm talking about and i yeah, was like so am i supposed to jump forward onto that but it's broken i don't know if my guy can grab onto that or if i'll just die and it's like but i can't i clearly can't go up on this ladder the stair even though in real life i would easily be able to do it because i don't trust it but i was just like so i don't know what to do <laughs> i do whatever i do i get reset fully if it fails i'm just like oh here we go jump of faith and it's like oh it worked it's like oh like fuck, and it's like I should never be in this position. <laughs> yeah. Like, why am I like stressed out about moving? It's so simple. Right now, ways. I just yeah, I just I found out, so, a wall. So I found has... out that holding down spacebar helps you climb better. I found that out. But sometimes okay. you, even on the yellow, even on the yellow rails that you're supposed to grab to, I sometimes land on my feet on those. 
because they're they're still like platforms. Did he so, randomly grab shit like cabinets or things that he absolutely yes. shouldn't be climbing? For? He did it for me <laughs> all the oh, fucking yeah. time. All During the time. Yeah, like lights, shelves on cabinets. To... Yeah. Absolutely insane. Why the hell is that a thing? It's so annoying. I think you'd have ledges that are just sort of like marked to not be grabbable. The, but... the only reason I can think of why that happens is you, you dodge to the right, but you're actually like a little higher up. So you're kind of in the air, and then the game thinks, oh, you want to grab onto this because you're jumping. That's the only reason I can think of why that happens. Because it happens mostly, happened mostly to me while I was in a fight. Dodged something, and then you just grabbed something and went up. It was like, oh. Which or of someone just said, the protagonist is or, or, a house cat. When you, <laughs> you grab a, uh, like a shelf that's in a room, and you can't actually climb yourself on top of it because it's it's high up, right? It's like it's near the ceiling. So you're just dangling there while enemies are hitting you. It's like, oh, Did you... how come this how come this ledge has grab enabled? Oh, it? oh, here it is. All right, carry on talking, but just look at look at what I'm streaming here. This fucking shit drove me nuts. Um, Surely this is the sort of I, uh... thing playtesting should have caught really quickly. The grabbing onto random shit you don't want to grab onto. Doesn't this look like I'm supposed to be here? Like I climb up to this, and jump up, and then it's like, and I'm stuck forever. Uh, yeah, the, just, yeah. Um, I think my stream really is behind. Use, I think that's just level design needs to communicate very clear. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> clarity. Yeah, but it wasn't show, even kind of yellow. In... You know, I I, I oh, recall playing no. like playing like Uncharted or Assassin's Creed and being like, how? Why is there random white paint on all of these? <laughs> this doesn't make any sense. The and assassins that came before you, guiding <laughs> your way. <laughs> well, when, once you play this like... game, you realize, oh. They're there because the game would suck without them, even though it makes no sense. Because <laughs> just grabbing onto random anyway. shit, you have no idea if you're climbing properly. Okay, there was that one dream sequence near the end of the game where you have to go up like an elevator shaft or something, and there's beds flying up into the sky. And it's oh, like yeah. a platforming nightmare. Like, how, where where are you jumping? At? What, what are you supposed to do? There's like no set path. It's all just random garbage right, in the sky. Right. Fuck. Garbage in the sky. Yeah, they started, By the way, they started painting. Right after this glitch, I get into this area, start finding all these enemies, and um, I can the battle music doesn't stop, and I can't move on yet, and I'm like, why? And it's because two different enemies are stuck in two different spawn points. I had to kill them from behind the wall. No. Like, <laughs> well, I uh, I just mentioned it before. I just phased through a wall, like I was on the platforms were turning. I phased through the the wall and had to do it all over again. Mm. And also, I just had uh, some combat dialogue play when there was nobody. Like it was clearly combat dialogue, but I was in an empty room. <laughs> that was a little bit strange. Well, so funnily enough, <clears throat> I think th this is a good enough part to actually say if everyone can uh, jump in so you can experience it as it happens. But oh my, talking about like a we've we've talked about how the dialogue overlaps or rather plays at times that's maybe not appropriate. I think this will be a time where we can maybe talk quickly about the soundtrack and. Uh, we all introduced that, I guess, is the oh at one point, God. I'm uh, moving through, it's one of the late game facilities, I think, like campaign facilities, and uh, so it's around about here, and lots of things attacking me, and they're, they're popping on their Doom oh, music. Oh yeah, this place, yeah. I can, oh uh, yeah, this, oh, this, part. this, this fight was randomly had crazy music. Yeah. Well, there's a couple of times in the game actually. where they play crazy music. Game and, uh, just randomly Gordon. decides it wants to be Doom Eternal. Yeah, I fucking love this part. It's my favorite part in the game. I was like, Gordon I'm ripping through all these enemies. This sick music is playing. It's like, don't stop, please. No, <laughs> listen, listen to this. Game. Just listen to this. This is fucking over. Holy fuck. Well, the music is playing. But it was really a team effort. I'm sorry, who are you? Looting the cabinets, <laughs> taking down metal birds. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm about. To, I would just say what I'm about to say on stream. You will just let me say it anyway. Should the we nerd like voice? sift through about fifty shelves and, and drawers for just stuff? And you also have excellent work, science person. <laughs> and he's like, "Well, thank you very much. Oh, I appreciate it." They're just talking about something. Then in the background, it's <laughs> like. What is happening? What is going on? It's a very strange experience. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it seems like they had no, like, just, they just, no cohesion with how a lot of this ends up happening. It just sort of, it just happens. Also, just, uh. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. like they didn't expect you to actually pick those up while you were fighting. Yeah. Uh, well, the music wasn't turning off and turning on correctly for me. Uh, it was still on right now because there's an enemy in the area, but that enemy has no way of getting to me right now. Mm -hmm. So the director's just like, I don't know, I guess I leave the music on. Uh, yeah, I guess leave like, it on. I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah, there's a lot of games that lock you into combat arenas. That's 
if you want to um, like this. If you want to mute this, though, I let it play in the background for the people at home. All right. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Well, while we're talking about the music, uh, this game was really aggressive for me in terms of copyright. Even though I had streamer mode enabled, like like two to three copyright claims on my on my vods on basically all of them. It's music, right? That it was hitting. Yeah, and it was always specifically the music in uh, in on the radio when you were driving the car. Because right, yeah, real songs. Is and that, yeah, is that Rick's yeah, but the, the, uh, the point I'm trying to make is you implemented the streamer mode. <laughs> you turn it on, but yeah. you still get those copyrighted oh, songs. Like, yep. That might be uh, that might be like uh, the localization stuff. It might be publisher sided, where mm, be, yeah. it's not like they didn't clear the copyright with maybe like the West or mm. something like that. But that's so what streamer mode this, does. Mm. Is you is you basically do like you know so and so licensed song at home. You know, you do like uh, <laughs> original original songs that are nowhere else in the world that replace it. Even, uh, but did, you, did anybody else play the Hi-Fi, what was it, the Hi- Hi-Fi yeah, Rush. Hi Rush. Hi-Fi yeah. Rush, yeah. Like that game has a, a streamer mode as well where they take out songs like Nine Inch Nails and things like that and right. replace it with, a, with an original yeah. song that kind of has the same vibe, but it's not not as, quite as as it's awesome very but... rip off. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it sounds a lot <laughs> no, like I it, almost but... think they should have gone further yeah. away from some of them. Yeah, but it's enough to get streamers not copyrighted because that can kind of ruin your yeah, day, yeah. right? So, but yeah, that's weird. The streamer mode, there's games that don't have streamer modes, especially like try playing one of the old uh, GTA games nowadays. You're going to get like oh. <laughs> completely destroyed. I thought um, but, uh, <laughs> I thought this tooltip yeah. was funny where it was like, uh, the twin has the ability to store up energy in order to enhance its attacks. Attack it to take out its stored up energy and weaken your foe's special attack. This to me as a tooltip really came across as make sure to attack the enemy. Yeah, no. It's it's like, like, oh, 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 all right. Okay. I'll stop attacking them so that I instead I can attack them. It's like this is an FPS. Like I, I'm always attacking it. So the idea that I, it's like you should wait until it's charging up to just like, well, I'll just attack it. I guess. I just hate this yeah. You can also, see I, the bar. You can see it. I, I know, I know. Other games do this, but I've never liked it when they introduce a new mechanic at the very end of the game. Yeah, in the the, final literally, fight. the last spot. Uh, yeah, yeah. So this, uh, yeah. the parallel that comes to mind instantly. <laughs> <Classic>. <laughs> <laughs> but the the parallel here is uh, in Guild Wars 2, and there is a, certain enemies, like boss enemies in particular, have a defiance bar, a break bar underneath their health bar, and you have to do CC attacks uh, to break that bar and to, to lower it so that it essentially stuns them and stops them from doing like a powerful attack or a particular set of moves. So you know which of your abilities do stuns and crowd controls and dazes and things like that. And you kind of save them for these sections of the fight so that if you time it right, you can get a big bonus by um, breaking the bar, making the enemy vulnerable instead of just shooting everything you have at once. And that's the good version of what this game probably would have profited from with some of the boss fights and stuff as well. If you had certain moves that if you used them at certain segments would um, like create these vulnerabilities instead of just unloading all the time with everything that you've got. Yes. Yeah, it didn't, it didn't seem to take advantage of the element system as much as it could. Like the, the enemies didn't seem to be that affected, depending on if you used a like a, a weapon strong against robots versus organics versus you know fire versus like some some guys wouldn't really respond to being shocked, for example, where, where others were. But it wasn't crucial. Like if you ever played uh, Endgame, uh, Destiny, or whatever, like that, it was crucial of what kind of elements oh. you used. Like yeah. over like Borderlands stuff like that, yeah. where yeah. You, know, mm -hmm. you know elemental damage can be entire builds that are based around that. Yeah. Um. So, uh, because it's we're kind of just jumping around. Uh, after this happens, right? The you walk up and you're heading toward the next bit, and you see like another showcase of things, and there's like a chest next to each one of these. Just and look at this shit. I was just like blowing it all out, just absorbing yeah. everything. I think I even say when I'm going through here, like, I'm not even collecting all of it anymore. I sort of give up. I'm just holding yeah. down F and just watching all of this pilot be. But look what happens. Yeah, it just goes through the... I had that... I <laughs> did it slowly, and it still happened to me. Like, I, oh, no. I waited. <laughs> Why would you didn't even get a chance like to use it. Oops. <laughs> it's not even that. It's just how hilarious it is that you got this cutscene playing, and, like... On the side of the screen is like large neuromed capsule, shotgun shells, shotgun yeah. shells, energy module, oh. neuro polymer. It's like okay, <laughs> probably put that I, underneath the cutscene. That was probably a good thing to do. I had one bug where it would show that I picked up two rocket launcher rounds, and it stuck on there for probably 30, 40 minutes until I died. 
it would just never <laughs> go away. And I'm like, okay, I got those rocket. I got those rockets that I, it took me like 20 hours to even get the rocket launcher. I had probably 50 to, uh, or more rockets <laughs> collected before I got the rocket launcher. And I had easily 500 rounds for the AK before I got the AK. I don't know about you guys, but it took me forever to actually get well, the guns that I, I could use with the ammo that I already but had. 20 hours, one but of I was things already I... done with everything, so. <laughs> okay. I One of my notes, I don't, I don't even have a notes pulled up, but I know that I mentioned uh, watching Mahler was he, it seems like, how, Mahler, if you could remember, mm -hmm. how long was it between you acquiring a pistol and acquiring pistol ammunition? Oh fuck! I don't remember. Because I feel like it was it's probably quite a... It's probably minus time because I'm pretty sure you get ammo before you even have a. Yeah, pistol. mine was the opposite. When I was I watching Mahler, um, I got the pistol. Mahler got the pistol and he had those eight shots with it, and I feel like it was a long time until you ever got any pistol ammo for it. The thing is, I never use like I was always using the energy pistol anyway. Yeah. Like, cause um, the way it seemed to me was that, uh, as you would have saw me saying, like, it's just resource efficient to always try and use the, the energy yeah. pistol. Yeah, I just, just seemed to notice that you, you kind of just had those eight rounds for a long time and you didn't find any actual pistol well, ammo. Um, also, I think I it's strange that, that this is a game where you get the shotgun before the pistol. Or that's true, yeah. So, yeah, actually, it is, yeah. Well, well, a, lot I, of, I, a lot of the drops are kind of random, though. Like, the, the, the materials yeah, you get are semi-random. The, um, mm -hmm. the blueprints to actually make things are kind of random. So it's, it's, I think it's completely possible to, like, pick up stuff earlier to just get things randomly thrown at you. If I'm not I mistaken, I, I think in the, in the overworld, the schematics or the blueprints, whatever they call it, I forgot, uh, are random. Because I got a lot of doubles uh, while I was in the yes. overworld. But I think I, the dungeon ones are set. Possibly, mm. I think I'm not 100 sure, but if that's a vibe I got, yeah, I so, got re recipes like five times, and I actually right. got recipes for modules for guns I did not have yet. So mm. like I would get I would get okay. upgrades to guns unlocked before I actually got the gun itself. So it's very the, um, pacing. All, all the side quests that you go to, they give you or, or what are what are they called? They actually have a challenge. Oh, oh, the, the testing, testing, the, the testing, the testing grounds. Yeah. yeah, they all the rewards for those are all upgrades for items that you yeah, need. Yeah, those are set. To build. Yeah, and those those floompy chests that are supposed to be transportation devices or something. I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, they are all set. You can see oh. in the overworld as well. By the way, that's all the side quests you can do in the game as well. <laughs> So. Currently on screen is the lock picking. How'd you guys like that? Uh, uh, I kind of just fucked with it until it worked every time. Yeah. Also, I thought it was this, okay. game so, this game is one of the horniest games I've ever played without a sex scene. Like, that, oh, that's God. Oh. <laughs> yeah, maybe we should talk <laughs> nice about that. Way. I guess. Yeah. I think we all know exactly what you want to talk about now. <laughs> wait, are we done with the bugs? I, I um, wait, let me do it. Yeah, we do it. I thought we had I one really big one. for the bugs. I prepped something. So. Oh, my goodness. Really? Yes. So, oh, yeah, yeah. Should we do that I, now? I, Is that what I, we should do now? <laughs> I remember one where I was phasing through a through an elevator, and I could see where the elevator moved <laughs> underground. I've seen people fun. fall through maps in this. Of the... Yeah, actually, I was I watched. I think I think I watched Sophia Narwitz play this, and she fell through the the ground once or twice. Lots of like, I think I think it was her. It was somebody else? I think it was her. But there was like like a few like, oh, I clipped out of bounds. Oops. I mean, yeah. I think I can like really a lot of games have that. Game, apparently, <laughs> yeah. In terms well, of so wanna... yeah, Dur during my playthrough here, my Mal I'll give you the clip. I I set up a, a two minute supercut here during my playthrough. Um, I encountered a glitch that I haven't seen anywhere, whatsoever. Okay. Okay. And well, it's, it's it's the the film reel bug. So if you want to put that in the in the watch together or something, we can check. Do it we out. do we want audio or? Yeah. Yeah. Audio, please. All righty. All righty. Oh, yeah, I'm trying. I'm looking around. One of the film reels. I have no data what? Uh, why is this attached <laughs> to my phone? Oh, my. <laughs> why is it so comically large? <laughs> like, why am I so aroused by it? Thing. But I want to see both. Oh, it's still there. <laughs> it, it stayed the rest of the game. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> oh, my. Is that the thing you pick up? To that was awesome. It's like the shit. It's a Russian Tommy gun. <laughs> a Russian <laughs> <Moscow> typewriter. <laughs> 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 
It's not even on one of the gun models either. It's on your hand. <laughs> Wait, oh, is, 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 oh whoa! Yeah, it's, it's attached to the, the specials. <laughs> New weapon. That's pretty interesting. Wow. That's wild. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like <laughs> <laughs> as if you're throwing it at him. It's like watching really bad Marvel movies. It's like here, watch it. Do you like my film? <laughs> <laughs> Take a look. Uh, <laughs> Take a little sniff. <laughs> you got it. Oh God, it's gonna be the uh, uh, like, This is amazing as well. <laughs> Oh, it's still there. <laughs> 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 it's and the everything. <laughs> I participated in the development of the game. How would you rate the game? Well, There's... look at look at what's on my hand right now. <laughs> well, okay, keep in mind, we have a film reel. This film reel has been glitched onto our hand for the past half hour or so yeah. from the film reel room in yeah. the basement of the facility, and it's still with us. Whoa. I think that's that must be where the character model actually is just visible. This is like the, the cutscene model for the character. Yeah. That's where it has to be. Oh my god. Film Real is a true final boss. <laughs> that's good shit. So that's great. That's we just we just for, for something happened that it attached the film reel to our glove. So whenever our glove did something, the film reel would yeah. like move with the model, and then it just stuck for the rest of the game. That, well, that, uh, that was the the thing you give uh, the doctor to look in at the, the archive, right? And that's the yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Oh, yeah, bizarre. you're you're down in the archives, and you have to grab, I think, like three or four film re wheels yeah. to like see your history, your the, the big reveal at the end of the game. And you're walking around this ruined lab or something, and the films are are sitting around. But yeah. we picked one up, and then it just it just stuck with us, it just, and it wouldn't <laughs> go away. <laughs> hey guys, I'm coming with you. <laughs> <I'm still laughs> Yeah, well, I got a couple uh, high quest quality trigger. euro jank. I got a couple quest trigger errors where I had to restart. Uh, plenty of getting stuck on terrain. Um, probably the biggest one was definitely, and this is documented and and quote unquote fixed, was the fact that any PC players uh, who uh, played the game on Game Pass could never, ever, ever, ever pick up a, neuro a neuro module. Like yeah, they, you would even kill oh, like I, I killed a Pliush and then saw a neuro module fly out of him and stop yep. in my face. I could even use the, the scanner. It showed like uh, as shiny as if it was an item I could pick up, but it, I could not pick it up. And yeah, it's, it's I, just and, floats in the air forever. Yeah, it's there. I, the model yeah. is there, but it doesn't exist. Actually, it and comes I, out of I, the enemy and then it just stops in front of you. Yeah. And it, after that, I'm like, what the hell? So I actually looked it up and I'm like, yep, that's a bug. And th they supposedly had patched it already, but apparently the patch was not retroactive. So it was uh, something that was in the save game. So I, I could basically oh, no. never, ever, ever get those upgrades that required. Yeah, which it. means yeah. you, you, th there's upgrades you're locked out of. Uh, for you can't example, can't get the real gun. Yeah, you can't get the real gun. Get can't get the magnum. Uh, yeah. You can't use the uh, what was it called? It's like one of the scopes that has like thermal detection or something. That lets you basically look through walls or see enemies through walls. Can use that one. Uh, so that was fun. Yeah. I was like, oh, I finally get to ray the gun. I want to check that out. That sounds kind of fun. It's like, nope, you can't even build it. Oh, so, great. So I don't know about what you did, Metal, but what I did is I looked it up. And I'm like, okay, where's the INI file? And I found the INI file. And you could actually, uh, using just like WordPad, go in there and change all the requirements and all the settings for all of the uh, recipes you could ever get. So I'm like, okay, well, if I can't get neuromodules, then I'm going to eliminate neuromodule requirements for everything in the game. So that's what <laughs> I did. Hacker <laughs> man. Wow, <laughs> man. I, modern I, problems that require invested, modern so I, uh, Yeah. Yeah. So oh, that I, sounds, I, like a, sounds like a fun, a fun fix. To do, someone though, just described yeah. that's pretty crafty. Uh, <laughs> yeah. That on my sucks, stream though. last night, I was talking about the difference between a mod and a hack, and that sometimes they can serve the same purpose. It's just more about the method you go about it. Mm -hmm. With a mod being code you apply to the code of the game, and a hack being you going in and modifying the code that's there. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I just, I, I just realized that's the thing that was happening, because I think it was the same with you. I, I was just going through the game. I think I noticed things flying around. It was like, oh, that happens sometimes. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Yeah. And then at some point, it's like, shouldn't I be having like some of these? I have all resources, but I don't have that one. That's weird. And I think somewhere yeah. in the, somewhere in the, in the menus, you can actually check who drops what item. Yeah. Like yeah. which enemy. I was like, wait, I killed like 
ton I killed all these bosses already. Why don't I have this? So it's like, oh, maybe I got unlucky, like really unlucky. But then I start seeing them items like flo floating in front of me after I killed them. It's like, oh, I think yeah, that's a I bug. Yeah, I grinded for hours trying to get those. I even went up to like alarm level two where they started dropping those like uh, tougher enemies down there right. and killed, killing them. That even was freezing just them lame, beforehand. Though. The yeah. whole system, like, like as someone, as everyone here has probably played GTA, it's just like, what is your alarm system? It's like zero, one, and two, and it goes pretty much straight to two. It, yeah, I, yeah. And, and sometimes like, oh, you'd be fighting a whole bunch of enemies, and it would just be no alarm. Yeah, uh, and, and yeah, that you, you just I find it very confusing, like how it's meant to be conveyed, like the level of detection that there should be, because it feels like you can just shoot enemies. Like with a shotgun blast, it's very loud, and there's like no reaction from the world. It feels clunky as hell. I think it's, hell. Like I think it's only, through. I think it only well, goes cameras, up when you get seen by by those cameras. Yeah, that it seems to be it. Which yeah. seems odd. Well, like, and also, I mean, how do we feel about the stealth? Oh, <laughs> there isn't any. Stealth. Stealth. Uh, non-existent. Why does it? Like, yeah, I, the trick. I, think it is, I don't think. Isn't there a line in the game where it says something like, "You don't do"? Isn't there like a self-awareness thing about how there's just no stealth really? Well, why yeah. would they even Sometimes introduce you have to stealth as a mechanic? It's like one of the first yeah. things that you get introduced in the game, but like there are no mechanics that are really built to facilitate or support that yeah. system. That it's like there's the sound propagation is like, eh. Um, in terms of like an understanding of detection or being able to keep track of enemies, you don't have many tools at your disposal. Like there is nothing seemingly in this game that's like built to. What really even is level one? Help you with stealth. I don't know what stealth is. Like, I don't know what level one is, rather. Yeah, because I was yeah. going to say, like, it Just sounds like level one would be enemies. like, we'll send, you know, 50% of the enemies after you, and then level two is 100%, and you're like, okay. But if you, like, get inside a house and sit inside a room, your glove might be like, I'm sorry, but you are fucked. And you'd be like, yeah. okay, yeah, I, and then I, you're like, 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 fine. Like, and then I just went up the stairs, and then they didn't yeah. follow yeah. me, and then it went back mm -hmm. to zero. Oh, dude, the it's amount like of times I'd go in a place, and the front door would be filled with robots who can't get in. They're just like, <laughs> and just like, um, okay. It, it all contributes to, because, like, some of the stealth games can sometimes struggle with is, like, communicating to the player, I guess, where the area of effect for, like, getting detected is. Mm -hmm. Like, does it extend beyond this room? Usually, like in like in Deus Ex, if I remember correctly, that I'm talking about the later ones, it'd usually be like sort of a clear divide of like I'm going into this area now, so we like reset. But it seems like here it's very hard to tell like where this That's is how, extending uh, to. Splinter Cell would like, work. The last two Splinter Cell games, if you wanted to get your ghost points. Uh, you get them in big batches after every section yes, for all the right, enemies that were left right. undisturbed. Yeah, and it would say mm -hmm. like it would say you know you ghost bonus or whatever, and it's like ah okay, yeah you I'm get your points. It would say like X enemies stage. you know undisturbed. Communicating yeah. this can be tricky, but like I don't really see any sort of coherency to like the detection or stealth or like the mm. awareness. Well, like a lob level zero for me right now, and I'd be like yeah. a full on <laughs> fucking war. Yeah, it sometimes there's I'd a be... fuck ton of enemies around, and then it just I, I, all aggro. It's weird. I actually do mm. understand it. It's just you're not gonna like the answer. So um, it, it, it's only about the little. Well, the we've already talked to... It's only oh, okay, the alarm okay. things. Yeah. Yeah, we've already talked oh, about yeah, that. It's, it's like yeah. that's just that's just not at all intuitive for this world. Like so all strange. of these, you tell me all these robots aren't connected except for the cameras. Yeah. Yeah, and the okay. and some really of the robots helped. have a camera on them, and the, those are the ones that can communicate. Yeah, no, oh, yeah. it's not. I would just one 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 by the way. Uh just while we're wa uh, watching it. Um robots, if you're going to give people all these buildings and stuff everywhere, um <laughs> robots should probably be able to go in them. Yeah, like it's, yeah. this there's a difference between um ma designing it so that they can't get in and it's a form of defense. This looks like an oversight. Look at it. It doesn't know yeah. what to do with the terrain. It's like, "What? I'm mm -hmm. confused." Yeah, this is also why I think it might be more of like um, an asset issue where they just had a bunch of pre-made assets they kind of slapped together. It kind of feels that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, they're, they're... I think it's just I think they just have all these uh, robots and they have all of these places that you can go and they didn't think about how they meshed. The thing is, um, how could they possibly design that robot and never actually get to the point of considering how it gets through an average doorway? That's not even yeah. like a complicated doorway. That's just a normal one. Or a staircase. Because like you if you're thinking about fighting these guys in laboratories and things that But there are doorways in there's... laboratories, too. Yeah, I, I don't yeah. know. I guess they just... I, I don't know. I suppose need, it was well, one of those to... issues where they said it wouldn't happen too often. We should focus our efforts someplace else. Mm. They needed to, to basically make a binary thing where, like, okay, this this... This building is not secure, so put a big hole in the building so that the robots can get through. 
Or yeah. this building is basically a Resident Evil safe room and nothing. Or just let the robots click yeah. through mm -hmm. the doorway a little bit. You know, It'd be really cool. So I know this is asking too much, but if the buildings were like destroyable and they could hack through the doors by breaking open bigger holes, you should be like, yeah. oh shit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the game is surprisingly um, non destructive. Like, you can't break uh, hardly anything in the game, which is weird considering just how much destruction you can do, like in terms of, you know, rockets. I think, well, like in that. turn, I think depending on the engine, break instantly. <laughs> Speaking day, of breakable uh, engines, yeah, but uh, yeah. I think that would have been a that would have been a probably a shit ton of more work to make mm. destructible I, environments. Yeah, I think, I think a, look, like, fake ladders. I love them. I hate uh, fake I ladders. Uh, don't put fake ladders. Don't light them. I think that there's like a, a middle ground, right? You don't need to have the environment be destructible, but having destructible oh. props, yeah, destructible props. Yeah, look, you can keep speaking. Crazy. I'm just saying, like, like it's just this guy <laughs> was like, yeah, no, I know. He's doing it's been a rough day for everybody. So, the uh, the ultimate e example of what you guys are talking about is the bridge before the final section of the game. H how okay. many of you guys yeah. just drove right through it and oh, just I didn't try it? I tried, but then I saw oh, there yeah. was enemies, there was bosses, and I wanted to kill them. Yeah, there was I... the the two spaghetti men who were yeah. hanging out in the bridge. Especially because yeah. the game says you should probably take a car to get there. Then you should expect people to. Plus, I mean, it's just you got cars yeah. everywhere. You know, you got to yeah. plan for cars. You got to put a big barrier or a turned over bus or some rubble mm -hmm. or something that stops them from, you know. Yep. And this so, is this is the moment. This is the moment where I realized that after killing this Pioche, because I, I my car got like kind of jacked and so couldn't turn properly. Wow, that's really effective. I should have gotten that upgrade. Um, yeah, I didn't go to canister on it. Yeah, amazing. it's amazing. Yeah. Yep. It's so good. <laughs> I never got that one. I, I, I couldn't we'll get, get all, all the energy upgrades, upgrades too. Upgrades. And wow. yeah. the way oh, it works, right, is that my yeah. energy's drained now, but if I pull out any other weapon like the uh, Kalashnikov, look at the energy go back up as I'm shooting him as well. Or well, maybe yeah, I haven't got an upgrade the... yet. It's a. Um, she's one of those consumables too yeah. to get all your energy back. Uh, yeah. There's that too, yeah. Yeah, but I got the. Oh, and like, there's oh, the. <laughs> oh, that was it. Went high. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you, Dude, I, I fuck with this guy a couple of times. When he jumps for me, I keep picking him up. It's kind of cool. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, Whoa. Did, you, did you figure out the the trick with the levitation? You you put you bring him up in the air and then you hold down the button to then slam him to the ground. That's how you do it. It's well, yes, weird. but uh, if you. It's almost a choice when you're running the build that I had where I try to drain okay. energy out of them. Wait, is he glitched? Oh, no, okay. He got out he of jumped. it. He's okay. So, for, just so the chat knows, uh, this this bridge basically, um, I think it's the barrier between the end of the open world section and then it goes out to like the final, kind of, final yeah. run of the game. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. And the game says, hop into a car, drive down the bridge. And as you drive down, there's like a hundred zombies. The, the plant zombies are there, plus two bosses. Um, and also, it's very hard to actually drive down. I'm not a fan of the driving in the game. And if you touch anything with that car, it just starts burning and it explodes. Yeah. It guys, explodes yeah. a lot. Guys, this is this is the USSR. Of yeah, it course. is a turbine, the, so. Of course, the cars <laughs> explode when you touch them. So the game makes it feel like this is going to be almost like a chase a chase sequence that you just you're supposed to drive through everything and hit a bunch of people and it's going to be really fun and it was kind of fun, um, but the bosses they just show up and they fuck you up. Um, and I think at that point, you're supposed to stop and fight the bosses. But the interesting thing is, if you stay, if you somehow keep the car and just get to the end and keep going, but you have, you've actually triggered the boss sequence. So they've spawned, <laughs> they will follow you right to the end. Like, oh, wow. like, like the, the, the car spawn oh, right this here. This is a problem that Fallout 76 had where enemies didn't have like a range limit of where they would stop pursuing <laughs> you. They weren't like they weren't yes. like anchored or tethered to a certain point on the map, and after fifty meters, a hundred meters, whatever it was, they would stop pursuing you. Uh, and so, in Fallout seventy six, if you pissed off an enemy, it would like chase you forever, theoretically. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah. So, so Mahler, it looks like you haven't triggered the boss, or, you're, or you've already killed them because there's no health bar, right? But if if you get to this part, if you get off the bridge and the boss is still alive, it will just chase you forever oh wow. it will just keep it, it will just keep coming yeah. it will it will completely leave the bridge area it will chase you and shocker. it will trigger every other enemy <laughs> that it that it comes into contact with oh really? and also okay. and that that state persists through saving so you can get to, to the facility at the end save the game like, well, the players are still down, chasing you <laughs> yeah you, you can turn off your computer turn it back on reload your save and all the enemies are just sitting at the save point with the boss. Oh no! <laughs> Whoa! Oh, I came to the wrong neighborhood. <laughs> that's a, that's a um, challenge oh. for you. Wait, wait, wait! While, while it's on my mind, um, little cool detail. Um, you're right. It doesn't really do it accurately, but it's a nice little thing that they put in. Your right hand is shifting. 
as you're driving the car. Yeah, that's, oh, yeah, that's cool. cool. It's 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 yeah. a neat little detail. Does it work like it should? Nah, but it sort of works I sometimes. Wish... That's a neat little detail. I wish I had the timestamps, but I rolled this car so many times, and it would always like end <laughs> yes, with just did. being back on the road and being chill. And it's just like, yeah, there you go. <laughs> I've seen you do it at least three to four, at least three four times. An American when I was cars watching you. It's really funny. The <laughs> so I, I, just, I don't. I, I just remembered uh, one of the Pliushis, Pliushi, whatever you want to call it. The spaghetti man. Uh, the one in the uh, the first one you fight in the theater. Uh, that one clipped for me through the floor or something. Uh, oh, that's, yeah. Did you still kill it? No, it was it was gone. It was just gone. <laughs> just that, fell and despawned. That's why I had the uh, the the health by just being there the whole time. Uh, oh, damn, that upgrade is so and, good. And then someone in my chat was like, "You should probably reload." I had that, and then my save file was busted when I started loading oh. it back up. I was like, "Oh, thank you for telling me." So I was just gonna do it again. Oh, actually, one of my moderators had that same glitch with that same enemy, glitched oh, through the floor okay. and destroyed their save file. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Um, yeah, I don't have footage of, of all the enemies at the save point because, like, we had reloaded the game to grind in between streams just to get some more stuff. And right. when we loaded it up, we like just everyone was was just there looking at us. <laughs> like, like, hey, there's like 15 robots, and then two of, and the, and both bosses are just like standing there in the oh, save hut. And I'm like, if you have oh, to at that point, that must be so satisfying. Just pick them all up, and then, like, boom. That's well, how I mean, Kinesis looks like it's fucking insanely good. Yeah, maybe oh, that's a good to segue huge into range. It's awesome. Talking about maybe gunplay and powers and stuff, because I found that throughout the game, I just had one thing I relied on that was basically better than everything else. And at first, it was the energy gun, and especially its yeah. secondary attack. That was whenever I had two or more oh, enemies, it was just easy. Oh, yeah, yeah it was good. just so yeah. good. Yeah. <clears throat> and uh, by the time I hit the end, yeah, it was this melee weapon that was just ridiculously overpowered playing the uh, game yeah. for you. I think you had the same, you basically have the same loadout than I had at this time. Collage, yes, the blade one, grenade launcher, well, and, and, and telekinesis pistol. on backup. Whenever anything went badly, yeah. telekinesis would draw a bonus bar of energy out of all the enemies, and then you can crash them all mm -hmm. to the ground. It was so when okay. you up When you upgraded, yeah. you can pick up big enemies as well, which yeah. is really good. Yeah, the weapons are kind of strange in this game because it feels like the Dominator is going to take over as your primary energy weapon instead of the uh, the, the energy pistol, but it never does, you know? I tried well, it, I it, it, it was My energy shit. pistol got outclassed <laughs> by this weapon. I didn't need the energy pistol anymore because I had this. The Dominator mm -hmm. got pretty good if you, if you did all the upgrades and then got the shotgun. Uh, that uh, The homing okay. shotgun was pretty good. I, I, never okay. got the, I never got the rapid fire, but the homing shotgun version of the Dominator actually did a lot more damage than any, any of the guns that did ammo that had ammo maybe aside from the rocket launcher so. yeah. see look am i like am i supposed to do this or not <laughs> like, no no you, I don't no the answer are. is no <laughs> the answer is no so the, the gun that really disappointed me was the rail gun that thing kind of sucks oh please tell me about it? it i couldn't use it <laughs> yeah well i i, I after after seeing two literal neuro modules just floating in my face taunting me i was like okay i'm gonna figure out how to remove that from the game <laughs> So I did, and so and I did precisely two upgrades because I didn't I didn't go through all of the testing ground upgrade things because they just took <clears> so <throat> so damn long. But uh, yeah, I got the the Magnum, which is actually really good if you upgrade the pistol to the Magnum. It does like a lot of damage. It uses huh. like four bullets each or something like that. It's pretty good. I never built the um, pistol or found it. Uh, I think you really? can find it in the first area, but I didn't yeah. build the first area. Didn't... It's oh. on a desk. Yeah. I just but, uh, missed has... that one, but I got the recipe, but I, so I never build it. I had so much ammo for it, though. Oh, well, I just had so much resource. My my storage <laughs> so was fucking huge. Yeah. Um. Oh, a quick, because uh, it happened while you were playing. Um, Devs, you don't have to make a game where when the players, like, crowd-controlled, push to the ground, stunned, the enemies will still beat you. Um, mm. you, you don't have to do that. You can, can we just you not be pushed game, to the ground? It's don't... really annoying. It needs to be like a special thing if it's in the game, you know, like uh, not just a lot of like basic failing, um, just... failing an opportunity, maybe because like just having enemies run up too quickly and knock you over, it always feels like a delay. I'm just like, yeah, all right, no, I'm yeah, back. Now up I gotta again. wait to control and, the, you know, my character, which is always and fun. Mini, mini rant. Don't end. Don't start your final boss with three uh, unskippable QTEs. Oh my god, don't do that. Oh, that. that. <laughs> yeah, oh, uh, I think Mel, you Hold and on. I Hold both on. died on that. Or it was uh, me and someone else. It was a dev who was watching the, the yeah. airplane. I mean, the airplane. No, it's the, no, no, the we, final we boss die. intro. Oh no, yeah. I think I didn't die for on that. Or did I? I don't remember. I think I was I watching have. Dev's stream and he died on it. Uh, somebody did. Well, I, I did I too. I actually have a. It's this I've shit. got a better criticism. 
I, I've got a better criticism of it. Uh, how would you actually make your final boss fightable? <laughs> make it good? Because, yeah, this is it, by the way, guys. Right? It starts up, and you're like, all right, time for FPS. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, well, no, no, cutscene. You're like, oh, okay. And then it suddenly is like... Press oh, yeah, F. No, you're I, like, wait, I what? What was that a thing? You're like, dead. It's like, yeah, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. This no, is right. drilled. I I this is really oh. fun, by the way. Very good addition to Your the game. Your interaction with that was very important. It was a very necessary part. Yeah, it was. Sense. That makes the boss fight, of course. Yeah. That, this may be like second to, uh, not as bad, but second to, for those who played Mass Effect, there's a certain Mass Effect game where it had like a 20 minute cutscene, and then right in the middle of the 20 minute cutscene is a QTE. Oh, <laughs> that was that? And Remind Jesus me. Jesus Christ. Oh, God. I hated that. I, I don't Was it in for Andromeda? Isn't in three. At the end of three. three. Uh, there was there, like, after 10 minutes of cutscene, so there's like a QTE, and if you do fail the QTE, a major character who's been in all three games dies. <laughs> uh, wasn't that, um, was that, uh, wait, damn, and, I'm trying uh, to, who was that? I, uh, and, are Anderson. we saying? Yeah, I was about I mean, to say. Sorry. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I gotta watch yeah. my spoiling, yeah, so. Sorry. The, yeah, the game's the like want me to play Mass Effect or something. Yeah, it's, it's pretty old now. <laughs> and it uh, wasn't me this time. Totally worth playing, but oh my god, that's such a dick move. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I think it might be one of those things where if, if they're in there, they can be used. They can be used well. Um, I will defend their use in certain instances. A lot of the times are used very poorly. Mm -hmm. You're not expecting them and they come out of nowhere, which just annoys you when they suddenly happen. But you got to be careful when you put these in your game. Yeah. I promise you, you're probably not nearly as clever as you think you are by putting QTEs in your game. <laughs> Rule of thumb, you're probably like doing yeah. it wrong. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're probably yeah. doing it wrong. Um, this game doesn't have a ton of QTEs, but the QTEs it has are just baffling. Like, I've never seen a stealth game with QTEs where you have to do a QTE for every single stealth kill oh, with the yeah. game that, that with the game oh, that has zero that upgrades in stealth. So it basically dissuades you from doing stealth ever because there's no real advantage to it, and mm -hmm. it's not viable. Well, dude, the so. the plushy bushy mushy when they grab you <laughs> and it's like fucking ten. Oh, yeah. Like I want I want to say like good half a minute of QTE stuff. Yeah, yeah it's like, like let me go, <laughs> please let and, me and also go. The, 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 your screen geez. turns oh, like seconds, red, yeah. like you're about to die, but you're actually not. Yeah. It's just yeah, just yeah. And your health bar is not showing during those sequences, so yeah. you don't really know like like when it when it ends. Did I lose health? Did I not? Yeah. I didn't see my health bar go down because it wasn't showing. So I'm already I, dead. Yeah. Like is this even worth me pursuing trying to finish this? I don't know. Wow, I really regret Man. making that upgrade. That would have made sense so much. Oh easier. yeah, this Jesus this Christ. weapon is sick. Uh, That's ridiculous. The, By the way, the did you did you guys QTEs, think? Oh, go ahead. But just the thing about QTEs is that like, I I know they were initially they were initially made to make cutscenes seem more, more engaging. interesting, engaging. engaging yeah, yeah. 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 Like, it was like it was like 1999 on the Dreamcast with Shenmue. That was like the first quick time mm -hmm. event, and it's like let's. There you go. This is a very cinematic game. It's one of the first cinematic games. So let's let's put in some QTEs. They they invented them for that game. And I think everyone like universally agreed after that they're kind of shit. So why is it that 25 years later we're still doing them? Uh, I think as, it's as because said, they, there are they, some implementations that are okay. Yeah. They do exist. Or, yeah, it can be implemented well. They can also they also seem to be implemented very poorly a lot of the times, uh, or they're either overused. They come out of nowhere. Um, it's kind of a. I don't, you guys, for those of you who are familiar with Deep Rock Galactic, Ooh, there's yeah, in, there yeah. there are. Mm -hmm. There's mm -hmm. there's enemies called cave leeches in that game. And one of the issues with cave leeches, and really any enemies that are kind of like them that I hate anyway, is that cave leeches, they hang out in the ceiling in maps that are typically quite dark. Right. And if you wander <laughs> underneath them, they grab you and they pull you up and they damage you until somebody else Monocles. saves you. Oh, God. And yeah. The issue, first off, stop making enemies like this. All right, Left 4 Dead was 68 years ago. You don't have to fucking emulate everything <laughs> they do. But secondly, they're not common at all. So you never think to always be looking for them. So yeah. when they finally happen and get you, you're like, oh, fuck. You know, I, yeah. you're not, you're not, you're never in the habit of constantly looking for them because they're rare enough to not. And then the ceiling you know, is like in your super mind. high in that cave and dark. Yeah. So and this is ever to and this yeah. is the same issue that QTEs can have where if they're if they're oh, not just, common just one enough, thing, Rags. Um yeah. I said barnacles. Rags is talking about smokers, I assume. When he says left smokers, dead. yeah. Oh, I just like basically all of them, actually. <laughs> yeah. Um, just just any enemy that just hits you once and you're just useless until someone else saves you. You don't have to put those in your video games. And if they just fucking died as a mechanic and never came back, I not a single tear I would shed. Yeah, smokers um, are at least a, a smoke, 
Yeah, but Smokers at least makes sense because Duff or Dead is all about staying together and teamwork and don't get split apart because that's like a whole mechanic of the game. Oh, fuck them. Sure you don't split apart. <laughs> it, is, it sort of is in Deep Rock, too. Like, no, but, yeah, yeah but, but in Deep Rock, you can play solo, though. If you play solo, you're fucked. You're really, no, oh, because you have yeah. your robot with you. Um, uh, your robot doesn't save you, does he? It doesn't seem to save me. So, oh, just well, save I don't me. know. You're, you're in the on screen right <laughs> now is yeah. on screen right now is probably my my personal biggest piss off is that now the game shit? is set, the game is setting up to reveal the actual final boss, and here he comes, and then he j you just don't fight him. <laughs> yeah. yeah instead, oh well, wait. Should I show just, the oh. the cutscene where he's created first so we can get especially weirded out? <laughs> Oh, you mean uh, the Metal Gear Solid scene? Yeah, let's do that. Well, I don't even know Metal how to Gear describe Solid. it. I don't know if that was my part three or four, unfortunately. Where he's the, the big... Speak ill of uh, Metal that Gear was Solid right level. after you, you, ass you assemble Claire. It was the cutscene after that. Okay, that should be that should make it easier to find. I think that mm -hmm. was my three. Could Talk about things while I find it. Oh, oogly boogly. Uh, uh, both of the endings suck and they're super anticlimactic. <laughs> And um, <laughs> I, I, I got I the wrong one because it didn't register page. me pressing two. <laughs> like, it's just like I like the ending shit. Well, yeah, the yeah. largest yeah. shit. It seems so, like also it seems like ninety percent of that, like. No, go ahead, go ahead. No, I was just gonna say it seems like ninety percent of the important stuff happens in the last quarter of the game. Like, oh yeah, the pacing it's is a, very odd. It's the, the twist game, apocalypse, yeah. is what I call it. It's, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's Metal Gear Solid Two, the ending spread just over goes yeah. absolutely bananas like this is thing and i'm this person i'm related to you also this is your wife now well a part of it also the glove bad and uh, oh look it's the qte sequence with the <laughs> oh yeah <they're... laughs> i'm sitting there like when do i get to bang the robots <laughs> <laughs> ever oh, you actually, have your fridge this is another no, connection i don't with, want the fridge more spoken this is another another overlap with Forspoken is that they both have a choice near the end of the game where you can choose to go fight the final boss and then get your shitty ending or you can choose to walk away from the adventure and you get a really you short ending, ending where <laughs> you, you, just get, you, you just get an ending where your character walks away and is like, yeah, I refuse. Which Why is, is that a thing? There's way too many things that are reluctant, similar about point. Reluctant heroes. So or, well, yeah, there's a modern that's, friend that's, I hate. That's in the game's logic, the good ending, by uh, the way. Yeah, yeah. The, the fact that, I like, mean, it is because you kill in, the... In, well, sort of yeah. super AI. In, in, in the in the main ending, you you go into uh, what what was it called? Collective, and you're just stuck there, and you're just yeah, you're, just you're in like the dead and then collective, and you get to be with like your wife, but she's a robot, but she's dead, and you know she's dead, and yeah. I don't know, and and then like all of the, it's just shit, right? <laughs> you know, it's all just shit. And then the other ending is, as Dev said, you you just walk away, you rip off the glove. You say, I don't know what to do, so I'm going to leave. Yeah. And then you leave, and this then the why, credits happen. This is why the character starts to pretend like he's smart. It's like, ah, you gave me all this information, so you're actually bullshitting me. So I'm going to step on you, and now I'll leave. Yeah. Also, this whole sequence is stupid. Well, so I was about to say, let's start <laughs> yeah. here, I guess. This was one of the cutscenes where I think I was just like, yeah, I don't know what the fuck's going on anymore. It's, yeah, it's, it's weird like, without okay. any of, like, there's not... Like, you can make things that are weird and unusual. Oh, this is going to be a fucking deep cut. You guys know the. You guys know about the 1997 game Obsidian? No, anyone? Ring, that rings a bell ish? Yeah, well, okay, then this. The point is, you could be. Anyone in the chat who played 1997 Obsidian fucking gets 10 pooch points. Damn, now, that's a lot of points. <laughs> I'll, okay, yeah, I'll, points. I'll also be obscure, right? Turn because long point. this. This scene reminded me of Revolutionary Girl Utena, where Utena pulls the, the sword of the other girl's chest. Is that an anime? There's another obscure an reference. Anime. Yeah, it's an anime. It's an obscure ass anime. Based. No. <laughs> but carry no. on. <laughs> <laughs> like how this happens. Like, look at how this happens. What they're trying to do is, like, one of them reaches into the other by using a unicorn horn to open up her insides, which are goo, and then pull out this cylinder which is actually two keys that come out and then they attach them to their like foots and then yeah. they do this move to turn around and then they like put the things into another thing and, like <laughs> no no one would design it this way this is <laughs> retarded <laughs> this is <laughs> wow you like, got, why are you doing pretending this pretending like this is horribly inefficient what are you talking why about why does right? their leg have to be up like that it doesn't like just do so something can be weird but you can also see like the point behind it <laughs> the mechanic behind it you'd be like oh like a human designed this but it's a little strange 
But, you know, a human did this, and this is just weird shit for the sake of being weird. Yeah, but like, you say that, that really Rags, matter. we haven't even gotten it, to this bit yet. It's just, <laughs> also, it's this one. bit... Chilly it's man. someone's fetish, oh, Rags, that's the explanation. Yeah, what about that ass? And it canonically, it's quite canonically, the ass. this guy canonically this guy is called Jellyman. I showed you the, the picture oh. that's off of their official website. <laughs> Jellyman, He's literally called Jellyman, yeah. Full hail Jellyman. <laughs> that that's not like See? his uh, his like his model's name in the files or something. No, I showed you. I shared the picture on the on the chat. It, they call they call it Newton Fluffy. Which, those are the fluffy things you you play in the dreams. And Jellyman is literally Jelly that. He's made out of polymer. <laughs> call him Polymer Man. Why Jelly? Or Polly. I guess because he's red. <laughs> No. <laughs> I mean, no. They, they talk I didn't about say red polymer with you in the game. The He's advocating, okay? Leave him alone. <laughs> what, what's, what's weird is in the final cutscene, the black polymer guy actually looks pretty creepy from what you see of him. So I, I would have liked no, more of all... Silly. Oh, God. <laughs> no, he looks silly. <laughs> no, not, not, the, not the cutscene, but in the final, like, pre-rendered... You see, like, a, uh, or like a, uh, a photo of, like, his foot. That looks more like a, a man made of, like, black slick oil. That looks cooler than in the actual game where he looks like jelly. That's my argument. I, I can find the picture. I just didn't sure, fucking yeah. understand any of this. I, uh... Yeah. I see, and then the bath, room, like more... the bath drains and it's just a skeleton man. And you're like, okay. Yeah. It's weird this, for the sake of being they, they weird, see... I think. It's a this cool visual in the trailer. trailer, the trailer. Yeah, yeah. yeah this, is, this is trailer bait. This is all trailer Fun bait. It's functionally, really cool this doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Because all, all it does is just, oh, we souked him up into our polymer consciousness thingy, and now we have his knowledge or something. And it's like, okay, but why didn't you just throw him in there with your hands? <laughs> yeah, like, you, you didn't need the, two robot ladies. Why are you doing this? Uh, let's see. Well, let I mean, a, a lot of the game does seem to be, like, just sex appeal bait with the two robot yeah. women. Because they they heavily promoted them and they're in the game for like fifteen but minutes. But those make yeah. but those make sense in a way because if you're like this if you're Sechenev and you're super you know you're at the top of the tower and you 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 run all this stuff you would have if you have two assistant robots that protect you you making them like very feminine and pleasing to the eye to look at that makes sense like, like mm -hmm. I see why a human could do this and then you have the fucking like sex fridge. And like, nobody, <laughs> nobody would do this. Nobody is Hold turned on. on by this. No one thinks that this I actually is... like the sex rich quite a bit. Well, wait, uh, wait, wait. Oh, what man. Rags just said was very specific. And, and so what and so did my girlfriend. Like so, it? so uh, you know, there's mutual. What enjoyment. do you like about it? What do you the mean? Ballerinas what do you mean? Yeah, the <laughs> you liked you it. What do you like about it? See if I can find the sex fridge. Uh, I like that no other fucking company would do that in 2023 because they've all been castrated and it's just right, refreshing so to that's, see. So that's oh, a meta thing, right? We're ideas. talking in the universe of why this would exist. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. before we My, get to the okay, fridge, can I just, can we just talk about, like, oh, I'm so just sorry to interrupt scene, it, right? But this cutscene, since we were just talking about story cutscenes, okay, might yeah. even go with my, uh, my in-game commentary because this, this is how it feels. Right, oh, you get oh, yeah. you get knocked out. I can't remember why, but you wake up here, and I'm just gonna let this play. You okay? I'm fine. How many fingers? Uh, four. Great. Now get up. I need your help. Okay. Who are they? They brought you here. Put pressure on this wound. They tried to save you. And who are you? Doctor. You got a name? No time for small talk. God damn. <laughs> what? Forceps. So forceps, forceps, forceps. I'm on it. Get me them. What's this doing here? <laughs> what took you so long? <laughs> what? what? <laughs> you got a neural polymer capsule. You don't need one. <laughs> so what's your name, Doc? Larissa, and you ask a lot of questions. You know what? You're on your own. You what? <laughs> what? What? You're on your own. <laughs> I've got the equipment. Great. Now we're getting oh, fuck. You fuck this guy. Questions. Fuck comrade here. Why is everything so fast? Brought me here and saved my life. <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> Hi. And pose. Yeet. And then Jesus it's like, Christ, what was shit. that scene? I can tell like, you, but and now, you, now you're allowed to boss fight. Just mute, by the way, because that's, that's that. But. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, I. What the fuck? <laughs> like, scene was written while high. It's well, maybe like Ritalin or so. Whatever thing makes yeah. you. Because holy fuck! Like it's. Yeah. The the actors didn't even like when they were editing the lines. They put them like almost overlapping to the point where the characters yeah. clearly hadn't even listened to the other person speak. Yep. 
Well, yeah. when I was talking to that developer who was in in my chat, he said that like, again they didn't have any control over the over the uh, the other languages other than Russian, and that none of the actors in English knew they, they only had their lines. They didn't have who they were responding to, yeah. so they didn't know Why? anything about the story. They didn't know Why anything about the tone. Why would you send the same script to everybody? They, they didn't know anything about like uh, what intonation they should use. They they just said say these lines. And so they did. Oh, they just gave them the script and just said, read no, it cold. It was like, worse than that. They only with gave the direction. Yeah, they only gave them their character's script. And yeah, not yeah, what I, they're responding to. No context oh, or what they're saying. Yeah. So no context. It's just like, just say Jeez. these lines. It's and so it, weird. You'd think not, that you'd have one script for the game. You'd send everybody uh, theirs and well, say, you're this character. Say those I'm characters' lines. Um, it's not... It's not super uncommon that you can have people just get you know like their scenes but usually you'd include the context right you're supposed of, to direct like, them the that's the point who's yeah. responding to yeah it's very but, weird yeah. to just add oh. their lines and absolutely zero context it definitely like, felt so, like uh yeah, it definitely felt like uh acting over zoom or something like that where you're like okay yeah said line right. cool got it yeah basically yeah. they like the, the Everyone recorded from home, I think, and they just sent them. Okay, say these lines, and then they said them, and they just sent the file back, and then that was it. Yeah, That's send exactly us an audio no, file no, with you exactly. reading yeah. these well, lines. It's so disjointed. Oh, I think this is the intro to the sex fridge, actually, isn't it? It is. Yeah. It is. yeah. Oh god. I have a here complaint here already before you even walk in the room. I was well, say this fridge made me feel like Patrick Klepek watching a girl in a bra in Yakuza. <laughs> just, uh, that's that's some deep lore jesus yeah i i, I i'm happy someone got it but yeah i was just like oh wow i'm actually i'm actually <laughs> being made uncomfortable by this <laughs> uh, it feels juvenile it's weird that's a can someone remind me why this is funny see, but why this is even happening it's, it's for me this piece is you know like this belongs in a whole different game uh um, I don't think they really got the rest of it working, but to be fair, it does feel like seven games like put together this whole thing. <laughs> yeah, it does. So it it is juvenile and it is weird and it is out of place, and I like it. All right, I enjoy it, and the only reason that I enjoy it is because it's like I said before. So many game developers nowadays are all cucked. They're not going to put any semblance of anything interesting or edgy or slightly offensive in their games ever. I'll take it. All right. That's a lame reason to praise it. I think we, yeah, we can hit <laughs> maybe, we can maybe so, a little but I'm still There's an element of that that, like, I understand. Like, at least this company has the cojones or the, they've got some, like, they, they'll do it and it's not a typical thing that you'd see. Like, I get it, but I wish it was not cringe better. and juvenile, you know? Did, did they realize yeah, it, was so, it was so annoying? That was, that's why they replaced most of the fridges with the, just the generic, the generic female voice? Yeah. I think like they did that because I think, it, I think it would have been so abrasive that it would have kind of take people off if the if the fridge wanted to basically be inside you like constantly. <laughs> so I think they replaced most of the fridges with just kind of a generic female voice. It was very weird. I don't know. Did they ever explain I, I was why some fridges had why some fridges had like the girlfriend fridge programming, others didn't? Did I thought it was the same so. fridge. I, I, I figured they just made it so that it, she, sometimes she hit on you and sometimes she didn't. Weren't they in different areas? Yeah, they're different areas. Like, is she is she yeah. walking around the facility behind you or something? <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't know. Uh, it was sometimes weird anyway because you had the the safe room fridge, and then you walk out, go left, and there's another one. And I was like, why? Why? Why is that? That here? happens a few times. Yeah, yeah. Where it's just like, yeah. it's like five steps away. Like it, it's only gonna take me like ten seconds to get to the next one. That just seems odd. Yeah. Because uh, someone there was in the, the chat, someone in the chat says that there, there's like an, an audio log or something where. Uh, the guy who programmed them couldn't couldn't put his his programming into all the fridges. He like he like he was fucking with uh, some of them, but he only got some of them. Okay. Well, and God, hopefully he was go, slain by a robot before he was able to continue his work. Yeah. <laughs> was, it, was he the guy removing the like, sexual harassment or putting it in? Well, I think it was uh, I, I think, I think it was Victor. Actively. It was Victor. So he he had like kind of gone insane. I think he was putting it in. Oh, you mean in lore? I thought you were talking about during development. No, no, in the lore. <laughs> there was oh, like, okay. There, no, one of the one of the. Who, who, which one was Victor again? I think he was, he was the guy you have to collect Petrof. his head. Yeah. Yeah. Petrof, yeah. Yeah. So he's the guy who went nuts in the theater and he's not Sander that. Cohen. Yeah. So <laughs> he, he basically made the girlfriend fridge AI and he was fucking around by putting it in some of the fridges, but he didn't get all of them. That was, was something weird because the, the whole theater he's... sequence, I couldn't help but be like, you'll never be 
uh, the atrium oh, yeah. and stop trying, yeah, it's, please. It's, it's, it's Sander Cohen, yeah. This. Um, I, I, one of my complaints is before you enter the fridge room here, um, Charles is like, no, don't go in there. Nora's in there. She's dangerous. And that's all he says. And yeah. then you walk in the room and then she grabs you and everything. And it feels like a struggle for your life. And then it's okay. I'm like, yeah. Charles, Charles, what are you doing? You need to tell this guy what's going on. He, yeah, he she's says, a very dangerous he, opponent. Yeah, stop, Major. Don't go through that door. There's an evil robot on the other side of it, and here's what you should do. Yeah, but isn't nah. it funny, though? Yeah, it's very funny. <laughs> yeah. It's really funny. To be fair, and James has already been yelling at me for this, because I haven't mentioned yet, the, the fridge was, was right the whole time. The fridge was the yeah. whole time. Take <laughs> off the glove. He's going to manipulate you. There, there you go. I mean, okay. <laughs> cool. Yeah, you could I mean, be right I, for the wrong reasons. Yeah, it's just, uh, uh, it's just you know how like the tear thing. It's like, man, that was like really, <laughs> really cool how that was all set up in here. It's yeah. like the fridge said the glove was evil. That's something I I, I noticed at what some point. Sense. Also, the like, fridge oh. is evil. The fridge well, like so that's another one that isn't you that comes across it. It's another problem with like a trendsetter in any way, shape, or form. Like this game obviously was like Bioshock's big ol', you know, um I was about to say what you bring me. No. <laughs> like, what you bring me. I mean we haven't finished that woman yet. Maybe that is the uh, Yeah, it could be. But um you know, would you kindly they like we've gotta have something as as crazy and awesome as that and it always feels so like uh you thought that was oh uh, yeah. okay. That's Somebody fine. was actually thinking that he, him saying "my boy" would be some kind of phrase, like "would you kindly." The thing is, you game. can't you can't do that twist because then everybody would be like, yeah. "so that's just a rip off." Yeah. yeah. But at this point, I just didn't know what the fuck we're doing, so I was just kind of thinking of things that could happen at the time. They, yeah, they knew they had to do some twist, and they followed the Bioshock formula. It's like, okay, yeah, there's a lot of things going on, a lot of players, and then at the end, the the final player is revealed, or the final whatever is revealed. So they did something like that. But in the end, as much as they borrowed from Bioshock, it ended up being, what, Plasmid? Oh. Uh, mid. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Hey, there you go. Redeem hey, I, I see you skipping hey. here. I see you skipping through here. Yeah. And it showed you swimming through the, uh, just the, the strange polymer, polymer structures. Yeah. How come yeah. they always have, like, plants growing on the sides? I don't know. I it's. I mean, also... for for gaming, it's so that you could distinguish the walls That's from the inside. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I don't know sense, why it's in the. Maybe yeah. they they're trying to imply it's like oh. The tr well, the polymers will be used to hypergrow the plants too, so I guess it's probably like super fertilizer. That's yeah, my, maybe. That's my guess, but really, it's just to make it visible. You also hear like mind things. The from voices people. of the dead. Yeah, I. Th when I start noticing, it's like, oh, they're gonna. Is this gonna be like something clever where you can hear like your, I don't know, your dead wife's voice or something? It's like, no, it's just random chatter. It doesn't matter. It's like, oh, okay. Well, again, it's so much, and it's put earlier on in the stream, but noise. There's just so much stuff. I don't know what I'm supposed to be listening to. Right, like yeah, there's a lot yeah. of information coming at you all the time, and it's difficult to tell like how much of it is relevant or how much of it is well, just like bad to compare to. Yeah. Compared to Dead Space, like that's a game that has very limited uh, pieces coming at you, and they're very specific. And even that, I didn't fully absorb. I didn't read everything and understand everything. But this game, I had no chance. Mm -hmm. Let me just pause it here, if you don't mind, because th th I'm thinking about this now. So, for for those of you in the chat who don't know, there's these locks and there's these complicated locks that have like three pods, and sometimes they there's like one puzzle in them, and sometimes there's two puzzles. Um, and I actually found the, the variety of different ways to unlock a thing a little bit refreshing. It wasn't just picking a lock, right? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. did, did did we ever see a lock that had all three utilized? Uh, no, I don't I, think I'd so. I'd say no, I can't oh. remember one with three. I, I, I remember two, like mostly the, yeah. the, the, a lot the of timing twos. one and then the other one. I'm trying to remember, what's the... I think number three was one probably one. determined to be just too there much. There might have been one lock. <laughs> there might have been one and triple that... one at the end, but that probably had... I don't think it had this one on it, but it had the timing, um, uh, shuffle around thing. I don't know how else to call it. Uh, and then the key card, key. Yeah, I might have like little wafer key. Yeah. Little. I think there okay. might. I think there might have been one that had all three, but one of them was a wafer. Yeah, it was quite pro quite, quite rare then. at the end. It was probably at yeah. the end. Uh, and then a, a lot of them had one, two. and by the, by the second half of the game, the lot a, a bunch of them had two, but I can't remember a single three. And, I, and like by the end of the game, I was like, wait a minute. I, I, I thought they'd, they'd fill these out eventually, and it just seemed like they never did. 
Yeah, I'm kinda, it's, maybe I, I just missed it, you know? Now, granted, I haven't played it, but I feel like if you were regularly coming across locks that had three, that'd be like, ah, it'd start to get, like, this is too much yeah, for yeah. one locked door. You know? <clears throat> yeah. Because, um, you know, like, it, Bioshock, for all of its, you know, things to praise, the the, the hacking with the pipes minigame was, uh, yeah. it could have used a bit less of those, <laughs> you know? Yeah, that's fair, probably. It was a lot, yeah. <laughs> And, um, but to be fair, a lot of the stuff in Bioshock hacking was optional. Um, so like you could ha ha optionally hack cameras, optionally hack, I think, the robots. So it kind of gave you a way to, and it also sure, gave you an upgrade like, path as well, too. So. I think Rags' point would stand even with defenses, including but not limited to. Once you re research cameras and certain things enough, you would auto hack. You can buy auto hacks. Yeah. Like, these are all true, but it's still there a lot. It's one yeah. of those like, oh, I should just definitely do it because it's beneficial to me, but it's just so annoying to do it every time especially at the end when it gets longer and longer and you're like oh mm. maybe something quicker like, i will say yeah. i quite like the yeah. water puzzle well, yeah that, the pipe puzzle that's what i, I was I, gonna I, say that it would almost be better if through the game it, they got easier mm. Mm. just so that you'd be able to fire them off in the middle of combat without it feeling like you've totally broken your flow granted if you're in a well, first person shooter battle it's tough to have well, any Well, Deep puzzle. Rock Galactic does this, another DRG oh, reference. Uh, the hacking <laughs> in DRG does not stop the game. Uh, so the faster that you can complete it, the, uh, Surely the better a, off you will be. Mm -hmm. A closer yeah. comparison, Rags, well, is Bioshock 2, right? They changed it, the hacking game to, yeah, being to the that, little uh, meter. Yeah, the time. The dark, or the reaction down. thing, yeah. Yes. Well, Bioshock 1, it was similar to the System Shock ha hacking. That's also kind of like the game Pipe Dream. It, it would almost, I guess, kind of a similar equivalent would be if they made a game now that just had like Tetris as your hacking portion. You just have to get one like line or something. Tetris was already that would, out. Oh, that would be bad. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, hacking. Tetris would have been out, but I'm saying that like as, as a way to explain it differently. Sorry, I guess I didn't <laughs> praise that properly. Cool. No, I guess having a, a mini game of Tetris would actually be kind of interesting. It's a Russian game. They could have done it. Oh, yeah. yeah side I note, has like anyone the... seen the trailer to the Tetris film? Yeah, that film looks yeah. cool. It looks, yeah, it looks fucking cool. awesome. I'm gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> oh, yeah. Look, yeah, that one in, for sure. In, cool. in terms of, of the of the hacking for this game, I think it wouldn't get as old as you guys are saying just because there's so many different types of mini games. No, I'm, it's I'm not fine with just... the hacking in this game from what I've seen. Well, yeah, you have like you have the snapping. You have yeah, the, the the pegs that you have to light up, and you have mm -hmm. the the three colored dots you have to align and rotate. I like them. Like those seem like pretty decent. Yeah, yeah seem like a little decent variety there. Did you yeah. did you guys uh, solve the one all the way at the end where you have to align the walls properly to find the code? I quite align like that. Align the walls properly to find the oh, code. Oh, yeah. There, no, there's one. There's one. I, there's one I, I just of, cheated that one. Yeah. Oh, you bastard. <laughs> it was hard. Like, so so there, there's this there's this room in the final facility of the game that has a bunch of neat stuff in it that you should probably get because there's a lot of a lot of I think is well, the it's just a in there actually? No, it's just all, a lot of resources and random okay. recipes again. But I just like the, the way you you had to solve it. So there's basically one of these locks we just saw earlier with the mm -hmm. with the with the, the dots. Pegs. Yeah. And or pegs, yeah. And uh, I was like, man, I really want to finish the game, but I also really want to open this door. And I know there's a key somewhere around here. And in universe, I don't know why they put it on the wall there anyway, but I just liked it as a puzzle concept. So you basically had to look from a certain angle through like a doorway. And then you, there were like handprints that made a circle. And then there's like the other circles in the middle. You can, you had to, a line so it basically just was looking and i was like oh i need to do this this and this and it was like one big blood splatter that was a circle and then it was two that were like were like stretched out when you looked straight at them but at, at a different angle it was like a proper circle so like three uh three dots and then you that's how you, you had to put in thing it was kind of neat i liked it uh you see i didn't even get a hint of of that so i just had to look it up eventually i was like oh fuck yeah. it like, I well, couldn't the, even the, figure out where I, this, where the, where the code was. I got the idea because I was walking around. It's like, where's that code? Because obviously I was looking at one of those pieces of paper again, like every time. Yeah, it's actually, been... every every other code like that is a piece of paper by a corpse yeah. or something. It's like, and then I just I have saw a paper. This, Here's my code. And then I just saw this weird, long, elongated circle on the wall. It's like that looks like it's in a weird perspective. Let me let me go over here, and then it's like, oh, oh that's kind of neat. Yeah, yeah. The puzzles enjoy... range from. I enjoy oh, these kinds of things as a puzzle. It does just yeah, the puzzles nice and range from pretty repetitive to like actually really kind of interesting and innovative. Like some of these optional uh, testing grounds had some pretty mind-bending puzzles where you're rotating different rooms. The rooms, like yeah, I rooms thought they were fun. 
Mm -hmm. I hated any yeah. of the platforming the stuff. In yeah, these yeah um, platforming is mm -hmm. gay. I, Good God. I think the issue. I think the issue with the puzzles. Um, there's a consistent issue, and it was just that I, I had figured out what to do, but there was just some like small thing that it was. You know, you, you like I thought you couldn't platform to a place. It was glitchy, but you actually could. Or like something was hidden and it was just stupid. Like there, there was a lot of I felt cheated by a lot of the puzzles. I'd figured them out, but I couldn't get the game to do what I wanted it to do. Uh, yeah. Probably the 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 best example of this is the room where you have to move the uh, the train cars. You have to like turn them and then move them along yeah. a trail and then like mm -hmm. turn them again. And you have to go over to another, yeah. another button and then push them through. Like that that's an interesting idea for a puzzle because you're platforming around to get to like different places. You can you can turn the different the, the different pieces of rail. But some things just didn't fucking work. I was like, yeah. well, I know and I'm doing it right, but it's not happening. Yeah, I realized my problem. I had to, I had to, I was completely stuck on that train rail puzzle until I realized that you had to have both endpoints aligned properly for the mm. train to move. And they didn't tell you that. So I wasn't thinking that, oh, this train won't move forward and if the end of the rail isn't aligned properly. So that, that was a, a weird little issue there that I didn't quite yeah. get. They also put so you on a fake timer there. Yeah, yeah, I I figured out because you know we played all played video games. I figured out after like the first time, I'm like, oh, it went down a percentage. That seems like pretty coincident with the my progress. So it's probably yeah, not exactly. actually time. So I don't have to worry about it. I'm gonna look yeah. for secrets and stuff. <laughs> yeah, uh, I did appreciate like sometimes the creativity of this game and its themes and its its imagery kind of aligned mm -hmm. haphazardly, and I'm like, oh, that's interesting. Like. One highlight I thought was the uh, the ballerina posing puzzle. I don't know if I understood what I did, but oh, the idea yeah. of align aligning the ballerinas to make a, a, a pose with the shadow lining up with the, the floating <laughs> the floating corpse that's been hanging from the ceiling. Yeah, that was actually that's a an, neat puzzle. Yeah, that was <laughs> cool. Like if they had more moments like that, I think I'd have a lot more praise for the game. But yeah. overall, I mean, I'd say the testing grounds were pretty good. It was I kind of felt that they had some inspiration there, but. I was getting pretty yeah, the tired puzzles. of them after a while. Uh, yeah, they're very long. That's what I kind of felt. They're very long. It depends <laughs> on the testing side. Some of them go by pretty quickly. I felt yeah. like at least. Uh... But they, they really should have kind of figured out a way that it just seems like most of probably about half the game is optional. That's the kind of weird kind of issue with the game is that there's so much of the uh, basically almost all the mods modules and upgrades are are in the testing grounds which you have to go well out of your way to find mm -hmm. and the way you unlock those vary and they're not very clear on how to how to get them like you have to you have to bring down the hawk and then uh you climb up into the hawk and then and then use one of the the, te the zip lines down to yeah an area you know what's stupid and you know what's stupid yeah. about that it 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 it, it... It doesn't have that hook on the thing uh, where you need to go initially, no. even though they tell you it's to be hooked up in case there's bad weather so they don't just fly away. So there's no reason for it not to be hooked up. So it should be hooked up so you can see, oh, this goes in there. I need to go in there and slide down, but there's no hook there. So it just kind of like, I guess I, I remember having to do that this one time. So maybe this is going to happen when I get it down. And then it does. And then immediately your brain goes, like why, why why wasn't the hook there like you weren't secured like you told me this is the point of the hook but yeah and, and there's a couple areas uh that were different too like one area i don't know if everyone did that area but there was a one one town where all the security cameras were down like there's no power to the whole grid and you yeah, it was turn infected the power with first. the plantman yeah and i i was kind of stuck in that area i'm like am i done with this area because there wasn't a clear sort of uh tell that okay you're done the cameras are good like a like a five second uh cutscene saying oh camera's online now you're good that would have kind of told me that I, I can leave now but i just kind of gave yeah. up on that area and then left i'm like oh wait i did turn on the cameras that's cool <laughs> so, yeah you, you had to it wasn't that the one we had to go underground and then yeah. activate the whole thing yeah, yeah yeah and there's basically an easter egg at that point because that was pretty hard to find it was yeah like you basically have to use yeah. your your scanner and it's like there's shit underground there's some infestation down there i guess i have to find a way down there and only then you can open the, the testing side, yeah. It's... Yeah, so there's some things that are just really, really hammered in and with random tutorials and cues and and your glove talking to you. And there's other things that are very, very unclear that I've had to look up a couple times just to like, what is this? What is going on here? And I would, I really, um, yeah. 
Watching this uh, boss fight, uh, I, I would show off the Belly Ash fight before you get into the um, theater, the one that you fight out on the lawn. Oh, oh yeah. right, yeah. It was uh, uh, hmm. crazy. Yeah. The, 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 the boss three. fights. Oh, these puzzles really we didn't neat. talk about. Oh yeah, lots go for of it. spectacle in the boss fights. Go I, from I here, and then we'll find the, the boss. But I actually kind of like mm -hmm. these puzzles too. Yeah, those are pretty fun. I got a little bit confused at some points because I thought it's sometimes it didn't actually go all the way through. Like it only travels yeah. like two slots. And yeah, someone in my chat said that once they go through two, it like counters or whatever. And I was like, I don't, I don't know if it was a bug or if that's actually how it works. Yeah, yeah, that yeah, confused right me a little bit. It's like, oh, I think I should have gotten that. It's like, oh no, this went red now, and I don't really yeah, know like, why. Why is that one red? Shouldn't mm -hmm. that be blue? Yeah, yeah, it's almost like reflectors. Because like it's a, not... if they go bounce back, they they reflect or something. It's very weird. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure. Maybe if I looked at it longer, I'd. Well, in any case, I yeah. enjoyed these puzzles for the most part. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, apart from that, yeah, you can see the little, yeah, the mm -hmm. rotating I, things. I do appreciate that a variety of kind of hacking-ish puzzle things. Like they had the laser thing, they had the very, very seldom, but they had like the lockpick ones, which are probably my least favorite because they're very difficult to read. weren't They uh, weren't yeah. hard, but they were just like the kind of two. It's kind of like half yeah. of Skyrim's lockpicking system. It's kind of weird, but. uh yeah. Overall, Luckily for all the puzzles, Charles wasn't telling you before you even have a chance to uh, interact <laughs> with the puzzle yeah. what the solution to the puzzle yes. is. Yes. <laughs> oh, did you guys have a? I didn't. I didn't watch all of your uh, stream about um, God of War Ragnarok. Was that a pretty big annoyance with that game? Yes. Oh yeah. 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 Very much. Very well, much frustratingly, fun. some of they it's like they haven't <laughs> fucking had that in the game. People wouldn't have so like everyone like sticks on that, you know. It's mm -hmm. a it's a nice little thing that people latch onto to shit on the game when mm -hmm. in the and scope it, of problems it's not that yeah, big of a deal. Minor, yeah. Yeah. For, and the additional and problem is they have like millions of accessibility options, but there's none to but tell have the character tutorial. to shut the fuck up. Yes. <laughs> With the puzzle. So usually what would happen is the moment that you're like, ah, it's like someone will just say it. Or yeah. they might beat you to it and like before you've even had the chance to get started. Well, yeah. There's yeah, a couple a very... of instances before you get to the area, like you're still watching the other thing after you finish the one puzzle, and then you hear from somewhere a trail saying like, Hey, if you go there, maybe you can shoot this. <laughs> it's like, w I don't even know where you are right now. What are you talking about? <laughs> so so in terms of like hand-holdy sidekicks, is, is that the worst you guys have come across? In this game or uh... that game? Any game. Oh, uh, I'd, I'd, I'd have to think about it. Nick. Yeah, I mean, I, I think for, for me, it was probably Fee from Skyward Sword, Zelda Skyward Sword, because she just told you fucking everything constantly. Yeah, I guess that's And fair. interrupted every five, every five minutes to say, oh, just go do this. It's like, oh, I haven't thanks. finished Skyward Sword, but I, I'd been playing the Switch version recently. And, and the Switch yeah, version I think actually. Fee, Fee does talk quite a bit. You're oh, right. Well, they, they actually took out about about 75% of her dialogue in the Switch oh, version. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, then if you go I back to the, to, to the see that version, being annoying. She's, she's like, okay, you have to go down this hallway. Okay, you have to take it right here. Okay, you have to go. And like, she just tells you the whole game. Hmm. Here's how you solve the puzzle. It's like, fuck, dude. Like, you can't turn that. It was, it was during the week. Give me a chance like, to show you how stupid I well, am so, before you yeah. just assume it. it you yeah. said hand holding, so I'm just clarifying. It's not about how annoying they are. It's about specifically the element of them, like, spoiling how to solve things. Um, either or, I guess, but yeah, it's like, well, because, um, spoiling, those this, are kind this of game is more, this game definitely has an accolade of some sort. I, I'd show you, but it's, there's no real, I just describe it. There was like a portion where for, I want to say about eight or 10 minutes, uh, the main character in the glove were just talking back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and back. I was like walking through searching for stuff. the like, magnet puzzle, right? Or the, was that? I don't remember exactly where it was in the game, but eventually I had to like, I was dying. I was like, I couldn't handle it. They'd talked yeah, for so fucking of... long. Yeah, because the yeah. it's super condensed. Their conversations they they seem neither they they miss the best of both worlds. They are both po extremely poorly paced and they don't seem organic. When yeah. these conversations begin, they just sort of begin for no reason. It's not like I see a thing that leads to this, that leads to that. A conversation yeah, progresses. Yeah, they just suddenly start talking for like five minutes. They'll just sort of be walking through an era. It's like well, let's that's... talk about this thing for the next five minutes. If um, yeah, if we compare over quickly to Ragnarok, right? I think uh, Theo, you'd brought up uh, while I was streaming. I can't remember if we, we were talking about this when we were talking about the game, but the way they've done the dialogue in that is specifically to counter problems experienced like this, but it can bring you yes. to a different problem where they'll have like a full conversation that's 
very well written as far as I'm concerned. They'll be like, how do we deliver this? Like, let's split it up into four, and we'll have it triggered by portions of the campaign that you're, they're reaching. And so, sometimes, if a player is rushing through, the conversation will all run pretty well and pretty naturally. But if a person's taking a long time, it might be like, you know, uh, Kratos, I, I had my, don't talk to me about a dead child. And he'll be like, you know, like quiet or whatever. And then she'll be like, you couldn't possibly know. And he's like, I do know. And then you're like, holy fuck, are they going to talk about this? And then, and then you're like, oh, wait, I got to open this chest. I got to solve this puzzle. Yep. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and then like, you know, maybe 20 <laughs> minutes later, you cross over the threshold. And he's like, my son and daughter. Were blah, blah. And you're like, oh, yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> Which I will say, like, as much as that is a drawback, I fucking hyper prefer it to just, well, yes. it's time oh, for yeah. an essay, everybody. And it's like, no. Having it be yeah. spread out a little thin. Uh, or spread out with some thin segments is way better than what this game does, which oh. is massive, long, essentially exposition slash story dumps and these long conversations that are back and forth that are ultimately yeah. not well written. hundred percent. If and that's the compromise, like it wouldn't, of course, be quite yeah. that binary. But if that's the compromise, a hundred percent. Ragnarok every day. Way. Yeah. Yep. And, Th this and is not quite the same thing, but it is kind of related. So. If you uh, if you ever decided to play that god awful Secret of Mana remake, one thing they added in that game is that every time you stay at an inn in a town, uh, hey. the hey. for, for the for the first time at a at a story point, the characters will talk about what just happened. So, you well, know, you, that you just thrown... happened. Yeah, yeah. So 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 you're thrown out of your village. You stay at an inn. The guy talks about being thrown out of the village. You get to Pandora. You stay at the Pandora inn, and then the guy's like, "Well, we're in Pandora, and everyone looks like zombies. What's going on in the town?" So. The, however, if you stay if you stay again, they won't say anything until the next story beat happens. But the issue is, is that they didn't quite know how to pace the game, so they have all of these cutscenes, and you you go through the game faster than the cutscenes play because you don't need to stay in an inn that much. So you're at the end of the game, and characters are still talking about stuff that happened 20 hours ago, Ooh. like it just happened, mm. because you have to iterate through every single in cutscene. Oh, and it makes the game just like progression, like one, two, three, four, five, rather than contextual in the chapter. Yeah. Wow. That's so. <laughs> that takes me off. I, I I love Secret of Mana. It's one of my favorite games. I never played the remake, but uh, that sounds like a really badly executed idea. My well, son Jojo oh, when, was made very just, upset by it. When when have you last played Secret of Mana? Because I recently went back to it, and it has not aged very well. <laughs> oh, I I, saw, I played it like a like a year ago, maybe. Which version? Oh, really? How the hell well, do you I, do you do you deal with the 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 slash weight slash? Um, I mean, it's a it, it's honestly like the charge up is a little is a little slow, but I, I I like the variety of combat. I like the the menu system, the ring menu system. I still think holds up really well. I wish more games would do that personally, but um, bring back yeah. Xbox blades. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was shocked to do a ring menu actually. Uh, possibly. <laughs> I did. You know what it, did? Tomb Raider Gold and Tomb Raider Two. Oh my God! <laughs> but they, I think I think the charge up attacks are saved by the fact that every every new not to get on a whole tangent about Secret of Mana, but with every new <laughs> weapon upgrade, the charging goes faster. So that's true. It's not yes. like it's not like it takes like a full two seconds for every single charge up level. The first the first charge up level is very fast by the time you have it up to like seven or eight or. Whatever. So. Okay, so I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna depart upon not, not depart I'm gonna impart upon you the the Super Nintendo deep lore the secrets. Oh okay? boy, here we go. If you want right. if you want to go back All and right. play a game like Secret of Mana, you should you should mod it first because there's an incredible modding community mm -hmm. out there for that game. They they basically they took away the the uh, the charge stuff so you can just attack constantly. They upped all the enemies' health so it feels more like a hack and slash. Um, they added there, there's a mod that will add. Uh, um, uh, hotkeys for spells, so you can use L and R, which, which go completely unused in the game, to cast spells on the fly. Basically, the game becomes playable, and it's quite nice to play it that way. Yeah. So next time you play it, you should you should mod the fuck out of it. Modding the Super Nintendo version? Yes. Or oh, yeah, okay, probably cool. it's probably there's like a modded uh, ROM for ROM, it. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've seen that. I've oh, seen yeah, that yeah. for like Terra Nigma and stuff like that, because like Terra Nigma had a, had some similar problems where the map the magic system was a bit jank. So mm -hmm. Man, embrace um, the jank. Yeah. I, I recently <laughs> played through a mod of, of Legend of Zelda Link to the Past, and they added orchestral music and an anime cutscene oh, nice. intro. And it's on the Super Nintendo. Music. It actually oh. works. Oh, you, just really? need, like, uh, you just need like like uh, a flash card to do it because the, the game file is really big after adding all that shit. But the SNES can do it. Like a 40, me 40 megabit 
cartridge though. That's that's not gonna fit on that. <laughs> well, that's what he was no, saying not, though. No. You got to get a custom cartridge that you yeah, can you get a flash put a, yeah, yeah, a, like a micro SD oh, okay. or something yeah, into. I, I guess that. Mm -hmm. yeah, or you can just yeah. play it on your emulator, right? Like that'll that'll do too. Yeah, and, okay. you know, I was gonna mention the this secret. Earlier. The I was gonna step. mention this earlier. Uh, sorry, that's the secret of mana. Is the emulator? Yeah. <laughs> the secret of mana is retro arc. <laughs> <laughs> I have it on uh, my Super Nintendo. Like a good citizen should. I, oh, I the original like, cartridge. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's I probably like a worth a bunch now, man. Like uh, all these games are going up, going up crazy in price. Yeah, because man. the retro market is fucking retarded. I hate it so it's much. It's insane, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Stupid. So, I'm. I, there are some of my viewers in the chat. I'm not going to go into the full story because it's a 15 minute story. I know that you've heard it before. <gasps> Just very quickly. Not I us. Not us. I had a copy of Chrono Trigger. Ooh. And man, I, w I went off to university and my, my sister's oh, friends yes. came over like, hey, can I borrow some of your brother's SNES games? And she's <laughs> uh -oh. like, I don't care. Sure. I, I never going. saw any of my shit. I never saw Chrono Trigger again. I never <laughs> oh, saw no. fucking D Diddy Kong Racing was gone. All right. My major my gold Majora's mask was gone. Oh. My my Earthbound was gone. I'm so oh, pissed. I lost so many good games that don't work. I lost. These days. <laughs> It, it's probably like at least five figures worth of collectible games yeah. by today's standard. Holy fuck! I was. I, so have, I, have, I have one game. Uh, like I, I had one. I had, I had a, a copy of Soikoden. Soikoden. Soy? Oh, nice. How you say it? Soikoden. Uh, Soikoden. The first one. I had a copy of that, but I just lost it. I don't know where it went. It's just gone. <laughs> I, I've got an interesting story like that. I got I, I lost my copy of A Link to the Past a long time ago. Never knew where it went. And about three months ago, this girl messaged me on Twitter. It was a girl that I used to work with at EB Games in, in Toronto. And she works for Ubisoft Montreal or Ubisoft Toronto now and was like, Hey, I found your copy of Legend of Zelda. Do you do you want it? No way. <laughs> she, like, she dropped it off <laughs> at my parents' later. house and I just yeah, wow. just won. It was like thirty That's years cool. later. We we worked her during PS2 launch. Like it, it was a That's while funny. ago. That's I was funny. like Wait, fourteen. How did you <laughs> lose your, your game? Like did you I think I must have lent No, I, I lent it to her and I just forgot about it. Uh oh. oh. Women. Yeah. Man, so my uh, my editor, he had a copy of the GameCube game 13. He borrowed from somebody, and uh, then the guy got like called back to Australia and couldn't come back to Canada. And it's like, well, I guess oh. we just have the game now. <laughs> I mean, I don't um, know how to fucking contact you anymore. <laughs> you mentioned Chrono that. Trigger. Uh, believe yeah. it or not, that's literally in my notes for Atomic Heart. Oh, really? Because really? there was a there was a mission in this game called Chrono's Trigger. Mm. Oh, ah. weird. I don't wow, know if really anybody is. noticed that. If anyone looked at a the reference, or they just they just didn't know. Yeah. Or... They knew. Sure they knew. Reference. Chronos yeah. Trigger. They 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 knew. Well, speaking of they no knew, federation it. for all the games. Speaking of they knew, should we go to that part of the game? They um, knew. Yes. Uh, yeah, yes. sure. We're skipping around. Uh, uh, Let's, uh, really quickly, there. I wanted to get. I wanted to share a funny story about we were you were talking about Ragnarok. Um, I'm yeah. pretty sure. sure. I'm pretty sure the reasoning why behind the really, really, really in your face, oh my God, push the button, Kratos, you moron, tutorials. <laughs> I don't know if anybody else in this call knows the story. There's okay. a GDC talk. Yeah, we uh, know. Uh, a couple. Oh, you do. Okay. Dark side. Film. Well, yeah. someone else right. might not. So tell it for them. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what's so, going on there. We yeah, still so, yeah. yeah. so, you fool. So no, I'll share I know. It in the chat. There's a condensed version I'll share in the chat for your own research, but uh, a few years ago, they did like almost like a, uh, what did that be, a post-mortem or whatever, a GDC talking about the original God of War 2018. Um, not the original original, but the original remake. Can I just pause you for um, five seconds? I just want to point out when you get, you buy the canisters in this, they fucking screw up the PNG or whatever. Uh, oh, let me, let me show oh, you again. Oh, it got stretched? It yeah, got look stretched. at that. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I, that shit made me laugh every time. I was just like, what is that? <laughs> Menuing in here is <laughs> it's crushed. Oh. That's like for no reason at all. The Menuing in the storage is pretty horrible any as well. It just goes back up every time oh, and this, you put something. This whole menu system broke yeah. on me at once in the game, and it mm. stayed for a little while, too. Like, a, oh, the background wasn't black, it was clear through, and you could see oh. the game. And there was a uh -huh. point where I was accessing the menu from my first-person character's point of view in the world, and this screen was on the fridge in the tiny window. Oh, wow. It was That's really fucking weird. But anyway, carry on. With, um, uh, um, I, oh, my God. Dude, I, okay, someone in the chat someone in the chat said that people are selling Paper Mario the Thousand Year Door on GameCube for, like... 500 plus dollars. It's Man, stupid. 
my 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 Don't ex convinced me to sell that to a pawn shop for ten bucks yeah, back in two thousand five. Now we know why they're I see you already ex. taking care of that. Yes, your ex. Yeah. Fuck. Uh, oh, I, could, I could rant also, about the retro market anyway. It's so annoying. Oh, wait, wait. I just want to play. Yeah. We've gone way too far games. off. Indigo was talking about something. So yeah, I <laughs> we're know. getting back to it. I, 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 didn't, I, I didn't want to rant. It's just like I'm. I'm I, it doesn't matter. I'll try. Right. I'll try not to rant much. But uh, basically, there's a a uh, GDC talk from one of the devs of the God of War 2018 project, and uh, they were talking about how players played the game and they learned a lot from how. They saw players playing the game and they they were using a let's uh, let's play as somebody in the background while they're talking about you know this is the average gamer this they is how played they about the gameplay or whatever yeah, yeah. And, and but by the voice you could tell it's like <laughs> bug gameplay mechanics and stuff like that it's like is that dark side phil they use dark side phil as a representation of the average gamer when he's like, <laughs> like one of the worst God of gamers he's in like, history he, he is literally <laughs> the lowest common denominator <laughs> you can barely get through games um, even when chat is like saying use the blah or do this do that so when he's so bad that whenever <laughs> whenever myself or Az or Mel complain about like anything in a game, people will be like, yeah. You're having a DSP moment. Just like that's, <laughs> yeah, that's how it's DSP known. Moment. Like that is he's, meme. he's been a meme so long that Total Biscuit like has, has mentioned him as like a meme uh, way back in the day. <laughs> oh, so wow. it's like mm -hmm. yeah, it, but uh yeah, so that oh. my my <laughs> estimation is that they used his him and some other people's terrible let's plays as example, like, oh okay, well, the average gamer is a forty-year-old man-child who can't, who has the attention span of a of a cricket, and so we have to. If they don't figure out the puzzle within five seconds, let's have a player in, or a character in the game and tell them exactly what to do, because yeah. otherwise they're gonna quit and rage quit or whatever. So every time no one is talking, that's just the time for me to to beg for super chats, right, and tips. <laughs> Pretty just, much. And, it's just, just sad casually, to know that that's a yeah. good chance of why and. To be honest with you, it's really sad to know there are players out there who will go up to a puzzle and be like, five seconds of, I don't know, ah, I'm out. And they actually, like, quit the game. You'd be, like, you as a dev would be like, what? What? Why, why did you it didn't even look the other it. way. <laughs> <laughs> Man, we uh, made it yellow for you, you fool. It's yellow. <laughs> it's got to be, be it's got to be insanely frustrating because on one hand, you don't want the player to get up, upset and quit your game because that lowers retention, that makes people mm -hmm. rate it lower, and that gets you less sales for the next game, right? But at the same time, if you make everything stupidly easy, you're going to frustrate players you do want to challenge, you yeah. do want to actually think and figure things out, and will uh, blame your game for being uh, casualized and, and stupid yeah. if you don't have a good challenge. So it's, how do you fix that? You have just like, I, I guess some games have like a, a an easy mode or like a story mode for people who don't want to actually be challenged through the combat or vice versa, but... Yeah, it's, there's there's no one solution for everybody because some people just have more of a puzzle puzzle brain. Some people don't. Some people yeah. are adults and some people aren't. <laughs> so and make it a fucking uh, slider, especially I, I, if you have a million accessibility options already. Well, just there make one for the puzzle. I don't understand by the idea that the, the like gamer a is a lot smarter than they're given credit <laughs> for. You have like, to. I agree. We're also really stupid, but we're also <laughs> you know smarter than we give them credit for. You have you to understand menu. there are people out there who will stream an IQ test and score under a hundred. That's the thing that's oh, happening. Yes, there are. <laughs> Hold on, are you talking about who I think you're talking about? Who else has done that, Dev? Who else, who else has done that? <laughs> well, I don't know. I mean, I, I'm sure at least more, I'm, I'm sure more than one person has done that. Yeah, who else has done that that you know of? I only know that Xander Hall did it. <laughs> oh, is that who you're thinking of? <laughs> oh, I, was, I, I, I don't, I don't know. That was you know, funny and I was sad. just, I, mean, I was just that? being hypothetical, yeah. man. Like, I don't, <laughs> oh, know. Okay. Like, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I was so yeah. here. Um, if we're talking about Dark Side Phil for a minute, have you guys seen the Dark Side Phil cooking show? You guys watch <laughs> yeah. that? I think so. Yeah. No. Uh, the uh, Stardust. I, the the time he left the camera on, was it? Uh, oh, no. no, it's not that time. Oh yeah, by the way, do you see this? Uh, people Wait, in my chat were trying to speculate on oh, what happened shit. what happened here, but I was just walking across here and then Oh you dead. just died randomly? Oh wow. <laughs> what? You just it doesn't die. explode. I'm not sure. So some someone theorized like, did you die because you shot at one of those machines earlier and then it decided to kill you? But it happens it's... so quick that it's like well, it's interesting because the apparently that, that death scene at the end doesn't know what happened either. It just says you fell over. <laughs> You fell over. Like the little, little animation. Brain aneurysm. Yeah, the animation realism is yeah. by something. Yeah. Yeah. Like, that oh, was... I guess something zapped you. you zapped? zapped by something. Flatline. It yeah. seems like you must have touched you have like some... 
Yeah, there, there, are, there are like zones of death. Like if you fall into certain pits, which wouldn't be enough for to die to die by uh, fall damage. So maybe there was like a, a a rogue death zone or something that you you touched or something. For That's a my prank, best someone just put a pixel of kill <laughs> box in there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, was was so annoyed. <laughs> anyway, Dev, you were saying something. Oh, just that uh, Stardust introduced me to Dark Side Phil downloading Mass Effect Three DLC back in the day for his his stream. And so he decides to make himself breakfast and re and record it. Dark side Phil cooking, and Does he, it did, he makes fire? three he makes three yeah. uh, bacon and egg sandwiches. And he's like, "This is my breakfast." And it's like, "Wait, okay. three uh, of them?" He's like, "Yeah." Well, and he just wolfs them down. And it's like, "Holy shit, dude!" Oh my god, wow. gamer energy. That's yeah. Whoa, did you <laughs> drink it with <laughs> like, Mountain Dew? Right in the morning, One of them, like, they, they looked they looked like like very unhealthy, but probably like good comfort food. But that's one of them. All right, this guy just pounds three of them. I'm like, damn, dude, holy shit! I like his life hacks where he was like, you know, oh, don't don't pour grease down the down the drain. Go to your toilet and pour your pour your bacon grease down the toilet. <laughs> oh. oh no, oh, Jesus Christ! That's not any what better. Are you, what are you even trying to do in the screen <laughs> right now? I I <laughs> believed I had trapped myself, but I do think I actually escaped. Yeah, I was looking for secrets over here, but yeah, that. Stuff like this, I started getting PTSD. I'm like, oh shit, I'm gonna get so stuck on this, and I haven't seen. Yeah, it I, I assumed like I'm steps yeah. away from getting stuck forever. Which is, I'd like not to. <laughs> but yeah, um, mm. well, we're here. Uh, this is it. Uh, oh, what a rapturous view! Right? No. A no. Uh... <laughs> yes, oh, it's, it's, it's kind of funny because I was walking up to the. Uh, to that lighthouse. I didn't even think about Bioshock at that oh, point. I did. Oh, and, wow. I did. <laughs> Immediately. Uh, the thing that made me cringe the most was, was the music. It was actually that beyond anything else. It was yeah, that's someone that yeah. pointed... The someone crappy... Because that part is... Bioshock is burned into my brain, and so, like, them trying to emulate it but avoid being... actually ripping it off, like... Just, uh, just gross, slimy. Get away! <laughs> You're not Bioshock. <laughs> yeah. You can't be Bioshock. I'm sorry. You tried. I know. It looks amazing. A rapture. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> It's people definitely use that word in day-to-day -day speak. That's the that's what, yeah, that's the thing. It's you. This could have been done, and first off, it would have helped if the game was better. Secondly, <laughs> yeah. um, I there's a way that you could have done this in a more reverent kind of way, Wait. Uh, or like a, a nudge, nudge, wink, wink. But everyone's saying play the audio. Why? Because they want to hear you being disappointed. <laughs> and also there's the orchestral That's strings. Why. Well, yeah, there. I guess we can show people uh, what it sounds like. So, One sec, I'll turn the backing music off. All right. I've been send, send the clip. Oh, okay. So that's Neptune, huh? Looks nice. Actually, it looks... Oh, he <laughs> said a rapture. <laughs> Amazing, a rapture. I wouldn't mind spending some time there myself. I can't even imagine what's going on there right now. Comrade Sechenov asked you to return to Chelame. How will you explain this delay? We can do <coughs> that. Let's talk to the doc first. But if she tries to take off again, she's gonna regret it. I'm sick of playing Kevin with her. Fucking rip off. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking rip off. It's like the <laughs> Asylum's version of Bioshock or something. The asylum of the people who make the really shitty knockoffs, yeah. by the way. But yeah, that's... listen, those are really great movies. I will not have you slander them. Hey, um, they're making Meth Gator. Nice. Yeah, the right. that'll go great in the Cocaine Wait, Bear what? Cinematic Universe. Yeah, yeah. Meth... <laughs> they make a, a film called Meth Gator. Yeah, no, I'm not yeah. kidding. I... Yeah. I'm trying to capitalize. <laughs> I do find it do. funny, but I'm not joking about it existing. Isn't it <laughs> hilarious that Cocaine Bear just like completely absorbed the box office? I, I mean, has Cocaine anyone here seen it? I still haven't seen it. I want to see it. I'm. I'm gonna I want to see it. I haven't seen it yet. I'm not too enticed mean, to see it. You know, it, honestly, or... don't. It's not worth the ticket price. Yeah, I'm, a, say. It, it, I'm it's waiting for the it's, game to, it's yeah, not going to live up to the memes. Day. It obviously won't. Yeah, oh, it's, I'm sure it's a little has... sad that it, it contains Ray Liotta's it... last scene and what that is. Oh, it's just like, oh god, that's honestly. That's why they delayed this movie. It sounds like it's going to be the 2020s version of Snakes in a Plane. Yeah, I, 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 it's the meme I movie that actually that sucks. Speaking, yeah. speaking of meme movies, has anybody here actually seen Morbius? No. 
Morbius. <laughs> Nobody here has seen it, have they? Yeah. No. Nobody's seen Morbius. I've only memed Man. about it because Morbin time is hilarious. I found out Michael yeah. Keaton was in it three days ago, and I'm not kidding. <laughs> <laughs> really? I, yeah, I like I, no one ever internet, told me that. I like how the internet basically gaslit Sony into making it go it's to the yeah. and yeah. it just fucking bombed. Uh, That's the last time they ever listened Morbin to the time. audience Maybe. ever again. Yeah. yeah. I so it has on... said, what is Morbing Time? I've never heard about it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, God. oh my god, where do we even begin? Just what know your meme.com and let it stay there. Just <laughs> What is the I mean... uh, next major topic, by the way? <laughs> Game. Um, up to any uh, of you. To well, uh, honestly, when, I once I started... Through... Go ahead. Once I started ban... I had, I had to ban evade on Twitter again, but... uh. When I came when I came back as, as Morbius Devo, it was basically like I know the meme's already dead, but hopefully the, the fact that it is dead means that my name's going to be obscure enough that I'm not going to be banned again. Hopefully, because I've I've gone through like a dozen Twitter accounts at this point. Fuck. Have you been racist or something? Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, Twitter. I, I, I wasn't saying that was a criticism. I was just you know curious. <laughs> yeah, it's just, just that's how it is. <laughs> Mm. Um, let's see. Oh yeah. So this um, whole, by the way, this whole want... facility we go down to. This is just basically a long cutscene, and then we go. Oh, it's a nightmare of a cutscene. Oh well, actually, yeah. I we uh, uh, I'm not sure we fully touched on it, but like that opening, like as an introduction to spend like f what 30, 40 minutes of thirty barely yeah, interactive. 30. That yeah, was a that bad was idea. That really was not. I think a they were oh, hoping to wow really? you with the world, but like, good I God. I guess how like, intense the exposition dumping was, you're going to test any player's patience. I don't know. I, what, yeah. like they and why didn't they learn from the Bioshock games? There's a limit. Bioshock gets you into yeah. the gameplay eventually. Well, it, it's almost like, um, because yeah, start Bioshock off swimming. has Minecraft, yeah. then you swim through, and then you go down through the bathosphere, and then the game, like, starts. Yeah, you yeah, see the lighthouse, the minutes. doors open, it's dark, your and the lights turn minutes. on, you go down you, the stairs, yeah. there's, there's the um, bathosphere, you're doing all that. And it was cool, because Atlas said, yeah, They're right, crowbar right. or something, and it's like, <laughs> like Half Life. <laughs> only this isn't that. It's it's um it's it's really exactly how to like start your game is kind of a it's a it's a complicated thing. Like I don't know that yeah. there's a clear way to do it, but it's hard to deny that you know Dead Space Bioshock of like you know five minutes of really concentrated like delivery of story and establishing of setting, and then it just opens up into the game proper. Mm -hmm. Like that's. That's just a good, it's almost what separates good... these games from arcade games. Like, we get our uh, couching of all of the reason why we're having this gameplay. Yeah, context. Um, do it a little faster, please. <laughs> well, I think, part, um, yeah. Well, there's what actually. Saying, right? uh, I was oh, saying God, that, God, God. Um, like, like I kind of had mentioned earlier, this. If you're going to present this incredible, amazing world, I feel like this is, like, neat for the spectacle for a little bit. But there's something to be said about easing people into it and treating all of this world as if it's very matter of fact. Uh, yeah, we, there, there's robots and some of them fly and some of them are butlers. And you see like it's a semi-futuristic kind of, um, you know, city of the future. And if your character's treating it like normal and everyone's going about their day as if it's normal, mm -hmm. that kind of helps to acclimate uh, think, you to this world subconsciously. I think it might just be uh, what I would add on to that is I think the problem for me is like the spectacle is cool for a bit, but like eventually, yeah. like it, 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 it just again, like in Bioshock, I, I guess there's also like that juxtaposition, right? Because in Bioshock, it's like, wow, look. In that cool, like this underwater city rapture, and then a grisly murder like happens right in front of you. It's like a really sharp shift in terms of awe is to it like someone terror. Well, yeah, because it from the outside uh, it looks incredible, and then you get in and everything's yeah, fucked. Yeah, exactly. And of course, t you know, thematically that's hyper relevant throughout. Yeah. The, you know, there's a lot to be inferred from that. Whereas here, it's like we ride on the boat and look at all of this crazy cool stuff. And then we go walk through and, and have some really long conversations that give you information that's hard to contextualize at the time. And then you go walking again, you have another conversation. And then they have, which was kind of neat to me, was like when the car lifts off and then you realize you're in the sky and then it like gives you the pan over. It's like, okay, we're three minutes, four minutes, maybe like five minutes. It's like, oh my God, like what mm -hmm. are we doing? 
we are just spending a lot of time looking at things and not playing the game. Yeah, yeah. I was it, really also ready to probably... it all in, and I was getting like, okay, this conversation's going on a bit long. Why is like, okay, you could have Even been like showing me some of this interesting... of, you know, but. Well, that, there is that, but I mean, the reality is, even if it's the most interesting stuff ever, it's like, I do want to get to the gameplay at some yeah, point, yeah, you know? I do want to play I wanna... Also, you don't even, you don't even stay here. You just get your orders and then you leave this place and go somewhere else. Yeah. You arrive, go all the way up to the top Which of the tower to get a key yeah, and they, then come all the way back down. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that, that confused me with the like... story, um, because the stuff that's going on, like, this place here, in what way is it connected to the ground in terms of like do the people so you, you go here just and you get the car case like look at how well crazy you're floating the technology is. you float to the car right you're doing this you get this very long sequence where you look at this and then you go down to the to the ground essentially to the where the, the game facility. takes place yeah then the robots attack and then later on granny says that the robots have been harassing her for days and I'm like, but yeah, that no, was very confusing to me. Because we like, were just oh. up there and everything was fine and everything's normal. It just happened now, so I, I get the sense of what's going on, like timeline wise, to the cities up here. Mm -hmm. Know what's going on down there? Um, it's when, it, when did it this happen? A lot of questions and not the good kind of questions. It's kind of like questions of logistics more so than like you know intrigue. I was out for days. It's like, oh, what has been going on then? Um, what's it's been kind of nuts to me because anybody know? There's so many different ways me. to contextualize some basic. You could even uh, this is how you do tutorials, right? Like someone's like you, you, you as an officer or whatever role you play. They're like, oh, we got this uh, new sights on these guns. Maybe test them out in this little little gun range, and then you can have medal rewards. Like fucking card games knew how to do this. Yeah. In between all of this crazy shit, can actually make a player be like, "Yay, gunplay! Ooh, a leaderboard! Oh, your friends did this! What? Yeah. Just anything to keep you like everything Someone of like in... you know, a shooting range, and then you run through the range. It's like, yeah, that was pretty cool. You want to try again? It's so basic. But like, yeah, I am not beginning this game Especially... until it recommends veteran difficulty. <laughs> no, why not? Why not have a segment in the opening yes, where you simply instead of instead of being on rails on the boat, it's like a little demonstration day of look at all the cool stuff. Like you, you look, you're, maybe they recognize a patch you have or something or, or a hat you're wearing. You're a soldier, you'll take, you know, you'll like this. And they show all the weapons of the future and they have a little, yeah, yeah like a little yeah. shooting range that shows them off. So like right then, the abilities and well. those are the guns that you eventually unlock, but yeah. they have all of their upgrades and everything here. You know, it's like shoot these practice robots for target. That's that the, this one does this, you know, just a little, you know, thing to shoot. The training um, room in Titanfall 2 has the most difficult achievement in the game. It's uh, yeah, get through it's the training the training course in under thirty seconds or something oh, like that. I've okay. never I've never oh, been yeah. able to do it. It's it's well, really hard. I, I mean, I'm Mark, you're kind of saying it almost as a joke, but for real, like all of my friends, it was like a point of pride that you get through the COD four training bit with a veteran recommendation. You don't you you keep yeah. going until you get it. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And it's like uh, fun. I love and, a lot of this architecture. I like the statues. Like oh, this is this is a really yeah. cool place. Uh, this is really neat. Yeah. It Most just takes places a long you can go to. Uh, yep. Yeah, because this is—I don't know—they—they they say it's like open world, but I don't know. It feels <laughs> so like is a it very really big... open world. It doesn't feel like it's it. Some, it. It's more like a very big hub world. <laughs> it's it's hiring like the it automated is. robot to well, tell there's... you even more exposition about the world. Yes, the this is. All of this should be like stuff I know. Like I, he I, says I'm he here. Knows it. I know. That. Well, I yeah, like come on. He says he knows it. It's like, oh, great. I think the problem is it's like it's just been said a few times. This is a lot of information to present the player with that they don't really know what to do with it. And if you don't know what to do with it, I think you're gonna forget it, or it's not gonna like stick. And so, like yeah. in terms of it feeding into the story later on, I don't know if the player's gonna go. Oh yeah, it was like in that forty-minute intro cutscene where the blood <laughs> said that. Like, yeah. Nobody's gonna do that. It's um, it's just not a very elegant way of delivering this information. And in... maybe it's tricky because of like the nature of how high concept this world is. But I don't know. I feel like Bioshock does a really good job. Well, yeah. So as Rapture this is, is super yeah. segmented. You are in this. You're in the medical pavilion. Yeah, now exactly. you're going to yeah. this yes. place. Now you're and going to with, this uh, place. With Dead Space, right? Like you are specifically in this crew quarters. You're on the bridge. You're in the engine mm -hmm. room. You're in. So it feels yeah. like you don't see it all at once. If you're you know? playing with one of the devs, you're playing Bioshock, and then you do that whole intro, and they sit next to you and they go, "Wouldn't it have been cool to have looked around all of Rapture?" And then you could be like, "Well, no, no." Like, so. The reason they've done it that long is because you want to get a sweet spot of us being 
or in, in awe of it, but then also you know move on because you don't want to be afraid. Yeah, and then tantalized yeah. by and getting to go. Have yet to go because it's a city. Exactly. And then they're like, yeah, well, yeah, exactly. but I think it would be better if there was just more. And you're like, okay. Yeah, in a <laughs> sense, right, it's... it's almost like you're kind of showing. I don't want to, I don't mean to say show because it's like you've done some really good work here with like the architecture and the overall aesthetic. Like it's a really interesting look. Yeah. Um, and I get wanting to show it off, but it's almost like in showing it off, you're kind of like you're almost don't playing blow your load too in a quick. Way that's, yeah, yeah. Like yeah, a little this... bit of restraint would have been would have gone a long way, I think. Because yeah, it's cool the... to go from place to place and have them be different. You start out in the underground little mm -hmm. complex, then you get up into the world, then you go to the you know the Pavlov Center in this place and that place, and then and they're all different, right? They're all different kinds mm -hmm. of like experiment laboratory places, and they look a bit different, and and they're like the, the you know the theater and everything. People will want to check out different places. You don't have to have this long ass sequence. That if you're gonna have a long ass sequence. I feel like we could have used it a whole lot better. Um, it's a very interesting thing because this is like all the all the components are there, but the way it's done, the way it's stitched together and edited together is all wrong. Like, a, yeah. a, again, Bioshock, but Bioshock has a very, very deliberate uh, kind of uh, pace and way of presenting its world to you. At first, you're in a, an airplane. There's airplanes in the 60s, sure. Uh, you crash land. Oh man, that's kind of a sort of an inciting incident, but you're still just kind of like you're in the real world. You swim uh, to a lighthouse. And you're like, okay, lighthouse, that's fine. Interesting kind of Art Deco design, kind of different. Sure, why not? And then you you go into this elevator. You're not sure where you're going, but you need to get somewhere. You're going down. Oh, huh, that's odd. And then you get uh, Andrew's I am whole Andrew introduction. Ryan. Yeah. And then, and then that that cutscene is is should be shown in schools because that cutscene is such a, a good job of being to the point. But basically, the uh, Atomic Heart couldn't keep it in its pants. They wanted to show you everything right at the beginning, whereas Bioshock is like, okay, you're in the real world, something bad happened, but you know you're fine, whatever. And then as soon as Andrew Ryan kind of describes his whole, you know, mo, his whole in, uh, because motivation it's behind it, he's as like, you're joining the and then, if you're going to join the city, you take the bathosphere, and so it's yeah. like you're a tourist. Like that, that's how in universe a tourist yeah. or someone coming to the city would be introduced to the city, yeah. and that's how you right get there. And, you and know, then there's that there's amazing. that stinger, that stinger reveal where it's like, I give you rapture. You know, screen goes up, and the music. oh my god, this is something I've never seen before. And that and the whale been, in they, the cities, and the music, the strings, the just the reveal, he's still talking over it. It just gets all, oh, here, Atomic, yeah. yeah, pause it right here. This is supposed to- This is like Bioshock. Immense, this is like Bioshock. This is where you see the Bioshock logo and then you hear the waves mm -hmm. and then it gets rusty and old. Like you could see yeah. the, you know, the decadence mm -hmm. and well, how you, it's nice. Did you hear screams as well? Um, I don't think so. I think it's just the, it, I think it's just the sound of water rushing as the logo fades from being new and pristine to old and rusted. I kind of want to. Let's. you 30 minutes in maybe, the game, right? Maybe. I, I don't remember a scream, uh, but I, I just remember the. Bioshock's water introduction is just. It's one of the best of all time. Yeah, <laughs> right? it is one of the best of all time. Yeah, and, and here's a great comparison point. You're 30 minutes into this this playthrough. I don't know how much of, of that was you kind of talking to chat or whatever. Was there much of talking with chat at the beginning? Not much. Uh, I remember, well, as the reason, the whole reason we're talking about this is it was exceedingly long, and I remember being like, this is fucking this is kind of crazy. Now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, for a comparison point, I just have the Bioshock opening right now. From the point where the game starts to the Bathosphere opening, after you see uh, the crazy guy outside and everything like that. Let me guess, let me guess, let me guess. Um, let's see. So we're talking from the moment the game starts to when yeah. you, from when... Uh, the the but you leave the bathosphere yeah i'm going to guess that that is seven minutes seven minutes long yeah I'm like, Yo! oh wow Yo! Oh. <laughs> i mean i'd already posted in chat weird. so i don't know well i, don't I, well, I can't see a timestamp on discord so There's okay no time discord, but, but uh I, yeah yeah seven minutes cool. long compared to about 30 that that is a tight yes. intro that well is and, really and tight intro. how dense that shit rings. is yeah the Lord of the Rings this, this, yeah, this intro is what sequence about, right, is right. like, uh, yes. Yeah, the screams. I remember the screams. It reminds me of the screams oh, in the okay. beginning of the okay, uh, Black Widow movie. Yeah. Remember the remember the screams of the 
Yeah. Look and at it. Oh, it's so fucking good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and look, now it's all, yeah. Oh. So let's, good. Let's all go play Bioshock. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, kind of what I, I was just... thinking. I was like, man, I'm installing Bioshock. Bioshock is the is sure. the remaster version any good? Yeah. Yeah, it's it's, hey, yeah, just, it's, it's, just, it's more compatible. It's playable. Yeah, it's I think some of the AI was messed up, but it's it's definitely playable. Oh, oh really? Yeah, I keep uh, hurting that they were that they had changed a bunch of stuff in the Dead Space remaster. So, well, they, it's a remake for Dead Space. Yeah. Uh, oh, so the Bioshock remaster is just it's the same. It's the game. same game. The, the, the 4K oh, okay. textures and mm -hmm. yeah, uh, who knows what else? Uh, maybe nothing. <laughs> what Windows? Uh, Windows? Uh, uh, what if we want to? Besides, I'm eleven, ten. I'm Windows curiosity, 10 compatibility. Uh, for everyone here who's completed thoroughly the remake for Dead Space, does it replace Dead Space One for you? For, for the most part, or not? Uh, I hate to say yes, but uh, yeah. I, I say yes. Yeah, yeah. So if I want to go back and play Dead Space, I'll go with the remake. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna do the remake. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah really? How come? It, it makes me sad to say it's yes, a better but... game. It's a better game. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah they they improved like, on what, what did they change to make it better? Um, Quite a, a lot of the improvements added... Dead Space Two made to Dead Space One yeah. they've implemented into the remake. Dead Space Two oh, Zero G Combat, like, is a big uh, one. Yeah, Zero Gs. Of course, the Better visuals are incredible. More content. The visuals are amazing. Yeah, they, they Story is rebalancing. Interconnected See? Ishimura. Yeah. Yeah. It's, the it's story and to, everything are more interconnected with the rest of the sequels. Like, like oh, yeah. Death, and I think Bioshock, Dead Space 2 and 3. Yeah. And it, is, uh, it is due to what section of the internet that I inhabit, because I was talking with Sargon and V and some of the other guys. Oh, yes. And, uh, Do you want to let me know how many of them have played the game, <laughs> Dev? Is it woke garbage over there, too? <laughs> Not as many. But basically, like, they were pulling out, you know, screenshots of, oh, they made the girl's boobs smaller, and this is kind of ridiculous. And it's like, well, that does kind of suck, but... Still, well, it, 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 is Kendra this, is yes. way more attractive in the remake. If though. ever they remake yeah, Bioshock, really they better not shrink Andrew Ryan's cock. Right? I don't That's like this right. idea. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't well, like this idea that like, making someone's breasts what? smaller is making them less attractive. I don't support well, that idea. There, uh, I play into there, it. There, there's something in there I'll that I, I, I only like half remembered or half paid attention to it. But there's something in there about gender neutral bathrooms or something. Yeah, and I'm just like, well, well, is the game better though? That's kind of the important thing. Yes, it is. The, they've completely yeah, fixed the, really the telekinesis. That has to count for a shit ton. Dead Space One's telekinesis is kind of wank with the use on enemies. Mm. Yeah. And, it, and the gender neutral fashion, it's like a PNG on one wall or like a few walls. It's like a fucking yeah, spaceship. Yeah. Of course there'd be gender neutral bathrooms. Yeah. So, and, and also, if you really cared about, you know, the size of boobs of a character, so you just mod that back in. It's not a big deal. As long as like the core, as long as the core game mechanics are, are better, that's probably what matters, you know? Mm-hmm. Very respectful remake, I would say, too. It, it's yeah, clear yeah, that yeah. people all in the shots on this Oh, remake. the people who made the Dead Space remake loved Dead Space. That's That much is yeah. true. Tons of yeah. reverence. It would have been nice if 343... Yeah. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't start ringing. Don't, don't start. Don't. All right, see, look, there's Fire Shock. Look, look at it. It's so pretty. Okay, yeah, as look long as he doesn't oh, say 343 three, three times, they won't appear. <laughs> you say it in the mirror right now. Guilty Spock shows up. Would you like to like... purchase white? I, I can tell you um, right now that's a tongue twister too. Three four three three. <laughs> Look at that three, fucking four, 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 dialogue. It's yeah, wonderful. The well, so I mean, where the scientist I mean, would not be bound by petty morality, where the great would not be constrained by the small. You have to stop. I want to play the yeah. game now. Stop. And with the sweat <laughs> of your brow, libertarianism. Rapture yeah. can become your city <laughs> as well. It's such a like what the f and you see the big daddy and you're like, what the fuck is that? Yeah. <laughs> well, libertarianism. Yeah. I mean, and, and what, it, what's what interesting is, yeah, it's interesting is he's saying all this stuff and you're like, yeah, but at the same time. He's also the villain, and and it's it's always interesting when the villain makes sense, even though he's got a very twisted worldview and questionable morality. Well, because it's, it's the villain good. presenting his view of the world, so yeah, yeah it'll, he, be in its, it'll be in its yeah. good version, essentially. I think and I think the game's a little bit more complex than calling him the villain. I wouldn't even want to call Fontaine the villain. These are They're right. antagonists. Right, he's the antagonist. Yeah, I mean, antagonist is a better word, but. But it, it's it. I always like it when uh, everyone is written to be the hero of their own story. Like where nobody's just one dimen one dimensionally good or one dimensionally evil in all things. Was, uh, something that the older Assassin's Creed games did a really good job of was actually presenting the screen. argument that the the arguments that the Templars would Templars, put forth, yeah. and like uh, the sort of in the logic behind their framework. 
feels yeah. like uh, two kind of lost that a little bit because it was a lot more focused on the story of Ezio, like building him as a character, but like one and three in particular, like meaningfully present the perspective of the Templars as like, hmm, you know what, that's probably worth thinking about in terms of the dichotomy of like absolute freedom versus absolute control and like what you gain and lose and... And yeah. I mean, yeah, Bioshock is like another one where it's super thematically rich in terms of exploring like all of the competing perspectives and <clears throat> ideologies that are involving it. Like, you know, what does it look like when something is taken to an extreme? Mm -hmm. um, I guess I'm almost saying this because it's like, what am I meant to be pulling from Atomic Heart? Right, about, yeah, let's like, get back uh, to that, I suppose. <laughs> yeah, what is, I mean, it's, yeah, it's what, what's the theme? What is the theme of Atomic Heart? Does anyone, uh, does it even they, have they, one? Neo, go. Go. Really uh let me think because <laughs> i don't know that it has any coherent message about anything other than technology is kind of scary bro oh <laughs> put, quick pause real quick uh since we're showing this uh this is a memorial that goes that, that reads from right to left that's weird um wait yeah huh <laughs> wait sorry this, you, you're saying the, true, the yeah. thing broadly or this the sentences themselves no the no the, the the stations they go from right to left Chronologically, that's true. Or... They do chronologically. Weird. Mm. The mm. end. Of, the ending date is on the left, and the beginning date is on the oh, right. Oh, you know why that is, right? Because the... because you start on the right side. That's so exactly. Weird. Instead of them uh... just, mm. instead of them making, it's one of my first notes. Um, the the <laughs> Brown Plague Memorial on the beginning reads from right to left, which is odd. Um, they should have just made it to where you enter it from the left side and go through it, you know, left <laughs> to right. I, actually, it's not so bad because it uh, right side. Right? Do they drive on the right side of the road in in uh, Russia? I don't. <laughs> that know. Literally doesn't matter. <laughs> no, it, 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 do, it yeah, does. Like it, it, they drive on both sides of the road in Russia. Oh, you do? <laughs> <laughs> they do everywhere, actually. In Soviet Russia car drives you. <laughs> they drive on both sides of the road. <laughs> and, uh, the <laughs> the your so on the, I, on Russia, they they do drive on the right side of the road, but then just have it okay. be straight, like you walk through it. Right. If it's going to be a memorial, instead of it curving I, around I, like that. But, but that, maybe maybe you're supposed to go in that in that you know, around on the right side like you had to entrance on the because right it, side. Well, so. you think if you if you enter it from the wrong side, then you'll be getting the story in reverse. I sorry, I want to mm. I want to do, do Russians drive on the right therefore it reads from right to left. No, no, no. <laughs> he's, he's saying this the sequence. The I sequence didn't realize says, there was a correlation yeah. between those. That's why I was I laughing at all of this. Yeah. Well, Wait, I, hold on. In England? No, okay. Yeah, no, that's definitely well, not correlated. Right. It's, it's what not is exactly. happening we today? We drive on the right. We drive on the, on the right. We reach the right. cap for brains functioning. Most countries, <laughs> like most countries in the planet, they drive on the right. <laughs> yeah. Right. Is it what? It's normal for stuff to be right to left. <laughs> because because right. if you go, if you like the Vietnam Memorial in Washington D.C., you of course enter it on the left side and you exit through uh, on the right. You know, it's. It, it struck me as one of these odd things, and at the time, it was a very tiny thing. And then it, sort of as time went on, this little thing is like, oh, is this indicative of just this lack of little, like, a little bit of forethought and polish, what, you know? I guess what happened is they built it, they built this area, and then they were putting the text in, they were like, uh, hmm. Yeah, hmm. and, like, and Fringy, you have to, to yeah. Oldest, newest or newest to oldest? And you bring so up a really good point that I wanted to make, uh, is that it seems like these environments were built before the scenario was designed. Like a, a, a the way that they're connected, yeah. Like it doesn't yeah. feel like the, the city planning kind of hey, the city planning kind of <laughs> sucks. I think um, um, I get what you mean in <laughs> city planning. Like a sense of coherency to the actual environments in terms of the way that they're constructed beyond simply what they look like. Yeah, um, I, I get wait, the idea that wait. environmental artists kind of got carried away and made this gigantic city that you only spend about a total of like maybe an hour in the entire game, uh, which is crazy to me. That should be an open world segment that you can actually view and interact with when you think about do it. You, but... Do you see the whole layout of the city when you fly away from it? Like, kind can you of. see yeah, all of it? Roughly, roughly. Yeah, yeah, not roughly. all of it's probably... And it's also... No, it's, the reason... It's kind of the puzzle... Hey, I'm going somewhere with the, with the puzzle, yeah, because we have this one ball puzzle going on. Oh, fuck. This, the, yeah, oh. man. He, oh, I keep forgetting about that. And it was just uh, it, did they, like a Zelda they, game. Which, what did they do first? 
that they just make the puzzles like, oh, this could be a nice city as well, actually. We could have built this <laughs> as the beginning th of the I game. I think the vault puzzle came second and they just gamified it. I think the vault puzzle it. came second, yeah. 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 They just gamified <laughs> it to where it's sort of like resembling yeah. the city, but, you know. It it, it felt like if you're if you play uh, Zelda Breath of the Wild, there's there's some puzzles where it's just like rolling a ball through a maze that you tilt, mm -hmm. and I'm like, what the fuck are we playing Zelda now? It was so yeah. out of place. Well, enough uh, people were referencing Resident Evil Village. puzzles to emulate too. Remember yeah. oh, Resident yeah, Evil Village bowl right. puzzles? That's right. So yeah, those were just mm. a thing that exists. They didn't feel yeah. at all like they were just randomly put in from a completely different <laughs> game. Yeah. Like what? <laughs> But like how like how is he being explained what these neuro um like these neuro whatever they are is the the fact that you could just like inject knowledge into your brain and he's just now learning about this and they're telling him about it is like no everyone like uh, everyone knows about it's these. It's part things, of the whole right? world apparently. You know, it's, it's part of the world and also there's no. This might sound weird, but there's not a lot of like skepticism in this game about like robots existing and taking over the world essentially and doing all these things. You don't have a character who's constantly going, yeah, this is what we get for trusting robots. This is what we get for all that. I feel like this game really needed a sort of character to be super skeptical of these technological advancements. And are we going too fast? And Why couldn't you just be a new and, security and, guard who's coming from, yeah. I don't know, somewhere yeah. Why else? couldn't you be a visitor from another country? Well, who's yeah, caught actually, up in all this You could madness. be an American, an American you, ambassador. Exactly, I was... I was thinking, how come you could be an American or a British or you could be from any place like in the West who was specifically brought here to be like, look at how fucking amazing this shit is. Like you're like they talk about selling robots to the Americans uh, throughout the game a decent amount. Yeah, you could literally be a, a, a bodyguard of a buyer who's here. So much to ground you as well, because presumably the rest of the world isn't as advanced and crazy as like as as uh, you know yeah. the Soviet Union is. Yeah, the it? city is. Time yeah. Time. Like it could, it could just be like every time that something is different, you can just draw comparisons to give players more yeah. of a sense of like what the world yeah. looks like. If we're spending they, all of they our say time that actually. to have the perspective of somebody, you know, who's like the world elsewhere doesn't look quite like this. Hmm. Yeah. Why didn't they yeah, do that? If you were you, because as you're approaching the city, it's you. You're the bodyguard that explains why you're combat competent. And next to you is your guy. You're 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 a buyer of a big American company. He's here to look at all the new robots at this big Soviet exposition party that they're throwing, and they're talking back and forth. Like, do we really? And you're the skeptical guy. He's like, I don't know. Do we really need all these robots? It seems kind of soulless. And he's like, No, the robot. These robots are amazing. When we get them, we'll make designs of our own, and then we'll compete. Da 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 da. Well, they have these back and forth. The the only skepticism you get in that regard is actually just the American government in general. Because they say yeah. they put like, uh, um, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Sanctions? Yes, san sanctions uh, on, on the Soviet Union. So they can't give them more and more robots because the workers are getting getting pissed and losing all their jobs. Yeah, they can't. They specifically can't sell the robots. They have to give it, gift it to them in exchange yes. for maintenance. Yeah. And also just this, yeah. apparently mm -hmm. only a certain amount of number at a time. Yeah, yeah, so um, they, they say later on that the Americans, uh, the, the the corporations want all the robots they can get. Yeah. But there's a lot of Americans who don't want to lose jobs. Yep. So the sanctions are that middle ground that's happening right now. Um, Pretty much. I, I think to answer your question, Frags. What was my Wait, question? I, I lost your question too. Fuck. I don't even know what my <laughs> I, question I, was. I just I don't I don't think I asked the question. Tongue. I just made statements. No, no, yeah, no, you, you were saying, uh, well, why, I, didn't they, why didn't they set up the main character in... In this way and i think it's because they really wanted that uh that ending set piece where it turns out it it's just bioshock that he's been controlled by yeah um such enough the, yeah the main i villain. guess yeah. if they wanted to make that ending uh like could have been yeah um could've made a better ending shit, they should have changed it <laughs> yeah yeah um, if they had him if they had him be a foreigner it would be less believable that he's also been mind wiped and controlled you know they could have done the sleeper agent thing, the Manchurian candidate sort of route. Yeah, um, maybe. Yeah, maybe. A lot of, a lot of mm -hmm. things. But, but they also could have worse. had this guy. This guy's a soldier, and he fought in wars and stuff. And he he's seen firsthand the terrible destruction that robots can bring that most people never see, right? Because state-controlled media, things of that nature. But he's been on the ground, and he's seen that in wars, and that right. makes him very skeptical about having all these robots everywhere. Um, which is an idea mm -hmm. that they didn't use. So there you go. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's just sort of a Terminator idea either, so, I mean, it seems like there's a lot of potential here that just was wasted. There's a lot of potential, and yeah. they just don't use it. Our protagonist is just Guy. He's just Action Man, <laughs> but He's shit. Just guy. 
He's just a shit well, action man. Well, and, he, and he's throughout the game. It's quite an off-putting element mm -hmm. that you like. You don't get bound to your character at all throughout. He talks a lot. He, mm -hmm. Yeah, he gets, for like, all the dialogue that he has, he's just so unlikable. And like I said, when he said something approaching like what a human would say, I had to make a note of it, and I remembered <laughs> specifically where it was because I'm like, oh my god, he said something a human would say. Like a lot of people are right. still also, running with the whole amnesia thing. It's like, guys, stop. He clearly remembers <laughs> loads of things. He's not like lost <laughs> his mind. That reminds me of because we, we we learned that some things have like. Put, put away. They're basically plot specific what he doesn't remember. Yeah, yeah. Like the, yeah. the, the wife like took that away. And then he got Spoilers. like aggressive, so they took that away somehow. Some with the brain juices. But then they also put the glove in his brain and now he's it's, it's a fucking, fucking He seems mess. so chill about the idea of collective two point as well. Yeah, well everyone does. Yeah, everyone's well, just and, like, and, yeah, and, collective two point oh. Before great. you carry on, like we finally probably should address like the, the counter argument of Guys, why are you taking it seriously? That building's really <laughs> ugly right there, by the way. Or the glasses, the, the glass parts. Yeah, that's a really ugly part that. of the building. Yes. That's bad. Yeah. That's a really lovely building, except for that bit. So why are you taking it seriously, You can't see Rex? inside of it, though. Hmm? Oh, well, yeah, very true. No, no, I want to go over it. It's a fucking lame argument. It's basically like... Which, which one? Wait, which why one are you taking right? any of this seriously? Why am I taking any of this seriously? Oh, because the game wants me to? I was gonna say, like, what what, are you, what exactly- what does it look like to take this game as a I'm giving, joke? Well, I'm, I'm giving it, like, a chance. I'm taking it seriously. Yeah. <laughs> like, I've, a lot of work has clearly gone into this game from the early stages. They've got this lot- these lofty ideas. They've- they, they've got all this design and they put all this work into it. It's like, I'm gonna take it seriously. There- so much time and effort is spent on trying to make a narrative with all of these characters and with all this back and forth dialogue and talk about the collective and the the, the golden rings and the beta connector things they talk there's so much time that's put into trying to make this story kind of really way more complex than it needs to be so i'm going to take it seriously they want me to they rely on the story being a thing the ending is you deciding between path a or path b they just both suck now, uh, right. don't make, don't make mistake me for saying that Inglorious Bastards is as good as this because it's not, but it, it, it's way better. But if someone said like Inglorious Bastards, uh, you, why are you taking that film seriously? There's several like hilarious things that happen. It's kind of jokey, and you see the way they kill Hitler. It's not supposed to be taken seriously. I'd be like, yeah, it is. The uh, yeah. it has two the of the greatest scene? tense <laughs> scenes in all of yeah. the history of filmmaking. They don't work if you don't take them seriously. Exactly. Well, and I mean, a recent example for me was in Bruges. It's like that's a film that you meant to take seriously, okay. even though it's a comedy. It, but oh, it's got it's got movie. meaningful dramatic. It's got meaningful it, dramatic weight. Because it knows it knows that even though it has comedic moments, it can play, it can play, it, it, you can play the different tones off each other, and it knows when to be quiet and when to be funny. And no, it's the same comedic. with a lot of things. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Well, this is just a mess, um, as far as I'm concerned. It's very comedic. Yeah. The Simpsons is hyper comedic, like it's a hyper funny show, but then it has those moments of seriousness, um, and they're taken seriously because it's like a, yeah, I, th I think in this case it's like, I don't know what I am meant to make of this game tonally, I have no idea what I'm supposed to And then if someone says, yeah, you're not supposed to take it seriously. I'm like, I don't think that helps me like, at all. I feel like they've had to do like, <laughs> you know, different scenes right away and just say, these are so clearly presentationally designed to be taken seriously. Exactly. Yeah, so that's yeah, the sad actually... part. Um, you know, like this the cutscene where he where she says, "This is communism. Let's all jump." Like, yeah. I uh, I'm sitting there what thinking for a while. Like, is that? Are you trying to be? F f are you aware of how stupid this is, or are you not? I don't know. Are you becoming anti-communist here, or but like, are you? Like, what it- because the game isn't really- it doesn't talk about- it's from the perspective of, like, a bunch of, you know, communists in the USSR. So they're gonna speak negatively of capitalism, which is what I'd expect, but it doesn't see- it doesn't really say anything good or bad about, like, communism or anything like mm. that. It's just collective, like, as a program is what gets uh, poo-pooed on by a lot of people. I was sort um, of thinking it was going the Chernobyl route for a while with that. I, like, like, look at that. Would... Yeah. No, I you don't have, have to read the dialogue, but if you look at what's on screen, all these things being said, like, do you really think this is all in favor of jokes? Yeah, it's just not. Yeah, they, they're, it's they're, not. they're trying to do a point here. They're just, yeah, they're, they're trying to tell a story. Important. They're very much serious right now. They're yeah, trying to absolutely. explain a narrative to you. I mean, 
and it's <laughs> like they, she actually seems like she's she's taking the anti-communist stance at the end she's like no communism's bad that, that's the point of her arc is that communism is bad no mm -hmm. i actually don't think that's the case oh really no you don't think so no. that's kind of what i got the the, that's what I got the, too. the thing is the only reason they went uh against all these things is because they figured that session of is doing the whole mind control thing which takes away freedom of mind or something so they just decided that's to... communism <laughs> i a... mean let metal <laughs> finish yeah, they, let yeah, metal they finish would, <laughs> they would still be in favor of them invading the the u.s with the other plan they had because they were both uh they were both working on the projects themselves until they figured out oh wait there's some mind control going on yeah, there's mm -hmm. a there's a, sec a sequence which taps upon the thing that really should have been the entire moral moral argument of the game. Later on, there's some monologues from such an I believe it's such an off later on. I think I was in the vents or something like that, where he's talking about the flaws of both capitalism and communism. He's saying that the capitalists are too busy pursuing money mm -hmm. and wealth yeah. and 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 bettering themselves in order to pursue science, and the communists were too better too busy focusing on the worker and power the worker's of the masses and, and yeah, the power of the masses to be able to get anything done either so he said he was pointing out the flaws and from his perspective he was pointing out the flaws of both ideologies and how neither of them would work in order to get us to the stars which is should have been the entire frame of the game and should have been much more had dealt into much more than just like one monologue later in the game because that's you very be interesting. Because you can you can see that you can see like the 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 very base idea, like where you're talking about all the different. Oh, we, we've we've been developing these unique mutated organisms that will, that can exist. It can literally swim through the oceans of, Ju of Jupiter, or you know, can exist mm -hmm. in the the freezing or the freezing planets or the burning planets and all this other stuff. Like that's all super interesting stuff. The idea of like uh, transcending beyond the limitations of human society in order to conquer the stars that should have been a much bigger theme around the game but there's like the the, the very base idea a, a very faint idea that later on in the game but where the rest of the game is crispy critters <laughs> yeah, so yeah yeah hard, I, I think what it is game, seriously I, I think what it is is that bioshock had the libertarian aspect to it and then bioshock infinite had the theocratic aspect to it and then the guys are like, okay, we got, we got to critique an ideology. What are we going to do? Well, we're Russians. I guess we'll do communism. And they didn't really put much thought into it beyond that, I think. Yeah. Or they wanted to, but they couldn't. I don't even know if they're criticizing communism at all in this, really, in any meaningful way, which is fine. I don't, we don't have to have a story about a bunch of communists criticizing communism. It could be, it'd be an interesting little RPG where you're like, no, you're fully on board with the communist stuff. And the robot shit is really the stuff you're trying to resolve. You're not trying to break the political system or anything like that. I just feel like we get that so often, you know? I think, it would um, be neat if it'd be neat if your protagonist, if he was him, he's totally into it like everybody else and he's super concerned about his compatriots and he he wants to, you know, the glorious Soviet Union, that sort of thing, and that's what, you know, really motivates him. I think that could be really fun. But they just didn't do anything at all, so there was nothing to take away from it. He's just sort of a guy that every once in a blue moon makes a reference to, yeah, traitors are bad. And mm -hmm. Soviet Union's good, I guess. But it's like, oh, that's just not... You're just not a character. They give yeah. me character get, to play as. <laughs> I get the impression sometimes that it, it's just... Oh, the aesthetic is kind of cool and unique. And kind like, of, yeah. It. Let's yeah. LARP as a commie. Yeah. Do it. Well, I guess, I mean, yeah. in terms of, like, the very Soviet-era architecture and, like, you know, bold red, like, in, in forming a lot of the direction and the color scheme, it's like, I get the impression that that was there. But as for like any idea sort of informing it, I'm not so sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah they really so need true. to they need to have like a, a really good introduction to how drastically different the society is from ours. Like I, I think that your your throwaway idea of like the the American ambassador, like, like just getting off you could even do a plane if you want to reference Bioshock, whatever. Get off a plane and land, and then outside of his plane, which looks very similar to like a nineteen fifties, nineteen sixties airplane. You know, not too dissimilar from our own. And he gets yeah. off, and then you see a gigantic red banner. Of, yeah, and, 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 and the Soviet plane next to it, and it's yeah, insanely cool. Yeah. Like a space and then, age and, plane. Yeah, and then like a robot all of a sudden comes out, and then and then uh, checks your credits, your social credit score, or something like that. Something like that would be like, oh shit, this is. They wouldn't a do that very to different... a foreigner guy. 
Well, yeah, or they right. assign they assign you a social credit or a temporary social credit pass, whatever. Something that kind of reinstates like this is a very different society that runs by very different rules. And you can just have just the way like people a... talk, the way that people sure. like talk to each other, the way that they behave. Because again, your character never, your character is so divorced from all of the events that yeah. are happening, from all the death, and he's it's yeah. like, like the way that he's portrayed at like like this game tries to say that the one of the aims is to make sure that the government never figures out that this happened which is like <laughs> fuck, yeah right i'm not gonna believe good, that good luck um yeah <laughs> tens and, of thousands and, of deaths <laughs> yeah there's just there's no emphasis on but you know the people need to know and you know that we have to save all the people and it's like none of that happens you're just you're you're larping but as this just dumb asshole that i hate yeah. naive soldier guy who's like no the boss has nothing bad in mind yeah, you could do that story. Everything else, you could do that story in a in in a, a more smart way, where he's a true believer of communism, and he actually th he thinks the best of everyone, and he's very honorable. And then mm -hmm. over the course of the game, he slowly becomes disillusioned. And then this big scene here at the end, where you finally see all of these people with, people with their minds white because they were used to make collective. That's when he finally turns in the whole thing. I think they wanted to do that. They just didn't have the the writing talent or something. Yeah. They didn't frame I, the government as being like the problem. It was Sechenev. The yeah. whole Sechenev's whole deal was keeping the government from finding out what was happening here. Yeah, it's it's weird because it seems like they had a lot of freedom. Like that, there's the whole Russia angle where how much can you do and how much can you say. But mm. they seem to be able to yeah, not. The they don't. Yeah. They didn't seem to have a ton of limitation considering the stuff they say in this in this game. It doesn't seem like they were that politically limited in what they could actually make a story about, frankly. So as long as they're not dropping real world people or the, or the current government into the game and criticizing that, I'm assuming that'd probably be a, a, a bridge too far. But... I think so. I think as long as Russia, like as a governmental institution looks good, they're okay. Um... Yeah, but but this criticizes the, the people in charge of like the U USSR, which is not Russia yeah, now. Yeah, everybody's not. So they could probably pretty much do anything in, well, you in had, the framework um, of the USSR. You had Molotov, right? He was, a who was, Molotov was... Yes, General, Molotov. General, he was one of the council, I guess. Okay, council he was members. part of the Russian government, right? That's why he was killed, so none of this would get out or something? Yeah. yeah. Well, mm -hmm. well, technically, Russia as a government didn't exist at this time. It's the USSR, which is the overall, uh, it was Russia, Ukraine, and a bunch of other... Yegor Molotov. Kazakhstan. He's yeah. president of the Council yeah. of Ministers. It's like 15, it's now 15 countries, I believe, the USSR. Yeah. Or 16, it might be. Yeah. Which brings all, up some, it was all the states of the USSR, yeah. Which brings up another, a couple other questions I had were like, how much do you, how much do you uh, folks on this call buy that this is 1955? I don't. Hmm. <laughs> oh, Wait, well, like, basically like, not at all. Maybe, maybe the 70s or 80s? I'd believe, yeah, yeah. I would believe, yeah, I'd believe this like late 60s to 70s-ish, um, I think would probably be a better date. It'd give you, it would give you way more room between the end of World War II and today mm. to have these yeah. events sort of happen. Like this is the golden age of the soviet union um this is decades after world war ii is ended they've emerged as this global power it's like the best possible ending for them essentially and i yeah, think it'd be interesting if they if they never mention the state of the rest of the world yeah it's it, it, it's it's i don't know if they it, tells, get away with it, tell, that. it tells us that within 19 years of discovering the polymer they make flying cities that seems a little far-fetched to me yeah this needed to be a bit we needed to do a bit more yeah yeah that, it, like, or, uh, or, or I, it's I, like a fallout it's an alternate history where like instead of the microchip never being invented instead this is like mm -hmm. the year 2000 or whatever but this is just how technology progressed where we used polymers and stuff and you know because essentially this is better than the technology we have so it's just like a different version in its current day just in an alternate you know history yeah i mean they have a whole timeline i even linked to it in the chat but the, the i think the problem is is that uh, kind of like, kind of like with uh, Bioshock Infinite, actually, is that 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 timeline seemed a bit far fetched, like how they were able to make floating cities and stuff in the twenties. I think Bioshock. Yeah, had, the Rapture. Had, had, Rapture was pushing it, but it's yeah, like Rapture okay, was pushing it, I, but like the sixties, you know, that that kind of technology might have existed. Mm, Columbia we had deep was insane. Sea technology. Yeah, I was like, I'll believe a city underwater, but a city that's flying around and moving everywhere, like, I get how it's thematically sort of a thing, but, like, uh, I just don't buy it. No. Technologically, yeah. absolutely nuts, and it makes no sense, oh, too. I... The amount of energy it takes to put them up there, and for what? 
like so that they don't have to be a part of the world they're breaking away they're making their own <laughs> nation the yeah, underwater one makes right. so much more sense to me especially in terms yeah. of being able to harness other forms of energy down there um but yeah the geothermal stuff that's a whole section i think it yeah, is yeah, just like, that they nailed it the first time around rapture is such yeah. an amazing idea columbia was their attempt to do it again What's the opposite yeah, of a haven't... water city? Uh, sky <laughs> city. Sky I'm pretty sure they even said that. You know? I'm pretty it's sure they said that in the uh, in like the devlogs and stuff. Oh, you know, like whereas Rapture was hidden, this one's like showcasing itself all around the world. It's like, yeah, it's just not as cool though, is it? <laughs> a moon yeah. base idea could have worked for Atomic Heart if they said it in modern, like modernish day, but with their alt universe and say, yeah, so we made the city on the moon. That way you don't have to worry about making like exteriors and stuff. You, it's, it, it could be all interiors, every, yeah. you know, sort of place. It, it's a science, basically a massive science slash colony of the Soviet Union. The most technologically advanced place ever that they're testing out on the moon. You know, that, yeah, that I could think be one of the I don't probably, mind cover it. They could I don't have mind probably fit all now. the dungeons we, we have. They could have probably fit that on this flying thing anyway. I guess I, guess I don't mind if it's sorry. flying or not. The flying parts just almost seem superfluous and pointless. No, I'm just getting more going for why why bother with this whole quote unquote open world if you could just put it all a bit more together and well, it almost maybe seems like make they... it a more linear experience. Maybe I don't know. Yep, would have been. It might have been that they lot, wanted to go for an open world. You know, like they were going for it, and then partway through they're like, hmm, I'm not sure we can do this. Yeah. And so this yeah. Maybe the train left. segment. Uh, maybe at one point the the whole train thing was the fast travel mechanic to get. I thought that's what we're going for. I, yeah, because now yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think yeah. just like it's it's 2023. Everyone's doing open world games. It's just like a video, yeah, you know, trend. I, and I, actually, it's funny. A similar thing happened to Alan Wake. It was it started in development as an open world game, just because yeah, every that. game was an open world game for the 360, like post Grand Theft Auto 4 and it just wasn't working so they they made the decision to be like hey let's let's kind of pare down well, these open sections into just a linear game with a good story and i think it worked out well, well. i like alan wake no i completely agree with you but i think like alan wake it it, it i i assume you've also played deadly premonition if you like alan wake. i mean i know but i i know i know of okay. deadly premonition well you I'm, should I'm play it it's <laughs> one of the best games ever made i mean honestly but... i think it was actually probably one of your videos where i was like oh man there's like no decent way to play it like you recommended <laughs> i think what was it was like the original xbox version or yes or something? You, you have to go back yeah. and play it in the 360 because none of the other versions oh, 360 work. yeah you can buy it on steam and it won't run past like two hours and they just never fixed it <laughs> and it's like well fuck you but no, no, basically, like, Deadly Premonition was, was an open world game. And it made sense for the kind of, of, of story that it was. Because you're, you're driving around a small town trying to solve a murder. They, they, they're just doing video game uh, Twin Peaks. But that's also yeah. what Alan Wake was. And Alan Wake not being an open world game just felt really strange. You know? I, it felt like oh, really? I don't know. Felt, I, I, I liked yeah, it. It felt uh, like you should be able to go back to the diner and stuff. But you can. It's only in one section. Yeah. yeah, and and they hyper focused on running around with a flashlight at night in the forest, which is a cool, creepy thing. But if that's all that's in the game, none of it's cool and creepy. It's all. The same. See, I, I yeah. think the thing is, I don't really view Alan Wake as a survival horror game at all. Though it's a shooter, and to me, like the, the light is less your light, so that you can see where you're going, and more your mechanic to break the enemy shields. And I don't know, I, I enjoyed it. Yeah, I, I like that I, game a lot too. I was I was super hyped for Alan Wake, and I enjoyed the game. But uh, it, yeah, the idea of uh, having kind of like an open world Twin Peaks esque game where you would have weird, short but but very uh, impactful moments of uh, otherworldly darkness and stuff, like the show Twin Peaks did, mm -hmm. I think I think that would have really kind of made the game great, in my opinion. In, in, in the end, it's a it's a very good shooter, but it, it never quite got into greatness because of that sort of limited scope. I think. Well, yeah, well, that I, is I exactly what I, I, what depression is. The permission is that yeah. you have the open world, you have like the, the moments of going into the other world where there's like weird things going on, and then you come out of it. Yeah, that's that's you just described it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I like deadly permission. Jake is hell, but it, it 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 definitely is a lot more ambitious, especially with like the whole time clock system and people schedules and meeting people at the donut shop and eating, you know jelly and cereal sandwiches and shit that really it really yeah i mean twin peaks was also very weird you'd have you'd have brutal horrible 
murder slash uh, sexual assaults and things like that. Um, yeah. While while show, also ha show. while also having like physical comedy and sitcom stuff. It was a very very weird show. That was Lynch for you, isn't it? Yeah, Lynch. Man, so sure. he's an odd odd duck that one. So have you if you so you played the different mission then it sounds like so. You ever have that moment where you had to like meet up with somebody at a certain place and they weren't gonna be there for like two fucking in-game days and you didn't want to drive around to try and find them on their schedule <laughs> so you just sat in front of their house and you just started smoking cigarettes to pass time and then when you, when you get to a point where you're too tired you start drinking coffee so your character spends two days just sitting on a guy's porch <laughs> staying up all night smoking cigarettes and just drinking pots and pots of coffee it's like wow what a terrible existence well i mean deb it's... you've been to rural canada you know <laughs> yeah there, i, there I know people, how it is now. There are people... Look, <laughs> it's it's kind of like the anti uh dead rising when you think about it dead rising had that system but it was all about the scarcity of time where it's like you do not have enough time to meet everybody where they want to meet you so you had mm -hmm. to make choices like oh no they're they're going to meet me at the mall yeah. lobby in about 30 minutes but at the same time i need to get back and talk to somebody who's only going to be there for an hour at you know the the safe room so it was the same idea the same mechanic uh, the same mechanics but at the same time you did not have enough time to do everything to segue back to atomic heart i think a real time a time limit <laughs> mechanic would have made this game absolutely terrible <laughs> i i yeah. i Oh, I geez. think that I, I don't, spent so much yeah, time wondering wanna, what was going on that I, I would timer. not want to. Yeah. I want to explore and I want to check everything out and I want to see everything this game has. I don't want to be oh. like, oh, I got to hurry, got to hurry, got to hurry. Mm -hmm. There are some games that do timers very well, Regs. Just this Majora's one. Mask four. Majora's Mask was amazing. <laughs> it's Holy the one everyone shit. says. So. Yeah, that's like top tier. I, well, I just don't like feeling like I need to progress through the game yeah. and i can't like take it at my own pace and you know see all the things that it has to offer me oh vampire well, survivors you have a 30 minute time limit for a run so i, I well, like that a lot oh, what's that, what's that space mode. game there's that space game that like has it's like it's like the collapsing of a solar system over the course of like an hour or something. outer wilds yes that game does a timer very well because once you, once you've learned what's happening in each run, you yeah. can go to different different planets and see what's going on. It's yeah. If if a game can do a time loop well, so that you learn and and build yeah. on what you've uh, on what you've collected from the last loop, you can do you can make a timer based game very interesting. Yeah, I mean, I, that, I guess that's the rogue like do, right? uh, the rogue like genre, I think. Though, and I, I yeah, I think uh, death death loop. You weren't really on a timer though. It was kind. Of, it was more like a rogue where you. You die and then you kind of respawn and you have some elements of the thing, but the the world states reset. And I think that that's really taken off a lot over the last few years. But hard timer games set to like a real time timer. Indian that's team just so Elysium is yeah. technically time limited. Is oh really? Yeah. Oh. Uh, Death how how long is the timer? Uh, some number of days. I don't remember exactly how <laughs> that's many. Interesting. But... Uh, Wait. Every in-game action, like in terms of conversations, costs you time. Oh, and okay. you have limited oh. time in a day, and yeah. you have limited days before story event happens that kicks off the end game. Hmm. Uh, Scorn hey. had a timer. Sure. It was uh, yeah, it was five hours, but everyone beat the game by then, so no one noticed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, are you I fucking get, around for real? No, I'm fucking around. Oh, thank God. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> the persona. Well, I, I know. Um, I know. Shenmue had a timer. Like, if you, the the murder of of the main guy's father in Shenmue happens in December, I think. And if you wait until April, uh, the murderer shows back up and just kills you. <laughs> so you, oh, wow. you have you have to like you have to, you have to complete the game before April. And then the, the, all the sequels that might not ever be made, at least up to they just didn't the happen. <laughs> Yeah. One of the, oh, one man, of the hey, coolest. So, well, I mean, they made three eventually. Yeah, I, I hadn't played it, though. I, I think actually they... pretty good. Three's pretty good. I played three. Oh, uh, really? Here, uh, here's the, here's good the good ultimate ever. piss off. All right. So Yu Suzuki is like, I'm going to make my Shenmue games and fuck you. And he basically, he had a trilogy planned, but he couldn't fit it. He couldn't make it work in the Dreamcast because it was going to be, be like a 12 disc game. Okay. <laughs> so Shenmue. Oh, oh, remember, <laughs> remember multiple discs. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Shenmue 1 was originally supposed to be what we got as Shenmue 1, 2, and 3. And after oh. Shenmue 2, uh, we didn't get Shenmue 3 until, like, what, 2018, 2019? And yeah, they were like, listen, yeah. listen, you, you were gone for, like, 20 years or whatever. Are you going to finish the story in Shenmue 3? And he's like, no, I still want to make my nine games. I'll just, uh, I'll, oh, well, I'll, good I'll, luck. Like, oh, 
So, yeah. so we'll finish that series in like two <laughs> generations. <laughs> Who knows? Like he he does like he said. People are saying like, okay, well, are you gonna what, what, what's the next one? He's like, no, I'm just, I'm gonna make the story that I want to make. And I'm gonna if I don't make it, I don't make it. But I'm not gonna compromise on it. It's like okay, I can at least respect that. But he had he had everything planned out from the beginning, and the trilogy that we got was supposed to be the first game. Um, and what he then ended up setting up was that because everyone loved Shenmue, but it wasn't like it, it was, it's one of those cult things where like everyone really looks, looks back on it fondly, but like, it's not really that fun to go back and play. And hmm. it's, it's really, it's really only kept alive by, by its cult following. It's in an mm -hmm. interesting position as one of the must buy games or like the big games at the time on Dreamcast which is yes. like a system that not a ton of people had. Lots of people yeah, had exactly. it in 99, but I think once you once you started getting close to that PS2 launch, there were a lot of people that were kind of losing losing interest in the Dreamcast, and mm -hmm. I think Sega yeah. kind of was kind of feeling so, that. And Sh Shenmue was extremely expensive too. You should uh, emulate yeah. it at, and run it at high res sometime. Those textures are insanely high de uh, detailed on the faces and things like that for mm -hmm. a Dreamcast yes. game. It was an extremely expensive game. And it was like really ahead of its time in a lot of a lot of aspects, like the the scheduling system. Like stores would open up shop that actually open up the uh, the kind of the grate or the uh, the um, what what do you call those barriers in front of a shop where you pull up to protect your shop? Shutters, yeah, bars, yeah, yeah shutters. Yeah. Yeah, they, they open up the shutters. The just like they, walk into the store. Yeah, yeah, and and then not only that, but like people, I, I watched the hot dog or the either the burger or the hot dog guy. He closes shop and then walks man, to yeah. the, the the grocery store, goes into the grocery store, zones into the grocery store, goes shops around, and then leaves the grocery store, then walks to his apartment. Like, he does this yeah. whole day-night cycle just to get ad immersion, yeah. which is pretty incredible, Every considering a lot of games that do that now. I mean, this is well before uh, Elder Scrolls it's Oblivion like and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. By the, those yeah. games are so expensive to make. <laughs> Basically, they set it up so that every character has a schedule and has a home and has a workplace and they all yeah. do their thing every day and it's like Monday to Friday and then they have different things on Saturday and Sunday. And also, they all have fully voice acted lines for yeah. every single step of the investigation. So you can go back to any one of them and, and talk about like the, the latest clue you discovered about, about yeah. what happened to your father and they'll tell you new things. And it's all voice acted, which was incredible for 99. Um, yeah, really the, the, the big piss off though is that Yu Suzuki's very adamant about wanting to make his games his way and he's not gonna, you know, just finish it up and because he has a story that he wants to tell. It's like, okay. And then, um, and then Shenmue becomes an anime. And in the first season, they already, they, they got through the, the story of Shenmue 1. And then they're making Shen, the, Shen, the second, second season is gonna be Shenmue 2. And it's like, holy shit, the anime is gonna finish before the, the fourth game comes out. And then it got cancelled. And it got cancelled at the end of Shenmue 2. So people are just like, God damn it, we're never going to see the end of this fucking story. Yeah, that's a, that's a whole story. You should write a book like that one guy. Eh? Who? That was, who's that guy who can never finish books? George R. Oh, R. Martin. Oh, George R. R. Martin. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. Fuck. Shenmue is the Game of Thrones. Any day now, video. guys. Yeah, Every any day, day Shenmue close. 4. Yeah. Shenmue Every day 4 is another day closer. Today. Fuck. Oh, uh, does anyone have anything back. else for Atomic Con? <laughs> uh, <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry, um, dude. I'm sorry. No, Russia well, shock. That's, 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 I, I'm literally saying I think we might be done with Atomic Con. I'm not sure. Do you, uh, well, well, I could teach I everyone about Coom shocking. <laughs> look a little bit through my uh, my notes here. Uh, let me yeah, see. Yeah, so I, I think the reason notes. that they set the game in 1955 is because that's when in real life the Warsaw Pact spinned up. So it was like a historic Soviet day Fun. that everything happened on in real life. But that makes hmm. no sense for the actual continuity of the game. No, and I, I don't see World War II Wars. happening. Yeah, like... The, oh, yeah. The, intro the introduction of Polymer know, and, and robots lost. would completely change the landscape of the entire World War II. This was discovered well, between... Uh, well, w yeah. Yeah, World but, War II was longer that... in this game, right? In this universe. Like, yeah, it, it ended in like 40... Nine, right? Which means that this game is yeah. set not very six long years after. after yeah, yeah. And it's like, look at this crazy tech. It seems like it's just pushing it. Well, they also say that the Nazis unleashed the Brown Plague, whatever that yeah. was. Did they, did they go? Did they go into that? Was that ever it's, expanded? It's some, um, it's some weird pest thingy. They had to make some kind of vaccine for. They used the, the polymer for, I think. Hmm. 
I think it was polymer was developed as they were trying to like uh, fight the brown plague, but it, it's referenced yeah. a couple times, but it's not like a big deal. And no, the story, it's just well, it's no, just German like, style like, pooping everywhere. Stuff, yeah. yeah. We tend to do that, yeah. As they do, yeah. Um, look through notes here. There's some game stuff that I, of course, hated. Um, upgrades not being specific. Uh, when it says that it does a thing, it doesn't say uh, by how much. It mm. shows the upgrade. Increased shows. <laughs> yeah, it, it shows. It does that stupid Call of Duty thing where instead of giving numbers, um, it gives like little pips that go up and down, uh, mm. and you don't really know what they are. Um, the... Let's see, the health bar that you have does not have an, any numbers attached to it, but when you mouse over uh, your health, it says it restores like 50 health or something, which we can assume is half of your health, but again, the health doesn't say, so you don't yeah. know if you start out with 100 health or not. Cause, yeah, because um, you also get more upgrades from like two or three, so it might be go, going up to 200, maybe? Yeah, maybe so it's... I no think idea. it does. Those, just like, give is me it, a fucking number. I, th I thought it did tell you what what health numbers the upgrades bump you up to, but that's the only place that it tells. I, I feel like I saw it somewhere. I, yeah, I don't have a like, reference. In, so. There's no reason why you can't have, first off, make the bar a little bit bigger. Uh, it's important, uh, but mm, to yeah. have it be, um, to say a number, like you have 66 out of 120 health, um, so things of that nature. Uh, we're not retards. We understand what numbers are. And <clears> yeah. I, so what are those? Uh, Oh, they're, they're <laughs> symbols used to represent amounts. Are they like so letters? Really, they're sort of, uh, sort in a of, way. Yeah. They're, they're yeah. sort of like uh, they're sort of like letters. Uh, they're, they're best friends with letters. They get along. They're different, but they uh, cohabitate wonderfully and beautifully. Aww. Are there uh, any special uh, symbols? I did find it a bit weird that the health that the health bar is just white and not like green or red or something. Um, yeah, the, it's, it's, it's a fairly simplistic UI, which is fine. Aesthetic. Yeah. I know, well, I was confused in the beginning right. of the game. It's like, which one of these bars is actually my health until I got damaged oh, for the first I time? Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Also, touching chickens will damage your health. Um, I don't know why they decided <laughs> to make that be a thing. Yeah, they have some I, savage true in real these life, games. Too. Chickens will fuck you up, man. He just yeah. touch you and you get hurt. Um, let me see. I killed all I those crispy sad. feeding grounds. I was very I, uh, sad about the, um, the part where you had to grind up all of the farm critters to get the the vial i didn't like that that made me sad yeah all um, the cows the cow and the chicken yeah and the pigs Dude. that were just chilling out but hey the the main guy he felt bad about that so mm -hmm. you know killing. it's nice to know the... he's got a heart i was just confused it's like did, did i do that <laughs> what's going something on no, I, I, well I, yeah. I decided to look something up and i oh. i think now, now that i've looked this up I think that we were correct when we said earlier that the, these guys really wanted to try and make a serious story and just didn't have the talent or the Aww. ability or the time to pull it off. And, and here's what okay, so, <clears throat> so I, I, I found I found some information on in, in the lore on the Brown Plague. OK, and the Brown Plague was unleashed by the Nazis. It killed millions of people and it also drove up worldwide demand for labor in the world building of the game, which made the Soviet robots um, more valuable. To, to right. be sold to other nations. All right. Um, and I was thinking about it. I was like, okay, well, what, what what that story is is that they're doing the Black Plague because the Black Plague did the same thing. Killed all the peasants. Suddenly, peasants were pe peasant labor was more valuable. Uh, so lords had to compete for peasantry, which led to the development of like a modern liberal society with with wage as be, being the driving force of labor rather than you know be, being a serf, right? So they're like, okay, so so they're doing the the whole dialectic of history thing where they're gonna. This is how we advance to communism from capitalism. So I it, I can see the pieces of a political story that they want to do here, but they just failed at it. They just didn't. Well, just as didn't if anyone's it. gonna be well, seeing any of that beyond the crispy critters and all yeah. the shitty dialogue like that. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, um, I think I think it's all all that the discussion really illuminates is like, man, you had like a lot of elements in play. And if they could have just been like directed and funneled in service of like a more coherent core, Point, yeah. it, it could have just been like a lot stronger. But it almost makes me wonder. It's like, well, I mean, their next game will probably be pretty solid then if they learn a lot of lessons from this. I one. know. I have high hopes yeah. for the next. I really hope they I, learn. Their yeah, lessons. I would check it out. This, this, this was their first game. Again, more. This was their very <laughs> first game. So yeah. I kind of yeah. hope they get hired as a support studio. Because I think they're really, really good with tech, and I think they can make combat and powers and abilities and all sorts of cool things that might not end up feeling very good in a game if they're not executed well. I think they do all that stuff great. 
I I just think that their their storytelling and writing is not I want to give them not really on. It, I think yeah yeah yeah. This makes me think that the the director had some very weird ideas that he and he did not have a filter. Yeah, like they need yeah, somebody the to challenge them. It's like, they need uh, by this studio. I don't know, maybe an editor <laughs> in the form of every part of the game. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah someone with a stick. Where, whenever one of the ideas, people like starts thinking about, hey, what if we did this in the game as well? You know, just hits quite, them with yeah. the stick. No, so they needed that guy to be like, you, you know, this stuff you worked really long and hard on this section. We're getting rid of it, and they're like, we can't get rid of that. Yeah. We worked for it. It's like, I know, but. Bad. Trust me. It's got bad. <laughs> we will yeah. table it so, for use in the sequel. We'll put it in the DLC lost files or something. <laughs> yeah. And so because this is, uh, yeah, just because this is the the developer's first game, which is very interesting. It's mm -hmm. like okay, well maybe you guys can actually you know make the, you know your your first game is gonna suck. That's just kind of how it is. But if your first game is this good, which still isn't, it's like a 6.5 out of 10 or something, but like, hmm. if, if your first game is this good, you'll probably get into the swing of things as you keep yeah. going. Cool. It's not really like it's hopeless. technically impressive, which is yeah, a really that... good base to start from because it's hard that's, to That's get. something a lot of people yeah. fuck up. <laughs> yeah. Well, actually, yeah. can we do that quick? Uh, slap a very broad and to be changed number that you're not really committed to from left to right, just one by one out of 10 on this game. Uh, I'm probably, yeah, I'm probably at like a six. I think that's where I'm at. Yeah, I'm kind of, I'm kind of thinking six as well. Probably closer to a seven than a five if I'm going to pull in a YMS. But yeah, it, it story-wise, it's like a, it's like a the potential of a 10, but really executed like a three. <laughs> but, you know, the, the game All right, overall, Mark, I, I, now I you say a number. <laughs> I'm, I'm at basically a five, and uh, the puppy is keeping me quiet. Oh, okay, God. we're gonna make this one short. The puppy's wow. making cheese out of six. Wow. Okay, bye bye. Okay, uh, I I'm pretty much still sitting on four. I might be able to be pushed to five out of ten. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm on a solid four and a half. I haven't played it, so I can't quite say. Oh. Um, no, the, I, my I point would... is, put a number on, even with all the context, everyone's got about what everyone knows um, played. I would probably give it a six based on what I've seen and uh, what I've heard, but that could, of course, change. Yeah, for, for me, I mean, I already said it, but it's uh, between six and six and a half, depending on my mood. Uh -huh. It's a four. It's a four. It might be a 3.5, but it's probably just a four. Um, I could be talked into a four. Yeah, we get it. Easy. Something that I probably want to add is my first 20% of playing this game was kind of like what the hell and then it was a good like 40 percent chunk of like this is kind of fun okay this is fine i'm enjoying this, this is blah, blah, blah. but then that last selection i was like i'm kind of miserable and i'm desperate for this to end it is a very inconsistent experience yeah it's oh well, yeah like it yeah. just sort of goes so, back and forth how about this if you had to buy it at what price is it worth buying because it's not well, worth got, a full I, a full seventy bucks, but it's, pass, it's worth no. getting on sale. I mean, game it's yeah, it's I, probably I, yeah. Game Pass uh, was what made me do it. I wouldn't buy it. Yeah, Game oh, Pass definitely or... wouldn't pay full price for this. In a bundle, in a humble bundle or something. <laughs> I just <wouldn't>. like <laughs> I I would definitely be happy to see it on like hum as a humble monthly game. I'd be like, all right, it's on my card. I'll give this a shot. But I, I, I don't know. Chat, but, uh, what about a yeah. conversation about the combat? I feel like we talked about it, but it almost well, so, like the summary. Someone, someone said, like, a, really, Mola, like, you're giving it that kind of score when really the only thing that needs serious work is the story. So, first of all, uh, no, all of, okay. all no, of no, the story and characters all the buggets, all are completely sure. busted, and that's worth a lot. That's not something you just yeah. brush off with a point. Secondly, like, we've talked a lot about the broken mechanics in this. Like, this well, is. And, and not to, even just mechanics. really touch on is, like, at the core of the mechanics, it's like, this this ain't like a particularly great first person shooter in terms of the mechanics of the first person shooting. Like there are other games that are much better like first person shooters. It reminded me of a question I wanted to ask because FPS is a very like feel dependent and I can't, I, I don't mm. have that having not I... played it myself, but I wanted to ask, do you think this game needs a dash button or could what is accomplished by the dash button be done by removing it and giving you slightly higher base move speed? Yes. Uh, dash. Uh, well, we've been shown on kind of... screen right now. A lot of the puzzles are based around oh. you having a dash. A dash yeah. Dash. I think they have it more for the platforming yeah. than anything else. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I yeah, personally it makes, it makes couldn't me... use the dash more during combat. I I, I smashed that thing. I, I feel, feel like actually. they watched footage of Doom Eternal and then they were like, right. "That's cool." 
let's do that. Oh, but then they didn't yeah. really. Oh, that's another aspect we didn't talk about. That was. <laughs> Soundtrack. We mentioned it, but like, yeah, there's, oh, there's there's so many the songs really I really love in the game. But yeah. whoever fucking edited how they play and where they play needs yeah. to stop. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they yeah. Can, yeah. I, I, Sometimes they were just really odd. There'd be this epic music. It's like this isn't that epic. Like this, this fight is pretty, the well. And I'm sorry, but like it's I, I, Nick Gordon fight. down, baby. It's I like the it. Doom songs, but what the hell are they yeah. doing in this game? Like they just come, As, you spend the whole game listening to. I like, want more like Russian, yeah, like, like, that like, sort of retroy <laughs> female vocals, kind of. Like, that's really cool. I feel like it fits, even in the middle of combat. Classical music in the fight against Natasha. Yeah, there's, cool. a, yeah. there's a couple sequences with, like, the kind of Russian singing and, like, the techno beat that, that ramped up as you got into fighting. That was mm -hmm. super cool. Like, a, a couple moments there, I'm like, yeah, I'm getting this the vibe of this. This is, like, uh, Soviet techno, whatever, yeah. as you know, far electro as I, metal. And, like, I'm, I'm thinking I that. But uh, I, I agree with you, Muller. Like, one of the one of the unsung heroes of uh, Doom isn't Mick Gordon. It's whoever programmed the music system in that game. Yeah, dynamic it's, music it's, it's is not so yeah. fucking important. Dynamic yeah. music, yeah. like Metal Gear yeah. Rising, Revenge, Doom, Devil May Cry Five. Devil May Cry Five uses it to, like cry. dynamic music is so awesome. It's like one of the cool yeah. things with video games of syncing up the music with the action is really cool. High five rush. It's, like, yeah, yes. Uh, well, I mean, <laughs> yes. The gameplay mechanic and all the license tracks in that yeah. game are fantastic. But yeah, whereas it's, here it's like, I don't really have any problem with it. Like, the music is cool. It just seems like the choices of when to use it just seem not very it's coherent. It's not got a consistent sense of its presentation. It doesn't know what it wants to be, and that's felt even yeah. all the way to the soundtrack. Because and I think that's the almost... tracks plus uh, things like the classical music in boss fights, they just don't seem like they fit in the same game. Yeah, and then you have this, well, this, it's, this yeah. end section when you go towards the end game with like all the plant, those plant enemies, and then all of a sudden that banger song starts. It's like, oh shit. Well, yeah, I no, know, it's, um, I, don't it's, um, I don't know why this is here all of a sudden, but this bangs. I like I'm this. trying to find. Yeah, something. I think that's why they, it's tricky. They should have saved those for <laughs> just for bosses then. Well, I, just, like... I still don't know about that because like, I'm trying to find the footage. I don't know when I fought him, but there's a boss fight around this area. I think it was before now. It might be my part too, but. Um, Everything in the game so far has been pretty Russian-y, for lack of a better way to put it. And then I drop in, he lands, and then it's like... <laughs> metal music, and it's like, whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. When have we that ever that done that 50, in this game? 60 music vibe. It's, yeah. it's like, it's this piece of modernity that doesn't seem like it belongs here. Yeah, like, probably uh, the... Probably the most, like, a uh, doomy slash uh, Soviet, basically Soviet <laughs> doom that I kind of felt that it worked was, uh, in, in, I want to say, I don't know if it was, like, near uh, testing facility 11 or whatever, <laughs> but it was the city that, uh, by default, the security system is off. There was a muted version where you heard, like, the da-da-da-da-da-da kind of in the background, and you're mm -hmm. like, oh, okay, kind of Russian-y. And then when you trigger uh, all the robots and you get up to, like, alarm level 2 or whatever, it kicks in, like, this almost uh, electro dubstep It's like, boom da 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 and that's i'm like okay i'm kind of jamming to this i kind of like this vibe this is sort of like a heightened you know w whether you want to justify it through the radio of the future crap or whatever but that kind of justifies that whole sort of futuristic techno russian sort of thing oh, but that right. kind of gave it gave it a unique personality and i guess that's how they they explain the different music styles but yeah honestly, the music from the trailer been... they needed to have yeah. that that the 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 trailers for this game were incredible and oh, yeah. if yeah. they could capture that kind of music and the vibe i think it would give this game its own very unique sort of feeling yeah um if you have like the the the, the female vocals as she's singing russian and kind of like moderate orchestral loungy kind of music that's got that little bit of eastern bounce to it uh, that a lot of like Eastern European music has. That's really kind of neat. Uh, well, think, and that gives it its flavor. I think that would have been awesome for, uh, for this game. Yeah, if you want to look that... for more like futuristic inspiration as well. It's it's like, dude, look at Tetris. Like, find ways to think about like, because you know the Tetris theme. I maybe it is like sort of a thing because everybody knows it's a Russian game. But it feels Russian. And it seems yeah. like if you just you know like find a way to get I... that sort of vibe and then inject it into the music i feel like yeah i feel like so, they had a lot of options i thought i thought the tetris theme i think it's like a royalty free like russian folk song like it's out of music main one. comrade yeah yeah i think i think it is uh hey, however we've though. skipped over the dumbest thing in this entire game oh my god oh we already we talked think... about crispy critters what do you mean <laughs> yeah. no, no, no. <laughs> dumber than crispy critters right? oh Ooh, what possible. could you be referring okay. to okay the radio from the future 
<laughs> oh god. I forgot about that. Yeah, I mean, oh, think about that. dear lord, yeah. Because oh. even in the game, the the, the, car the P3 says like, wait, what if you're listening to it now? This is not future music anymore, right? And then they go yeah, like, exactly. back and forth, and I was like, yeah, sure, whatever. Shut they, up. They just try to tell you <laughs> science oh. stuff. Oh. Shut up. <laughs> yeah. For the chat, there, there's also a weird like sub subplot involving time stuff okay and it's it's not really explained and it's only used for one thing and what what it's used for is that the polymers the, the magic whatever you can receive magic, radio yeah. from the future so that you know what people in the future are listening to in terms of music yeah and so, so well, that this you can is like the to... brains talking to you from beyond the grave where it's just like this thing that's just sort of in this world and you're like oh oh okay what are you that's meant in to this make world. Of it? yeah like what do you what am i supposed to do with it <laughs> sometimes well, it verges I... on the too fantastical you know like I all the robotic think... stuff totally buy it you're not supposed to take it seriously like, oh, yeah, right. <laughs> i but... i i think that's how they justify putting in certain songs in the game that are clearly out of place I yeah, think that's, that's their in-lore justification, is that radio from the future. From the future. Uh, it reminds uh, me of the wizards. Dog, I didn't make that one. It'll be the end of your explanation. I feel dumb. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's, <laughs> that's what I got from it. It's like, okay, we can do all genres now because the future, right? But at mm. the same time, it's like you get radio broadcast. You get commentators Yo. talking about the fall of the USSR or the fall of the United States. Like, that would be a, a huge can of worms to open if you could hear ra news well, broadcasts from the future. <laughs> Just go the it's fallout route. Time travel. They just don't yeah. do just anything with it. They, it's just yeah. it's just background, and they never explore it. And mm. it's just like, oh, okay, that's so how we get I, our cool music. That's how we get yeah. our Euro beats. Yeah, they they want to get the the eighties like like they want to get like eighties like kind of almost Soviet wave. They want to get electronic and stuff. Here's a mu here's a much easier idea. Instead of basing it in 1955 with the the Warsaw Pact, got it in the eighties. Like Set so in the eighties, right before the fall of the USSR. Alternate history. You got about uh, what. 30, 40, some plus years of time after the World War II, discover the polymer, oh, uh, the entire, over two to three generations, uh, transform the entirety of the USSR into a technological super nation with robots and stuff that's now exporting their robotic technology. That's and a I lot think more just plausible. it fits the aesthetic as well. Yeah. Like it fits the aesthetic. In the same way that obviously Bioshock wraps you having a very art deco. It's like, yeah, it's a couple of decades removed from, um, from when Art Deco was super huge in, in America. And then, set, you know, to complement Bioshock Infinite with Columbia, it's kind of like tying more into the, uh, like, well, the architectural, style, architecture, like, uh, yeah. yeah, exactly. But, but that it ties into like its very nationalistic <clears throat> sort of uh, bent yeah, that Columbia exactly. has. And then, and then in terms of, because I think when I think about this aesthetic, it, almost, it feels more like 80s to me than 50s. Of yes. like uh, yes. 80s, yes, techno, like 70s, Soviet yeah. Union kind of thing. 70s as well, yeah. It's just, um... Yeah, that, if, that feels like it makes more sense and would probably be more coherent. Well, so in terms of people the wanted to address like, like as far as the game is concerned, it's not that they're actually pulling it from the future, just an AI approximation. Right, what right, right. Futuristic music, uh, maybe. This is this is the radio, and now Earth music. Oh, <laughs> human, <laughs> human music. music. <laughs> oh yeah, human music. That's human right. Human music. Ever no. <laughs> On that note, because uh, I've just been made aware of it, and I can't believe I forgot, but remember we were talking about how the dialogue interrupts itself? Yes. Um, mm -hmm. Now, there are some instances where it happens in a lot of the best of funded games because players can really experiment, really push things to limits, but if you all can, if you're in the call, push this volume up. This is me just trying to get through the fucking in-game cutscene to a real, real boy cutscene, and just look what okay. happens. Look how slow this Why is. Calling Dr. Sechenov Dmitri. Who are you? Comrade Major, this will be difficult to explain. I am Charles. Why the fuck are you all static? Oh, yeah. What the hell is going on? Keep it together, Major. If what I'm thinking is true, I should be Stay able to access name. the office <laughs> right now. Access code. There will Chris be records Pierce. about me. Oh, oh no. no. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Name Charidan Zaharov. Code Fluffy. Code How do I interrupt? Access <laughs> campaign yeah, these are the dialogue. things you catch in the rough draft. Campaign dialogue. Yeah. Yeah. How, this How... happened to me too. This happened to me too. How is it possible? <laughs> I don't know. Like, how could you make Crispy it? Critters. Crispy critters. Crispy critters. <laughs> oh boy, them critters are crispy. 
It's yeah. It wouldn't, it wouldn't be so bad if that catchphrase was like like once in a blue moon. But he really leans into the mic as like crispy well, critters. The thing about it is like, doesn't he have a that's my line moment? Yeah, yeah. So. The yeah. point where where yeah. the the robot says crispy critters like. You know, so and so, and that's my fucking line. He wants like, to claim sort of ownership badass. of this, crispy uh, critters. Yeah. <laughs> when you're making a sequence like this, that you just make everything. You know, this bridge closing or opening. You make it as long as the dialogue lasts. That's yeah. that's how all games yeah. do it. How did they fuck that up? Some of these yeah. weird oversights, aren't they? Of just like fundamental like video game design at times. It's so I don't understand really something. I just don't get how you. These, these I mean, are all basic. mentioned before, but like um, the fact that you know you could have like the the fridge to upgrade your weapons and stuff. Like it'll be five seconds outside of like the door from the yeah. server room. It's just like that kind of copied and pasted in there. Yeah, that's I, I noticed that like sometimes save points are like right next to each other, and then yeah. other times they're that's like uh, an hour of gameplay apart. You have to backtrack. Very yeah, weird. like there's some really weird basic kind of errors. It's, it's the kind uh, of errors you expect from someone's first game. Do you think it's of. because the Russian versions yep. are way shorter? Like an English takes longer. Maybe, Russian that, lines? That Maybe. Might, yeah. might be a uh, reason. In, yeah. this, in this instance, yeah, that might. I, might, but I guess in terms yeah, I of like know. more apparent design oversights, it's just kind of Could like because it, it's still. I'm I'm still thinking about the fact of introducing the scanner in a way that doesn't just immediately test like a reason why you would want to use it or you well, know, they, a use that's for one it. Of, Fringy, that's one of my notes here that I've written down was that they have a that they have an element here where the scanner is used to find the electricity moving through the wires in the walls. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But that's just like not really incorporated much, no, it's and it's not, just sort of does. It's, 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 I, I think um I think that if the explanation for the you know the making of the game was a bunch of ideas kept coming in and out of focus in terms of their goals with the game. It's like, dude, that explains so much because it's just yeah. This we wanted them all. They were such great ideas. We couldn't not put them in the game. Yeah, we couldn't let them go. We couldn't a... you know, cut it. It's like it it does many things that other games do, but the difference is that usually great games will focus in on a handful of things and do them exceptionally well. Yeah, like Batman's um, detective vision is just useful yeah. all the time. All the time. Yeah, Even to the point exactly. of people being critical of it. Like, I just wish it was on all the time because it's so good. Like, <laughs> yeah. Same as Dishonored's Dark Vision. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, it's, it's just, um, yeah, because it's just so many elements thrown at the wall. And it's like, none of these are, are great, though. Some of them are better than others. But, like, everything that the game does, it feels like you could always point to, like, a, several other examples of games that did that thing better. Yeah, it's very frustrating because I, I keep on going back to this game and everything in this game... I, it has all the components of a really good game, possibly even a great game, but you'd need to completely revamp all this. Like all the assets are here. You've got good music is, that's that's poorly it. used. You've got you've got good set, good settings and and good art design, but the the actual level the actual the level design and stuff and story yeah. sucks. Yeah, like there's so many things you could do. Like uh, back to the music again. There's some songs I heard once in the entire game that are like the best songs in the game. I probably heard about four hours of the elevator music when you look into the oh uh, god yeah <laughs> into the into the into the upgrade <laughs> station. It's like the dun, 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 you know. It's like I probably heard about two to four hours of that of that song and maybe one instance of like one of Mick Gordon's tracks. It's so so weird. So. It sounds like you're you're describing Sonic 06 then. All the pieces just <laughs> oh not assembled. God. Uh, I don't know. I agree with that. I think that Sonic 06 right, just. Right, right. Just, I don't think Sonic 06 would have been good if they had another year either. I think they made a lot of bad decisions <laughs> with that game. I was saying, I, Sonic I 06 is way more fundamentally year. broken than this is. It's I think Sonic another game. year would have been another well, more well, I mean, another year's worth of mistakes in the game. game. <laughs> like, well, it's just, just people say that, like, oh yeah, Sonic 06, like it was rushed, it needed another year. It's like it needed another year to like not be a completely broken buggy piece of shit. But like a lot of the ideas, Halo Infinite, like you know? does does a year change the 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 ideas that they had for that story? Like for which I don't know if you guys know what happens in that story. But like, <laughs> I think it's pretty good. Eggman so pisses on the moon, moon, right? So they're really good narratives, I think. Eggman, 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 Eggman. I I do I... know that their their original plan was that you'd be able to switch switch between characters in the fly and have them do like different things. Like some like, heroes. They just couldn't do it. In Sonic well, no, 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 no. It wouldn't be like Sonic Heroes where, the, where all three of you were running in formation. They were just like, like swapping. What? Well, it's Grand Theft Auto 5 before Grand Theft Auto 5, but instead of Michael Franklin and Trevor, it's Sonic Shadow. <laughs> what a loathsome Silver. franchise, dude. Hey. <laughs> Sonic is so gosh darn it's cool. 
Tails yeah. just waking no, up somewhere. Hey, don't say that about my OCs. Completely drunk, only with shorts on. Huh? Just like, ah. It's I, not I you! Take this! <laughs> it's the <laughs> ending! <laughs> I know, man. You know, you know. To their credit, uh, Sonic Frontiers was not bad. Careful. The newest one. Uh, that's uh, I hear. Yeah, but so, uh, do you think this game's what? not bad? This game's also not bad. There it's you not go. great. All right. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, <laughs> okay. I'm just understanding the dev scale. All right, it's all good. If if, if this if this game were like on fifty percent off on Steam or something, it's probably worth a buy. No. Oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> Forty I, I bucks. Yeah. I don't know about no. that. <laughs> So, okay, so are we going to play the game of what's half of 70? <laughs> it's 40, <laughs> right? It's 35 <laughs> rounded up. I, well, I mean, oh, it's... Okay, hold on. Okay. How low would the dollar have to go before you buy it? You know, How many rubles I, is this game worth? I, mm. I, I would buy, I would buy it, it for a thousand rubles, to be honest. Nice. <laughs> I'd buy it for a trillion Zimbabwean dollars. Because um, I probably think this is like a, a $30 game. I'll go as high as $20. A 30, a 30 or a 40 say, maybe. I think I'd be going for like 20 bucks is what I'd be willing mm. to pay for it. Yeah. Uh, 20, yeah, 25. Rags. Probably. Rags beat me. Rags beat me to it, but I was going to make the joke. I'd pay. I'd pay two thousand rubles for it, which is about twenty six bucks. <laughs> I mean, I think the point of reference will be that like Metroid Prime Remastered, which the physical copy finally came out in Australia oh, nice. land. It's uh fifty bucks here, but it's forty dollars in the US. It's like, dude, forty bucks for like Metroid Prime. You know, you compare that. Yeah, it's like, that game is fucking glorious. You know? So. Mm -hmm. Well, it's one of the best games ever made, and it's like, it's kind of, mm -hmm. the reality is that games have to, I mean, it's just, because, Deb, you played for Spoken, right? That's $70, it's like, oof, Holy shit, man. Fuck. Like, seven Great bucks. version of Metroid Prime, too. It, like, they did a lot of that's work to I it. It's not, just a, yeah. it's not just a ROM. Everyone's that, demanding like, um, that we stream it, so <laughs> maybe. I was hating on the price point at first, and then I played it, I'm like, oh, shit, no, that's, oh, dude, <laughs> they I kind mean, of earned Nintendo, it. <laughs> Nintendo By the way, standard is charging 60 bucks for less substantive HD. Oh, yeah, I know. Games. That's, wanna, and that's what I was thinking it would be, but then yeah, I gave I think it a shot. It was, uh, was okay. This point in the game, by the way, that when I was using my scanner and it was like, look, you can you can loot yeah. every. Oh, I was no. like, fuck <laughs> off! I'm so tired of <laughs> looting <laughs> everything. <laughs> the existence of looting and the culture around it has been disastrous. For it's the been game. horrible, <laughs> especially especially with this one. You have to hold it there and wait until it's finished. Yeah, just pick it. Why play the gives it all of you? Just go. There. I got like. Uh, to, to Metal's point, I played the game's actual gameplay for like 10 minutes. I was already tired of looting. <laughs> <laughs> there are rooms so where I'm not places. I'm not exaggerating. Like, there are rooms where there's like 50 points of loot. And it's yeah, like, like 50 drawers uh, and cabinets and everything. It's like, why? Yeah. Why? Well, you move over all of them and then you do the scanner again. It's like, oh, yeah, you're not still... finished. Oh, you did more. get all of it. Yeah, just more. Yeah. And that's, and that's, that's part of the, of that's part of the problem. Them. Is that the, the each individual item is its own item inside of each individual drawer, which is triggered by your F key. So you have to physically open up the drawer with your magnetism and loot every individual item instead of looting an entire an entire like this reminds me a lot of like Fallout 3, Fallout New Vegas, where you have a whole filing cabinet. In that game, the filing cabinet would be one item, one object. So you'd loot that one object and you're done. But in here you have like nine drawers. And even hovering Dude. over that drawer, it takes sometimes like a couple seconds to get everything out of that damn cabinet. I half expected to get a vortex upgrade where you just use, oh, expend yeah, a bit of energy yeah, and it yeah. just draws everything in a vicinity. Oh, they need to do, they need to do the ratchet and clank upgrade where all of the bolts, like you just get more range and all the bolts come yeah. to you. Yeah. Ratchet yeah. and clank well, in, in Fallout, though, in Fallout, didn't it open a, a menu? Yeah, like, that was yes. kind of it. Yeah, a menu. Uh, that yeah. was also kind of uh, too many menus. Yeah, well, I, I like the, the, the effect of the magnetism and everything in this game. It just, it's so yeah, tedious like after a while. Too. Fallout was yeah. also, Fallout had a lot of gameplay geared around your inventory management and like yeah. your encumbrance and things like that. Whereas this game doesn't really, it, it you have inventory slots, but for the most part, you want to loot everything anyways, because you're, you're uh, getting mostly resources that don't really take up inventory slots regardless. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, not, but, yeah not to do it. Yeah. This game's I mean, inventory feels like okay. We played Resident Evil Four, and yeah, we like yeah. the fact that yeah. Leon's briefcase That's you can like king. rotate items around. Everyone is the king. Okay. Yeah. Well, and Leon's then, briefcase is the king. and mankind divided—they're basically the exact mm. same system. But and this game doesn't a, like. Yeah. It has a it has a quality of life feature which I really appreciate, but also kind of makes inventory trivial in that if you pick up an item and you don't have space for it, it immediately goes to your your storage. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Which makes good. it super convenient and doesn't slow you down. 
but at the same time, Which it also kind of means choice, like, right? Yeah, it's it, it all like this, you know. I could, yeah. I could pick this up, but it means I have to leave this behind. Like, it's not inventory management. You don't yeah. need to manage it really. It creates another problem mm -hmm. by making because you honestly just have way too much, way too much stuff to pick up in stuff. the game. That's that's, that's yeah, just and there's no it. reason not to pick it up. It's kind of like yeah. a, it's kind of this perfect combination of just making it tedious. Um, I was gonna ask Dev out of curiosity, do you see yourself playing uh, this game ever again? Um, Answer maybe honestly. modded. I, I, I like you, modern games. I'm fascinated with Dev, Dev's perspective on this, liking this game <laughs> a lot. Well, I've so asked I, everybody I like... your questions, but I want to know from him. Because the thing is, if you were to say I never really want to play it again, I'd be like, curious, it's scored that high when it's got such a like. <laughs> so yeah. for me, I usually wait a few years for, before I play a game again. And also when I play it a second time, I'll do it drastically differently. So a different build or I'll mod the game or something. I would mod this game and play it again. If there like if there was like a fan community or something, you know, two years down the road. Yeah, I mean, I that makes some it. sense. And by the way, this is the first time we've had Dev for gaming EFAP. We usually have you for. Uh, oh wait, is it? We usually have you for the politics ones, slightly politics oh, yeah. ones. Luckily, this game about communism. <laughs> Making fun of them. <laughs> this, this game is totally fun. divorced from politics. By the way. <laughs> <laughs> It's um, only about crispy critters. Fuck, yeah. no, I said it too. I think if you ask the devs what the game was saying about its subject matter, they'd just sort of look at you like, what do you mean? What? Like they wouldn't really understand the question. <laughs> what What do you mean? What, what, do you so, mean? what, what is do subject mean? matter? We have story. Some, some, is some listen what guys. matter is subject? Robot on hand give you story. What do you want? <laughs> have you not seen Robot <laughs> Bellow? Love tell you story. So someone in the chat said, the question is, do we support this developer for putting in an effort and falling short? It's not like this is Saints Row. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. You know, a, lot, a, lot of a lot of these shitty games coming out are because the developers are just cutting corners. They don't care. They're just money grubbing. They're, they're being crunched. You know, so the company sucks. Or there's like a political bias because like, you've seen that happen sometimes where just the developers themselves are just shitty people. This none of that is happening here. This seems to be a uh, like uh, th these are all like novice mistakes. You know? Yeah, these it's are mistakes the that I believe are made yeah. sincerely from a, a team that are like, oh shit, I didn't mean for that to happen. I, uh, yeah. and that work their asses off on the game overall. It, it feels oh, like yeah, a, like, yeah. like I said, a shit ton of man hours went into this thing. Well, it's, it's uh, sort of all been uh, made pretty clear, but an Atomic Heart two with the lessons learned from this game could end up being pretty solid. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, especially yeah. because yeah. hey, make it an '80s version, and you have a 30 year gap between the two games, essentially. Wait, especially someone just said it didn't you... fall short if Moller is covering it. What? What? Well, what is that? Was, Wait, well, we're Man covering the, the MCU, my dude. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we covered it. <laughs> we cover a lot of stuff. I wanted to point out, like, that is probably the best rendered beard I've ever seen in a, in a video game. Did you guys notice that too? With like each individual whisker, it it's crazy yeah, it's how good. well how when, how well I rendered that, know her. that beard is. Yeah, like I was, haven't yeah, seen right. like yeah. hair rendered that well since Star Fox Adventures, man. Like Fox's fur uh, in that game. Yeah, Fox's fur. We got you. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. Fair. We agree. What do you what do you, what do you, what do you, what do you mean? But, no, we but, agree. Yeah, Someone's I having an aneurysm that. and I don't even oh. care. <laughs> Just Star Fox Zelda. Oh, dude, this part of the game was funny as fuck because she said, like, let me open the elevator. Then she started Just talking. Dead, yeah, right? And I was like, yeah. stop! Just open it! <laughs> start, wanna, start tapping wanna, the space bar to make her shut up. <laughs> I open wanna leave! Door. Open, open it! Right Look, there. she's still talking. Watching you start to, like, rattle around like a rat in a cage <laughs> at the end of the yeah. like, with the cutscenes. <laughs> that's so <laughs> funny. I mean, the you, thing is, like, my... even harder on the dialogue than I did. Like, oh, I was dying. Like, yeah, people, I'm, I'm not even listening to the other. I'm just gonna like open the door. Open you know when people door. complain when like Freya is talking to Atreus and Kratos as you walk to her house in the first game, which lasts like 50, 20, 30 seconds, something like that. It's like at least you're doing something and you're seeing something and something. That... She is just staring at a fucking wall, like talking. And you're just <laughs> like, I beg you to spare me. And look how long it was. I skipped a shit ton of it. I implore you. You implore me. <laughs> uh, nobody so else. My, my, uh, my editor's in the chat, and he he just said, "Dev says that Mario Sunshine still has the best water effects." Well, it's uh, still pretty good. That, uh, <laughs> like, for game a game that came out in two thousand two, yes. <laughs> for a game that came out in two thousand two, the water effects are like yeah, they are really, really good. especially if you really good. if you play it with like boosted resolution on uh, emulator, like that game Sunburn. does look pretty gorgeous. That's yeah. Have yeah, you tried that's the sunburn well, mod? 
Yeah, there, there are games that came out in like 2016, 2018 with worse water. So, no, I, I still think that game holds up. Absolutely. <laughs> we're, we're, I mean, none none of us really argue. Right, right. I'm, I'm arguing, I'm arguing with my time. editor. I, I, okay, I can go down the <laughs> oh, hall and yell at him, but I'm arguing with him on the stream. I mean, what, what, wait, so what is this perspective that like it doesn't look that like for a game from 2002? Mm -hmm. The water hey, effects yeah, are really good. good. Well, we already know it's good because the fish will move away from you when you get close to them, and that was something that, that <laughs> the only Call of Duty yeah, thought they dude, cracked dude, in what dude, 2018 was when. Dude, that was well, like, <laughs> that was 2013. That was dude. Call of Duty Ghosts. That's 10 years old, nearly. <laughs> oh my god! PlayStation 4 and Xbox We're getting One. Getting old, everyone. Old. Getting old. It's been nearly uh, 10 yeah. years. It's been almost 10 years. Those guys, fish are dead the now. Xbox One reveal. Yes, most of those fish are dead. Those fish are Man. those fish are dead. It's like all the critters from Homeward Bound. They're fucking dead, guys. I'm now yeah. just thinking about how many GameCube games have aged incredibly well visually. Because Metroid Prime Original still looks really good, mm -hmm. and that game came yeah. out in 2002. Lots, lots. Super Smash Bros. Really really good. Good. Resident Evil 4. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, that game has aged pretty well for a game. I don't, yeah, I think Resident Evil visually like is. Oh, visually, I'm talking. Visually, I, is, is, really? I don't, I don't think know. So. Yeah, I think visually it looks. Quite I think. Good. I think if you. I think if you. If you remind yourself to look at anything that isn't Leon. Uh, Leon. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, yeah. You, Leon, that generation, Leon. I don't think there was a lot of great face animation and and things like that but i i mean most Not of that yet. game you're kind of looking at well, the back of leon's the, head and mario's that... performance in super mario sunshine was pretty riveting like when flood was like have i been of assistance and then yeah, he's there true. and then of course bowser's brilliant fucking hell <laughs> mario. Mario I I, 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 in a month <laughs> well mario, i mean that, that's, that's actually you ruined our family vacation <laughs> <laughs> that brings up kind of an interesting thing about facial animations on l more cartoon style characters because it's just that's um, actually that's been around for, well because yeah because it's been around for quite a lot longer in video games like even on thinking of playstation one crash bandicoot had like facial expressions where i think it's just, every um, single uh, like metal gear solid snake is just a you know it's a texture not even a texture it's a bunch of polygons with a bit yeah. of Patching think, that uh, like, kind of resemble a face. If you compare like the best of these general, I think it's just with cartoon characters, you just have less of a. a... Yeah. People, there's a way that pe real people look that cartoon characters don't necessarily look that way that mm -hmm. can like convey those emotions, especially if you're going for a hyper cartoony like Looney Tunes style. It's just uh, easier effect to achieve than trying to like make a convincing looking person compared to a convincing looking orange bandicoot. Yeah, absolutely. I, I just think it's funny that I was thinking, yeah, there wasn't a lot of facial animation back then. I was like, oh, wait, no, it's just it's uh, more tied to the art style than the tech, I guess. Well, Crash up to a point. Crazy emotions. He's yeah, I know. Like, and that, that's the thing. I corrected myself. I was like, oh, wait, no, <laughs> that's, that's right. Oh, Rags, any notes? Let's see. Um, uh, da, 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 let's see your story. That was an ending. Both endings sucked. I like this tool. <laughs> Um, when you're in the, the, uh, I, I don't know if you talked about it, the inventory and storage man management, I don't know why it zoomed in so much. Just give me, mm -hmm. like, lists. I think that would have been better. Um, also when you mouse over things in the inventory and the storage, it doesn't tell oh, you what they are. Oh my god, you just reminded me. When you move no, an not. item from your own inventory over to storage and it resets where you were looking in your own inventory. Oh yeah, I, I oh, just that it earlier. refreshes it. Yeah. Oh yeah, my god, that was that was the kind of thing that makes me scream when it does too much. Oh, it's actually, also, it's actually like better if you want to move stuff from your inventory to the storage, just go out of the storage, go to your normal inventory without the storage. And you just hit the middle mouse button of everything you want to put into the storage because then it doesn't reset. It's really weird. It's a oh, weird that's, bug. That's not annoying at all. Yeah. I also noticed when I was tabbing between the map and the uh, the inventory, like it would reset the mouse in the center of the screen. Mm. That was weird. A lot of little things. And big things. Yeah, and middle things. Yeah, because with Rags, <laughs> Rags mentioning the not being able to actually, when you hover over it in the storage, it's like... I can't, I can't even like check to see what each thing is. Like when I'm in the invent, you know, the inventory screen when I'm exchanging it. That's such a weird one. Do anything else? Yeah, just um, it needs to be where you have two lists. One button transitions it from one or the other, and as you move it, it just has the icon and then X, however many of those things you have. Yeah. Especially if there doesn't seem to be a limit on how much stuff you can store. Yeah. Or, store or, just or there's. I can Storage believe limited. your inventory is limited. I can believe when developing that a lot of these things might not 
be quite as easy to definitively figure out compared to when you're playing, where you can really feel and be involved in it. And then that's why everyone gets to the point of being like, wasn't this playtested then? And it's like, well, yeah, it's just that I guess some things... Maybe some of the playtesters just didn't complain about that sort of stuff. Well, because they pushed down the priority list and they just didn't have time to get to it. That could it be it too, because... yes. Yeah, maybe. They are, they are in a sense, strange oversights, but it's almost like I kind of understand why they happened. Yeah. But it, it, maybe I can understand why one of them would happen. But, like, when you put all of them together, it's like, how did you miss all of these basic things? Yeah, some of the things I, a lot of the things I run into this game were, were obvious, just like this hadn't been tested oh. or QA'd enough. But no custom waypoints. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. <laughs> That'd be... so annoying. Another Fucking complaint, hate games we have that Dead Space, that. too. Yeah. Even if it yeah. just puts a marker on the map. It's just one of those things where you think, oh, that's probably like one of the first things you write down when you have a map. It's like, oh, what do I want on my map? Oh, custom markers. Yes. Well, and especially if you're even trying to go for something like, or even if you want to say pseudo open world or like hub world, it's like, mm -hmm. it's not, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be a mess to have, to have a, a waypoint that you can put on yourself. Another weird thing is like no indoor maps whatsoever. Like you don't get oh access god to the map that for about right. four yeah hours. that would have been really that, handy. that, that to me really felt really like weird. a they decided nah we're just not putting the time in for that sorry and it's like really yeah and I would have preferred they show us the fucking world map at least and said you're currently in a facility you're here yeah yeah, yeah. Like, you're not in this but instead they're way. just like nah maps not working I don't know fuck no, you <laughs> <It's> <laughs> okay. I had a had a bug where that just kept being offline even though I was in the overworld already again. Just reminded me of that. Had to restart the game. Yeah, there's a lot of just odd odd little things like that. Like I'm I'm almost thinking that the publisher was like, hey, you guys have been in development for a while. You announced this game, you know, four years ago. You kind of have to release it by this time or we're gonna drop your drop you as a developer. So I'm thinking that they're like, okay, well we were gonna develop a whole uh hacking and stealth upgrade system but just like Bioshock and other games like that we don't have any time so that, that gets scrapped oh we were gonna do maps and stuff like that for indoor areas but we got we have a hard deadline so let's just that we were gonna do like three three months of QA but instead we're gonna do like three weeks and <laughs> hopefully it's good that's kind of what I, it feels like it looks like it was a game that was chopped off especially with the ending like that there wasn't really an ending for the most part, it kind of felt like a, a prologue to the real third act of the game. So I, it feels like there was something like that in development because what they what was fleshed out was, uh, uh, you, know, you know, varied in quality, but some <clears throat> was was obviously like like was said previously. It seems like a very genuine and very authentic, uh, or or uh, what was the word used? Where they, they felt like they were they were really had their heart and soul in the game. They just were misguided. Sure, yeah, and yeah. I would even go as far as saying, I'd say. there's clearly parts that I would happily describe as half-baked, but I would also probably roll out um, Burnt uh, for, for this, compared to a lot of other things, like yeah. Overcooked, a lot of stuff is. Yeah. Mm. Given it feels that's like a game classic game new friendships. creator syndrome, where you're trying to get all of the ideas that you had into yeah. the same project, where they, they're, it's never going to happen, they don't all go in the same project. Yeah, and there was also a little bit of a letdown too, because it kind of reminded me of, uh, hopefully somebody backs me up, a uh, Metal Gear Solid Five, where you have this crazy, crazy intro, and then you're stuck in the desert yeah. for like 20 hours. Yeah, you just ride around <laughs> in the desert for a while. I mean, they, it, and this you, kinda, they tease I you. think I could probably make a case for either of those things being focused on making for a better game, because honestly, the being trapped in the desert and Metal Gear didn't really bother me, because I thought that uh, as an open world game, it, it, it was pretty neat as a, as a military game where you can sort of uh, approach objectives in a, in a variety of different ways, be it stealthy or just calling in airstrikes yeah. on the base that you're supposed to deal with. But I think the thing is, it being a Metal Gear Solid game, it's like, well, it's supposed to be just like a movie, right? Where I can like I can sit down and see a really tight action movie type story that I can play over the course of a weekend and then it's done. And I think uh, having that, if, it's almost like if they didn't do that two hour or hour and a half, whatever it is, intro, people probably would have been less disappointed by that also, if, if from the get go. Metal Gear game. If it wasn't a Metal Gear Solid <laughs> yeah, game, that game yeah, would have gone over true. a lot better because <laughs> yeah. I can say when I played it, I was like a, on theme for being in the desert, I was like a dehydrated man out in the desert just desperate <laughs> for a crumb of story. <laughs> <laughs> and then I got the story and I was like, say a fuck? single fucking line, please. 
<laughs> so I, I it, it's past 7 p.m. I've got to take off. It's time for me to go. Is there anything you know what? else you wanted to say about the game before you go? Bedtime. Yes, Bedtime. yes. I'm going to give you the dev radio from the future, okay? Oh, <laughs> so no. here's, here, here's what's going to happen, all right? Uh, this will probably be, like, somewhat of a, of a success because, I mean, on social media, there was, like, that political aspect to it because someone talked about how you shouldn't buy this game to support the Russian government and everything's yeah, a cultural war now. No. Everything is a cultural war nowadays, so, like, people seem... Also, this game, despite all of its flaws, is uh, a breath of fresh air among, like, a stagnant industry, so, okay... Flawed game, still okay. Developer probably deserves a second chance because this is their first game, and all things considered, it's pretty good for a first game. So here's going to happen, okay? In, like, three years, we're going to see Atomic Hearts 2, and it's going to be a much better game. And then in another couple of years after that, we're going to see Atomic Hearts 3, and it's going to be slightly worse than Atomic Hearts 2, but still pretty good. <laughs> and, in ten, and then in ten years from now, we're going to see... Atomic Hearts remastered using all the improvements from Atomic Hearts 2, and this game is finally going to be a good game. Why are you saying Atomic Hearts? Yeah, yeah. I was, I was going to say... You're triggering me. He laid out the Dead Space arc. <laughs> exactly, yeah. So um. I think that's what's going to happen. All right? Just just pin this as my prediction. Come back in 10 years and see if see if I'm right, okay? If we're still alive. All right. Maybe, it, maybe it'll follow the, uh, the alien type of title... Uh, format where it's like alien aliens and then alien three so it'll be but in this, heart, that means the alien is hearts. the goopy goofy one that they improve on and everyone will hate you oh, for shit, playing right <laughs> yeah rude. rude um well dev before you go do you want to talk about what you're doing where you're at and where people can find you well my channel is shirt fat otaku i do uh politics stuff i also do gaming stuff uh my editor dave in the in the chat he's been chirping all night and he um he and i do game streams when you saw that uh you know that really fat guy sitting on the couch that was me during during that clip of the uh, the film reel edits uh, they say the film reel portly is was the me. class way to do it portly or jolly i say hey, jolly hey listen i used to be much fatter all right now i'm slowly getting there it'll just take time Nice. I used to be like I used to be almost boogie sized at one point, man. No. Boogie? Really Why do you say oh, boogie? <laughs> boogie? What you is he like? Rex, he's not the boogie. only person that says boogie. I don't know how anyone got to the point of saying boogie. I, I say boogie. That's a, that's his a name is boogie. boogie. Not even boogie. Yes. Boogie doesn't. Damn it! <laughs> oh, boogie no. doesn't. Damn it! <laughs> do you say boogie man? Boogie nights. That's what it's from. Yeah. Well, yeah, anyway, I I was at one point was nearly as fat as him. And I'm much thinner than than I was, so you know I'm slowly getting there. But that clip that's so. that's from our, our gaming show. Me and me and Dave and some of our friends sit on a couch and play games. And also I do politics stuff too. So oh, that's what before, I do. Dev, before Short you go, Short Otaku, make sure you go there. What happened to that? Ball? Yes. Uh, so uh, Dev, just just <laughs> if you're still in the thing, check this out. It's funny as fuck. Okay. So I'm yeah, holding this music. candle. I got it from one of the test facilities, and I was so happy about this because yeah. I was like, I can use this yeah. as a benefit in other test facilities. And I was like. And then someone was like, yeah, but to get there, you need a car. And it's like, you can't put this in the trunk or anything. And I was like, what if I put it on the car, and then this happens? Let's see. All right. There it is. That sturdy Soviet automobile. <laughs> <laughs> it just sinks it into up. it? Just really gobbled what I meant right up. When I oh, I'm still on a car! This is what Did happened when you put or? object on oh, the car. <laughs> Thank you for candle. <laughs> Thank you for candle. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, look, look, there it is. Oh, it was <laughs> <delicious>. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Stuff like that. Those things are unstable. As in, like, you, you can't so, put them in your backpack because they're like unstable. And then, you know, you can just roll them around on the floor. Yeah. Around. Are, are there actually uses for those outside of their facilities? Like, are there other facilities that use them? Uh, there's something similar, but they're different ones. Uh, that you oh, okay. have to use. Yeah, it's also. So I, I'm thinking old. it might be like like a, a Zelda one situation where you can use different keys in different dungeons. Right. You just right. bring one of these over. That'd have been kind of ah. cool, actually. Well, or yeah. or if it had like a, a heat effect, so you could like throw it at guys and cause damage. Right out. I doubt that works. Maybe somewhere hidden on the map, there's just like this one door in the middle of the wilderness that just needs an apple <laughs> for whatever reason. I call it an apple because I just, it's just, it's just, I got Assassin's Creed brain. And, yeah, and then you put it in that. there and it just like yeah, is a secret or something. You have to carry it there. Who knows? Damn apples. It'll be interesting to see as the days go on, the secrets and things, if they're out there, people discovering them and sort of bringing them to light, things of that nature. I wonder if there's any really cool ones. Dude, what if they find like a, 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 
a Putin worshiping room. <laughs> like two weeks from now, when it comes out, and everyone's like, "Oh fuck!" Not. <laughs> All right, Dad. I'm gonna take off though. I'll see you guys later. Thanks for joining hey, us. Dude. Links in description. Toodle pip. Cheerio. Yep. See ya. Bye bye. Bye bye. Um, <laughs> dingus. I'm with that. That probably prompts just well any ending or additional notes for uh, Atomic Heart. Did we thoroughly uh, go over how horny this game is? I mean, uh, yeah. It isn't really, but it sort of is in this, this juvenile way where it pops up now and then. I was going to yeah, say, like, it's not like overall horny, it's just selectively horny. No. It's, yeah. blue ball, it's just blue balling you. It gives you the fridge as being horny, but not the 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 robots of the boobs, so that's kind of there's, bullshit. There's the fridge, there's like a lot of like <laughs> weird, I mean, maybe maybe it's just my my head, but like the, the locks look very questionable. There's a lot of like pistons. You notice like a lot of like penile uh, shaped pistons yeah. and stuff just like, pumping some, everywhere. Uh, a lot of motif. <laughs> there is a and lot then, of imagery in that regard. Yeah. I mean, yeah, those, there's like a lot of like vagina little, doors. Yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. The, the, the doors, vagina the doors, the vagina unique. locks. Aren't all and doors then, really? And then, if you did you notice like all the little uh, the little static models just like in weird kind of suggested poses all over yeah, the yeah. all over the maps? <laughs> it's like just very strange. What does it mean? <laughs> I don't, know. I don't know. It's just <laughs> bizarre. Um. Oh, one thing just came out. So, um, one of the things that this game maybe I just didn't see it or I, I wasn't watching correctly or whatever. One of the things that I really liked about the USSR, and this isn't a very long list, but they had a great. A lot of their like propaganda art was really cool. Oh yeah. You have people with hammers and workers and people in the fields and stuff and you know every you know workers unite and we we're all in this together and a lot of that art was really really cool. Um, so, you know, aesthetically speaking, and I don't recall like ever really seeing any of that in this game. Well, there's tons of it, uh, and, and that's actually brings me a uh, good point. A lot of that I did appreciate that they kept it all in Russian, and that if you hovered your mouse over the Russian uh, propaganda yeah, posters and stuff like that, you get a translation. Except for like the last half of the game, and they forgot to do it. Oh, <laughs> did you okay. notice that? Oh, <laughs> oh, really? Speaking yeah, of like, like, stop doing it by then. <laughs> Yeah, um, probably some one it. guy who's doing it, and every update that comes out adds a bunch more. He's like, "I'm going, yeah. I'm doing as fast as I can." <laughs> and one I of did... the... oh, go ahead. Breaks. No, you. Finish. No, I was just gonna say, uh, in regards to the propaganda posters, I was worried because like somebody was like saying, "Oh, this is Russian propaganda. This is communist propaganda," and I'm like, oh, "Okay, well, it is said in Russia, but I wouldn't say that Wolfenstein is Nazi propaganda because you're obviously like, anti-Nazi." Like <laughs> Our country's great. Do good. Work hard. It's like stuff yeah. like that. All yeah, and, and it, some of the questionable <clears> stuff, I'm like, okay, I'm interested because they give us a, a, a translation, but I brought it under, it, there's this cool app if you use uh, Android phones called uh, Google Translate where you can actually point your yeah, phone camera yeah. at something. It'll automatically translate whatever it looks at, which is super cool. So I actually translated a lot of these, uh, you know, very rough kind of Google Translate kind of things, right? And uh, a lot of it was pretty straightforward. It's like, yeah, down with the parasite make sure your fe your fellow man is doing work or whatever it did have some sort of anti-capitalist anti-us sentiment stuff which i mean yeah, it's fitting for the it's yeah, very fitting for the i want, the I want this communist well, like, role yeah it'll it, it yeah, be weird to have 95 percent of the game is spent averting a horrific disaster within this yeah system mm -hmm. As if it's like, as if we're strolling through this wonderful world where everything is amazing <laughs> it's like no <laughs> Yeah, I, I really don't think that this game is pro-robots or pro-USSR. Uh, I really don't get that vibe. No. It's going to be pro-anybody, really. No. Yeah. It basically is like everything sucks the game. Which is <laughs> everything like, fine. Sucks. I think it's really played <laughs> out. Oh, actually, communism sucks. Like, yeah, we know it sucks. But from their perspective, we don't need that. You know, no, it, yeah. like I said. If we had a super cool commie LARP and it was that the whole game, that would be like, oh, this is new. This is refreshing. Yeah. That'd be fun. Yes. Yeah, um, yeah. I was going to. Oh yeah, the um, I like how all, all the signs and everything are in uh, are Cyrillic, of course. But the voices often took it out for me. Granny yeah. Zena being super like <laughs> British. The one random. Oh my boy, I am totally <laughs> Russian. It's just, in general, it's just weird that they didn't even give the the English yeah, voice actor like a Russian accent or an yeah, it's it's Assassin's so Creed American. Unity problem, man. I'm telling he you, it's so absolutely. American. <laughs> um, 
I mean, I there was, was take like all kinds of accents in yeah. in with the with the corpses and stuff. There were like I think it was like a Boston accent at some point, some Scottish people. This is everything. Yeah. It's like, what, oh, yeah, is, like, like what British... is going on? <laughs> yeah, they, they say that there's one voice for all of the uh, people, the thought kind of modules on the dead people. But then I heard like Scottish voices, yeah, uh, well, English voices, like... Northerners. You know yeah, it was weird. You know what's kind of funny is actually the. Way. The last game I remember being bothered by this was also Focus Interactive. It was Plague Tale Requiem, which is the second Plague Tale game. It yeah. takes place in 14th century France, and in the first one, <laughs> all of the characters kind French of do French accents, yeah. and they, they just don't even try in Requiem. They, it, it's the same voice actress, too, for Amicia, and she wow. just sounds British now, and it's like, what? Why? The British yeah. are superior? Yeah. I don't know, yeah. But, uh, and then, yeah. I, then this got me to think... Right, I was thinking while I was watching this game, like all the voices and the accent, they're taking me out of the Russian vibe. Yeah, yeah, thinking, yeah definitely. Thinking, how come this didn't happen with Chernobyl? What was I, it? It did for me a little. It was kind of one, one of my only complaints at Chernobyl. Well, don't like, they have the accents in Chernobyl with some of the characters? Yeah, some uh, of them. I think I've, it's I've, characters I've that are actually Russian, 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 like the actors. I mean, right. I think got enough of them to keep you in it, and maybe it's because I don't know the writing was really good, and like it was very. Yeah, serious. it could be that simple. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, I think it is. Like, well, I, dude, I, dude, I was like, like I said, I wish had Russian accents, but it's really probably couldn't. If you had had get... some American mercenaries sent over as representative for being sold these robots, and then he's the one we followed, that could have worked really well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so. I do well, have many ideas. Has anyone could... seen the the Jensen Ackles commercial for this? I haven't seen it, but I know about it. Yeah. It, it's, it's pretty know. good. It, it, it's fun, but it really seems like they're trying to... I don't know if it's the marketing company that just ha took a different direction with the commercial, or if it's what they intended to be the vibe, but it's it's got a real Evil Dead kind of tone to it. Like, he's sort of an Ash-type character, or I'm just going to destroy some robots, you know, and like, like has, a, has a catchphrase. So I, I think that it... Maybe they hired an American guy and just told him to sound American to get him to sound kind of more like an Ash type character. I mean, it's a possibility. I mean, this can sell to people who don't really give a shit. They'll just be like, I, I like my guy. Uh, do you, did any of you see that clip that was spreading on Twitter of a girl playing this game? He kills a robot and says, "Take that, gearhead!" And she pauses and then hits quit and says, "I'm not playing anymore. This game, I'm done." Oh, well, <laughs> that seems excessive, but that is a it's funny, funny though. That's that funny. funny. Well, yeah, well, while we're we're looking at this gun, did anyone else run into the weird the weird oddity of uh, um, as all oddities are? Um, this gun has an ADS mode that disappears when you get the uh, secondary yeah, fire. Yeah. yeah, isn't that freaking weird? <laughs> that yeah, so strange. Mel, you brought this up about five hours ago, right? <laughs> Yeah, uh, dude, yeah, it's just sorry. you can clearly well, still I... use the iron sights. It's not obstructed by the by the add-on, and it, I think the only reason that is is because they have the secondary fire yeah. bound together with aiming. Why wouldn't they just make middle mouse buttons second? Oh well, then not all mouses have a middle mouse buttons. It's probably controller centric, but yeah, it's so strange. Like you, uh, oh so yeah, they're... oh no, there's a, it's actually a recurring problem. There's that where you lose the ADS when you when you get the EMP upgrade. Then there's also another thing that I really wish I could turn off. Some of the upgrades in your uh, your skill trees, I do not like. For example, any upgrades that grant you extended uh, power usage at the cost of your own health. Right. I don't like that at all. Yeah. I almost killed myself multiple times when I was using <laughs> the telekinesis, and I'm like, wow, I could use this for quiet. Why oh. is my health going down? <laughs> so you can, this is in my playthrough. When I'm looking at the upgrades, I'm like, oh, Magic. bye, bye, bye. When it says, yep. um, you know, the second you run out of energy, you'll start drawing your health. I was like, I am never buying that. No. Fuck that. <laughs> I was like, that <laughs> sounds like a horrible you idea. You have to. You have to in a couple instances, though. Yeah. But you have to buy it if you want the ex the next upgrade. I never bought it. Yeah. Oh, that's okay. the thing like yeah. that's something that is one of those like that's a really cool thing that it should be optional absolutely to Ta toggle i need to taggle that's yeah. not yeah, yeah that's like crazy. and health to keep my powers going it's like that could really come into a pinch and if yeah. you use it well that could be super like worthwhile but it's not something you want to have all the time i know so, i'm the kind of player that would kill themselves with that definitely yeah. <laughs> i nearly did a couple of times because i almost didn't register i'm like oh okay yeah. but like it'll let me know or something when that's yeah. happening it's like no it just eats into your fucking health and i'm another, like why am i the only dead oh <laughs> another yeah. weird thing they they do it's just a quality of life thing they should implement uh 
you have your weapon, basic, basic weapon from uh, no upgrades. But when you d put an upgrade on it, you can't just get rid of it. You have oh, to dismantle yeah. the whole weapon and rebuild it, which doesn't matter in terms of resources, but it's just a time, I... time waster. Yeah, that's how the upgrades yeah. on vehicles work in Battlefield Five. Once you finish the whole tree, you can reassemble at will, but you have to do the whole tree. Right. Uh, which is yeah, like one I of those, did... uh, It's well, how well. Yeah. I got really least... did like. Oh, oh, God. Sorry, I didn't know you were. Right. That was it? Uh, I was just gonna say. <laughs> sorry, I, it, there's a little delay. I apologize for that. Um, I was just saying. I think you're like sorry. That... It's like three times in four seconds. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh. I do like the fact that no resources are wasted. Like mm -hmm. you could reapply your points all all over, and you don't get, lose any yeah. resources. I really like Infinite that aspect. Infinite respecking, encouraged yeah, to was, try new things, new attachments, and builds yeah. and stuff. There are just the, yeah. there are those instances. I think Metal was mentioning where you want to probably try something else, but let's say you have a rare a couple of rare resources in this module. I wish you could un you could like break down that module and use those resources to build the other module. You can't. Yeah. You only get refunded once you buy the other module. So that that aspect could be improved a little bit, but not the end of the world, but still a little annoying. Um, let's see. Yeah, I was just sitting here thinking about, mm -hmm. man, what if you were just this crazy gung-ho American guy stuck in this communist hellhole and everyone you meet is like, no, communism is great. And you're the only person in the game going, nah, this is fucking crazy. And I hate robots. And he's this blue blooded American. I would love, <laughs> yeah, just all kinds of references and jokes that relate hey, to yeah. capitalism versus communism that are like memed, you know, to the extreme levels. Yeah. yeah each I, side I, is like a cartoon. Real, real you know? short because it's on the screen right now. So you, you actually got the, the ball in here, the extra one, right? That's, oh yeah. This is, this is me fucking around one. with my extra candle. So, yeah. So the interesting thing is, I tried here to grab one of the ones that you put into the door because the door opens pretty slowly, and you can totally just grab one from the door. You as can, well. yeah. Have, uh, you could have just gotten a second one. I the only reason metal, I, I have met three bonus candles by the end of this dungeon. Oh, okay, well there you go. We had the same <laughs> idea, but you actually pull through. <laughs> it was a uh, fun to fuck with, but yeah. Um, on on what Rags was just saying, right? Like if you had a guy who's helping you out or something and maybe your character doesn't have a gun and he's and you're like you know what are you using and then he goes oh this is mine and then names the gun and he says yeah um my gun's been pretty handy throughout this whole thing and then you grab it and say our gun comrade like the, the, the uh, jokes <laughs> like that would be fun if he, especially if he was a capitalist yeah. you have yeah, like a super communist and a super capitalist and they have to like team up throughout the game yeah. and they poke rod at each other but ultimately yeah. they do be friends and then, uh, like, you have a communist buddy in this world, and he's all you've got, and then maybe he dies at some point, and that motivates you to, you know, something like that. He said, at the end, they say the best economic system was the friends we made along the way. That's true. <laughs> well, I guess you could have it be if you had the American guy come in, and it's like, here's a glove, comrade, or something, and then it's a communist glove versus a capitalist protagonist. <laughs> you could, there's so many great jokes you can make off of that. Oh, this, yeah. It, that as long as the main character was, like, good. if the main character was, like, authentically uh, pro-communism uh, and thought the communists were great, he'd be like, ha, that guy said that capitalism was, was the, great and much better. And now he's um, in a gulag. What an idiot. Something like that. Like and Jokes like that would be It's Bender really in the greeting card funny. in Futurama. <laughs> Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It's that. Just, Just do that. On your comrade. Uh, yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> there, oh, yeah, like I, it only the capitalist is only satisfied for as long as he can benefit. It's the second it becomes like it costs him, he's like, "Nah, fuck this." <laughs> like, in the workers' <laughs> paradise, there will be no liquor, only what synthetic fuels. No liquor. <laughs> no liquor. It. it had the most adorable <laughs> voice <laughs> too. Comrade. Yeah, well, yeah, because when he rips it up, it's like, "No, no." <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> This stream was all culminating Aww. into a recommendation to watch Futurama. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> and play Sonic 06. Well, uh, <laughs> I suppose so. Um, no, honestly, uh, P3 wouldn't be too out of place with the Sonic games. He'd be like, where's those damn Chaos Emeralds? Where are those those he is kind of Shadow <laughs> the Hedgehog. He is, he is a bit like that. Dude, as soon as he went... <laughs> I was like, yep, that's, that's Shadow. Yeah. <laughs> Sonic is full of Chris yeah. 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 Critters. Why, do you say Why are you versus... okay, here too? Crispy critters. Come on, crispy critter it up. 
There's not, um, I don't know when it happens, but there's a part when I was platforming, I don't know if you came across it, Rags, when you were watching, but me, um, I looked down across the edge for like a big platforming area, and I was like, there's a platform down there, and I was like, oh, I better check it, see what's down there. Jumped down, and it killed me, and it just said like, yeah, <laughs> that's, a, that's a dead zone. It's just like, uh... okay. <laughs> oh, well, I mean, you... It's like clearly a platform, but okay. You know, you just bring me back, you know, you could have just say, do that in the real world, honestly, game. I mean, it's not a big deal. So... Fall off the ledge. Right back. You just don't have the ledge there, just have a pit. That's all you have to do. <laughs> Fucking hate that shit in games. Just give me something that looks very unappealing to jump onto. We'll put a big and fucking I fuck off side there that just says, you'll die if you touch the floor here, so don't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, with sad face. The floor is actually lava. The floor is lava, yeah. Or maybe just don't have a floor. I don't know how about that. Don't have a platform there. Yeah. It's more of a sonic line than a shadow line. Shadow's more... Mm. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely a Sonic line. Uh, I need to brush up like, on my uh, Sonic and Shadow lore, I guess. Well, well so I remember the super do. cool thing with Shadow the Hedgehog is that he'll he'll use light swear words like crap and damn. Does he say goddamn or is that too Whoa. much for Shadow? Whoa, oh, calm down. down. For well, I mean, you know, yeah, he doesn't he doesn't say goddamn. He's either does he? Damien. No, just he damn. Says, just damn. Damn it. But damn uh, it. my favorite thing is uh, somebody did a really good Shadow the Hedgehog. Uh, uh, in what is it? Where do you where do you pretend to be somebody else? Uh, Rule thirty four impersonation. Impersonation, yeah. And he, he took that cutscene. He's what like, "What is it?" Where you... <laughs> Rule thirty four. Okay, finally. I was like, but, "Did uh, no one catch that?" Just almost but, uh, creep past. It was like, "What?" But it, they took that cutscene. Like, was like, that delivery too deadpan? <laughs> and I don't do it justice. But he's like, "Where's those fucking chaos emeralds?" <laughs> 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 Which would make <laughs> the game point. better. Yeah. <laughs> nice cock. Kind of feels like this game was, was you know what would make this feel a lot more like the 50s is if he kind of stuck with that, you know, toned down, censored, leave it to beaver 1950s stuff. Like if it, it would make it, oh, you'd have to really balance that tone. But if oh, he well, really didn't ha swear like a sailor for 90% of the game and then say crispy critters, yeah. I think, make a lot I more think sense. there's an interesting oh, take that you robot here. Oh, dude, put in <laughs> put in Jimmy I, Cricket into any scenario is just going to be golden. <laughs> Jimmy Cricket. I, I think an interesting way that they could have done that, though, is if, if he was a, a World War Two veteran that was, say, fighting on yeah. like, uh, in the European front and just didn't like the Russians or, or like the Soviets ever. And but now it's like, OK, it's been 10 years, 15 years, whatever. And the Soviets are the superpower. They're the ones who emerged the the primary superpower post World War Two, and most people in America were pretty cool with communists. They're like, yeah, those communists, they're great. They care about each other. You know, they just want to work. It's great going over to Russia. They have cool technology. It's awesome. And he's just like, yeah, the Soviets, fuck them. And then he gets yeah. paired up with a communist glove. That'd be awesome. <laughs> you could have a lot of fun with that. <laughs> you just want to have kind of play it up. Yeah, play as Barney Fife. It's the fifties. He's been transported here. He's in way over his head. Things aren't looking good. You see this, by the <laughs> way, Mel. I'm just farming these candles. Oh, yeah. You, you did what I was thinking about, but was too lazy to try. <laughs> yeah, they, they really didn't play with the setting that uh, the year and the era that much. Like, uh, I remember just how much personality even just each vendor machine had in Bioshock, where it's like the, the gun machine was like Mexican themed, you know, borderline racist Mexican <laughs> machine. It's like, so and so, senor. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Carnival themed for the. Wait, wait. Why the did other you say shop? borderline Mexican? What do you mean by that? <laughs> I, I mean, oh, it's a borderline okay. racist, said, not Mexican. Borderline racist, racist Mexican machine. Did I say borderline? Was it Banditos? Was the <laughs> yeah, the Banditos. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, gringo, blah, 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 <laughs> that sort of thing. <laughs> and then it was the. Welcome yeah, to the circus of values. <laughs> yeah, for yeah. the. I yeah, love it. Yeah, I know. I want to go play Bioshock. <laughs> yeah, Bioshock. Bio Bioshock EFAP one. This is now Bioshock's stream. We've got to talk about Bioshock. Uh, just, yeah, deadline. It's a values clown, laughing clown. That's voiced by Ken Levine. He also did it. Oh, really? Oh, really? I didn't That's know. Cool. What a loser. Uh, what a clown. <laughs> hey. What a clown. Little clown boy. Professional clown. The right clown. kind of self clown, clown store. <laughs> Was that next to the memory store? I imagine it's can't right God, the memory store was something that was like actually written and put in a film. Isn't that yeah. incredible? Oh, it's better than dialogue. We know that. Uh, dialogue. Dialogue. dialogue is too difficult. Dialogue, dialogue is, is cringe. To each other? 
The visual medium. The movie game. Well, <laughs> well, the sad thing is, is that they failed on both fronts because they all they also mention the memory store with dialogue too. So they don't they don't even show. They tell and show badly. <laughs> <laughs> the memory the memory store, store is tell. The characters are telling each other things in the oh, conversation. Yeah. Oh. The most no, minimal show. amount of things happen before the memory store starts telling them stuff. God. They, they don't even really interact. Right, we are not they tangenting to Doctor it, Strange all... Multiverse uh, Madness, okay? Can we not oh. talk about Marvel? Oh, it's gonna get sad. Yeah. Okay, we I'm did that kidding. for too long already. Yeah. <laughs> we got yeah, a small reprieve. <laughs> yeah, let's talk about something else for a little bit. So, um... Paul Metal made me watch Quantumania. Aww. Get right, uh... Metal is cruel. <laughs> Right. Did, did anybody yeah, read through? Oh, go ahead. Oh, well, I was going to say, shall we have final thoughts on Atomic Heart? Um, I think I've said yeah. all the things I wanted. I don't know. I think that's probably enough for me, unless some random yeah. thought magically pops into my head. I'm pretty much um, satisfied that we've nailed it. I would say nailed it. Is... It's a game. It, oh, it is uh... a game. I had a lot of fun with the game, but it's man. When I started to realize how dumb the dialogue is going to be and how <laughs> shittily it's going to be said, I was just like, you know what, I'm just going to start to enjoy the camp of the game and just going to have some fun, which I did, but man. I was switching Hopefully... channels all the time between enjoying it with the game and enjoying it in spite of the game sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. This is such a weird... This like whole this... thing was a weird... I'm kind of glad I played it, I guess, because this is a very unique experience. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Runs up against I, I the limits in just about my... anyone's cringe receptors. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I, I stand by my original statement a perfect kind of Game Pass game. I, yeah. I like that I have a financial cost for playing it. I kind of like that I played it in some respects. You know, I don't I don't hate my time with it. I had some fun. Yeah. Well, all right. Uh, but I guess before, I think a lot of the gun sounds sound weak and anemic and kind of pathetic, like the AK in particular and some other guns. They just sound really meh when they're shooting. Uh, they don't have a lot of oomph, it seems to have. Um, so I, I would have, you know, maybe for the next game, work on, you know, the sound that the guns make when they shoot. Oh, and I quickly, I want to say I fucking despise any time this shows up in the game. These little glowy oh, yeah. things. Oh, no yeah. one FPS, yeah, that like, really, like, really get it out of really my face. Ugh, no one likes them. Stop putting them in your fucking video games. They are no so, one likes them. especially if they're this awkward and slow and cumbersome. So slow, yeah, it's unbelievably you, slow. You, I, you and I, I, try and break up the flow of your level, and you're making it just torturously, agonizingly slow. It's yeah. Like trying to find skips for it is like the cool thing to do, but then you realize you end up just making yourself take even longer throughout the whole level. It's just like <laughs> great. Yeah. So fucking boring. Don't do it. <laughs> Bad enough that I have to go through all of this. And like, if I miss one of those with your janky ass character not grabbing on, which by the way, I think happens here. Let me show you. Yeah. Also, if you're going to consider doing first person melee combat in your video game, consider you not block. doing it. You can do it well. Uh, oh, block. Theo, do you have the perspective <laughs> that I have, which is the first person combat is really hard to make yes. good. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. did, you, did you play uh, Condemned? Condemned I did not. Well. Shadow Warrior I'm 2, I like. The a only bit, game I've heard Vermintide. positive things about. I was going to say Vermintide. That's the only one yeah. I've heard consistently yeah, positive that things about too. the first person melee combat. All the rest. A Shadow I'm Warrior just... 2 is pretty similar. <sighs> I mean, it's not uh, even as far as the premise to do. You just have to have decent mechanics, Look. and you have. Oh yeah. He doesn't fucking grab onto it, and it makes me do the whole <laughs> thing again. <laughs> you <laughs> motherfucker! <laughs> like why? Another thing I I had happened. He just lands on top of the thing and stands yeah, on it. I would have liked that result compared to this. Nope. Nope. Nothing. It makes me think I did something wrong, and then I do the exact same thing again later, and it's like, no, nope, it works this time. Oh, yeah. uh, video games. Video game. Aren't and they you fun? Can, and then you go into possibly the most detailed vents you've ever seen in a game. Like, they're ridiculously detailed. This game just kind of bounces back and forth between being, wow, this is really artistic and interesting, to like, oh, man, I really wish they didn't do any of this. <laughs> it's, oh. it's, a, it's a definitely a mixed bag, but I kind of I kind of agree with you, Muller, on the premise of that. It's, it's a very flawed game, but a very interesting one. Like, I don't regret playing it at all. 
And I, I'm, I'm kind of to the point where after you play enough games, you kind of, it's hard to continue playing games that are just basically, oh yeah, this is just like that game that I played before. Well, yeah, we've, and, a lot of the major so mechanics I, we can't mention yeah, or yeah. analyze without mentioning a game that does it better. Yeah. yeah. But uh, this game is a weird enough mix of different games and, and story-wise and setting-wise, it's just a weird enough kind of different experience that I, I'd rather play a very, very weird and interesting five or six out of 10 than, than most eight or nine out of 10s nowadays, just because so many of them are so similar. <laughs> Get a little overrun on on the standard uh this game's gonna be the game of the year because it's exactly what people want kind of the game you know what kind of games you thinking about when you say that honestly you're gonna hate me for it but got got to work wrong on <laughs> i had a feeling i know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> we are I lucky to we are lucky to yeah. get stories like ragnarok told in video yeah. games no, there's I, something not... to be said about generic sevens not being as good as a very interesting five in a way um, yeah i could understand that yeah yeah that's kind of where I'm at now. Not, and I'm not. This game story is freaking bonkers compared to uh, well reasoned, well characterized. Well, like we haven't story, talked like about it. War, We've but... like not talked at all about the story in this game. Really, it's just like, why? It's just yeah. shit, and it's overly <laughs> complicated, and it's written bad. Do you know right? oh, did, I think we... this game is getting away with it, kind yeah. of. Oh, yeah, we didn't get into the whole keys thing. I, I almost wanted to go Pepe Silvia on the freaking, hmm. uh, which the alpha keys, the beta connectors, and the, the alpha connectors, and the master it's key. It's so and, complex. And they and they like, chose what? to do this. There's so many <laughs> yeah. moving parts and people and doohickeys and whatchamawoodsits in this plot. And then they dump it all on you in these, the, the, these horrifically poorly paced narrative con dumps. And then it's just like, oh, I can't keep up with this. And, and I, I don't care about anybody in this universe, including yeah. myself. So I just don't even, like, I don't <laughs> care. Just stop I, talking I, about the story. Do something simple. I, I went through it uh, after I played it. I went through it on my Forge. So if anyone wants to hear that, go there. I'm not going to do it here because it's going to take like an hour. And I don't want to right now. <laughs> but it, uh, you, I had to use like extra sources and just draw my own conclusions it's it's a fucking mess and it's a it's an interesting thing because i've been a fan of uh ken levine's games for a long long time i played uh, system shock 2 on launch i played you know the games he worked on earlier and looking glass studios like thief and things like that so i'm like a big fan of this type of this type of game and one thing that uh ken levine said that was very interesting about uh system shock 2 and bioshock and the games like that especially you know you can use bioshock as a reference if you didn't play system shock 2 but uh, he his he had a very interesting point about betrayals in video game stories, and he said that his biggest challenge in those kind of games were was figuring out a way to betray the player, not the main character. And that the difference between that is that you can see that uh, P three is being betrayed like ten minutes into the game. Like you can tell that his boss is not up to any good. We know this game's things, Bioshock. Yeah, like we can tell that things are are. He's like extremely gullible until like the very end. And he just believes, oh, boss would never do that. Even though the entire, mm -hmm. all of these robots are shooting lasers at me. Uh, robots are safe. Why would they robots ever attack people, right? What well, this is not a very good betrayal of the player, but Bioshock was a really good betrayal of the actual player. Cause you believed that you were doing, you were helping the good guy and you were doing the right thing. And you were kind of deceived the entire time. Now, yeah. was there a little bit of a trick there to kind of make that happen with the whole brainwashing thing? Sure, but there was still an effective twist in that you were led to believe one thing, but were actually betrayed, where I don't feel for a second that I'm kind of on the same page as, as P3. I think P3 is, despite all their efforts, to make P3 kind of, P3 is trying to voice all of the, the player's complaints of like, oh, this is an annoying thing. Why am I having to do this? But it's not ever, uh, he's never really voicing the player's concern about the story. Like, oh, you know what? I think everybody is super, super sus and uh, and everybody's going to betray me. And uh, robots are actually super unsafe and they're going to kill everybody. <laughs> Which is basically what everybody's thinking in the entire game. Well, yeah, because like uh, my chat when I was getting close and close to the end, it's like, oh, you ready for the like loads of twists? I was just like, I don't know, whatever. <laughs> Like, oh, yeah, it's like you're, you're, it's having, oh, look, remembering everyone's names is already a big ask. So, yeah, yeah, <laughs> moving the wheel oh, actually got me unstuck. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I nice. think I get stuck again, though. Yeah, here we go. I think, like, rocket. one of the big elements and takeaways is that, like, you know, you just make a 
it's a really simple story. If it was literally yeah. just, we got to stop the robots, and you meet some people that help you do that, and that's yeah. it. There's none of this, none of this collective 2.0, none of this Sechenev, none of this Molotov, none, none of that stuff. Just fuck it. Oh no, we're in Soviet Russia, and in Soviet Russia, robots attack you, and we have to stop them. And there's a big red button in an underground complex we have to press to shut the robots down. <laughs> yeah. Oh no, there's a big boss guarding the big red button. Oh, cool, we killed him, and now we press the button. Awesome, now the day is saved, and it's the credits. Like, you it's better. It's just they better. do have a they do have a big red button, but it's it's a person, and you have to hunt the guy, which is Petrov, and then he decapitates himself with a robot, and then you take his head and put it in the goop, and I don't then even, they get the I coats. Can, I'm gonna begin <laughs> to understand what all of that was in the story. It's just it's weird. I can oh, wait, tell someone you, but someone you know said like, how did you get stuck here? And it's just like I don't know, man. Just trying to walk around, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> my bad for walking around. I Look at that. Look at that. It's now. like oh, there's a thing down there. He's like oh well, you yeah. fucking got stuck now you broke the game <laughs> nice because yeah, some people was... have the balls to tell me this is my fault <laughs> you can even shoot rockets down there there's space there <laughs> no supposedly for the transverse look at my little matter. goompy like, legs just you. trying to like move imagine people watching the cameras right now being like what the fuck is he doing? <laughs> <laughs> i think that that test dummy is broken this is weird <laughs> This yeah, happened really way too many times. Damaged. I don't know, Miyoshi sounds, looks like a skill issue to me, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> this reminded me for some reason, remember when the game tries to convince you that both P3 and Charles interpreted the directly spoken words combat mode as like... just? Oh, I remember phrase? that. That's retarded. That's so funny. It's like, wait, wait it actually meant combat mode? Oh, okay. Did that be translation? <laughs> uh, maybe. maybe. I, I don't. Yeah, I just feel like that. Dumb that's the rest of everything. Yeah, the that's rest of everything. Yeah, I didn't think yeah. they actually meant combat mode when they said combat mode. Weird. When, when does us look at uh, Portal for a game of like, okay, keep it minimal. Just keep up like maybe one character and just have oh. an interesting scenario and just like that would work so much better than overcomplicated. Do you know um, this this room right now is like four different rooms that uh, you have to move through to get all the way over to the other end, like. The idea is like security is the in-universe justification for this. Like this is a big secure way to do it. Yeah. And it's just like, no fucking way you'd have this. <laughs> well, they you acknowledge wouldn't. that in game. He's talking with Charles and he's like, why not just have like a code to get through the door? And they're like, oh, oh yeah, they codes, talk about codes that. Codes could, could get hacked. He's like, and then P3 says, well, yeah, but all this way, all they have to do is solve the puzzle and they can get through. And they just sort of lampshade it and just be like, okay. It's not even. I wasn't even going to go with the idea of having a puzzle versus having a code. It's the look at the fucking level of material you need here to do all of yeah, this. Compare it to like just having a safe door. Think of the price. Yeah, like, you need yeah a door that takes two keys. Ooh, this is because they have secure. some interesting puzzles in here, and they could frame it around. Okay, this is basically a physical Turing test. This is a way to keep robots out, and only humans they have could, the capacity they, to figure things out. Like. Well, they could have just not fucking said anything and not talked about <laughs> yeah. it at all. And it's everyone's game playing this game. game and they're on video game brain mode. And then they don't even really think about it until maybe later. But by then, it's too late. They've already gotten through it and they're playing the video game. Too it's way better than trying to just you. Ah. all this madness yeah. in a weird way. <laughs> yeah, like, like, yeah, their framing actually probably makes it worse because the, it's yeah, modern it video game thinking. Sure. It's, it's mo modern video game thinking is like, oh, anything that is kind of weird and, and could create some sort of uh, ludonarrative dissonance has to be explained within the lore. So let's just say this is a really complicated door code and only people and all are really smart or whatever. To it, though. <laughs> And yeah, yeah. it hyper focuses it out. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, oh, I wasn't thinking about that, but now that you pointed it out, yeah, that is kind of silly. It's like yeah, it, it's so... like if if you're playing a thief, it's like a stealth mission, and all mm. the cameras are looking at you. See, now that they know I'm here, that, that now that I I can, no one will think about me. Like, no, it's not how it works. <laughs> yeah, just say this is like a a. Uh, uh prefabricated house factory and you're just navigating it by rotating the, the rotors or something like that say something yeah let's you could come up with something maybe if you had to or you could this could yeah. just be a weird fucking weird ass room in this crazy <laughs> upside down topsy-turvy world of killer robots and then we just don't talk about it which is better than doing what they did Sorry, bad. so yeah atomic yeah, heart atomic heart. Atomic what heart. a game <laughs> A real, mix bag. a real bag of mix. 
Mm. Yep. All right. Overwritten. We did it. Over, uh, overed. Good. <laughs> over, over, right. And nice, next time on EFF Gaming, Resident Evil 4 remake. Oh, oh boy. Yay. When does that come out? Uh, a few weeks, I think. You went right. first, I think, was it or something? Oh, that's a question I thought. Or okay. is it? Or was it 20? I don't know. 20, Maybe I'm 20, 24th is Resident Evil. And oh, okay, there you go. Weeks. Last of Us on PC. And there's something else that comes out on the 24th. Days. Oh, John Wick 4 comes out on the 24th. Yay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, Chris, Chris Gore said it's yeah, the Chris best Gore one was. since the first one. He said it's better than two and three. So, uh, mm -hmm. you know, maybe, maybe. But it's also almost three hours long. So that yeah, is time. Is I agree. <laughs> are, we gonna, are we going to discover that all animals and cats and dogs are also assassins too? Hopefully. I, of course they maybe they'll bring back girl John Wick. Who knows? <laughs> maybe they'll bring back cats versus dogs and it's a cinematic universe. <laughs> We've got to watch oh cats God. and dogs. You in the cats theater, look dogs. under your seat. That's right. You're an assassin too. It's just like a <laughs> they all have a gun for everybody. In the everybody, theater. everybody gets a. There text may be legal the issues here. <laughs> if you okay, can kill so Keanu Reeves, then we're gonna go. Yeah, no, everyone has to kill Keanu Reeves. That is just the John Wick before John Wick Five. Yeah. Um, so we're gonna go. Yeah, from... just rename it. Everyone has to kill <gasps> Keanu Reeves One. Yeah. Everyone has to kill <laughs> Keanu Reeves Two. Well, I'll we'll go from left to right, guests first, and then hosts. You're going to well. talk about what you're up to in your day to day lives on your YouTubes and where people can find you, okay? What's the nice thing? That, that's allowed. Is that, is that me then? I that is you something. first. What are you okay. doing? Tell Whoa. people now. <laughs> okay. I wasn't sure for the same sequence for, for everybody. Uh, I'm in the middle of two videos. Uh, probably my big video is mm. um, for anybody who. who likes the 80s i'm doing a big retrospective on miami vice and all the stuff it's inspired so like gta vice city uh hotline miami things like that so it's gonna be kind of like a probably an hour or so long video fairly deep dive uh documentary thing like that another mm -hmm. video i'm doing is um uh kind of somewhat topical because diablo 4 is coming out as a sort of a uh diablo 3 what went wrong kind of thing like uh the long and story development of Diablo 3 and how they kind of basically developed in-house and kept on iterating and iterating and iterating until it kind of became something like a monster. So just kind of digging through a bunch of BlizzCon footage and things like that. For those people interested in that kind of game, that's going to be kind of a side video and then Miami Vice probably later in the year. Wow. Yeah, Wait. sounds cool. That's Indigo Gaming, yes? Yep. See Link you. in the description. Mark, what are you yes. doing? Hello, everybody. I'm Mark the Cyborg. I have a YouTube channel called Mark the Cyborg. And if you're um, one of the um, EFAP audience members who who like anime, I know there's not tons of anime stuff Ugh. that happens here, but uh, <laughs> the Attack on Titan is uh, starting up again. I believe uh, Dev was a little late for this episode because he was watching the episode. It's probably what I'm going to watch wow. now. And on Monday evening at 7 p.m. Eastern, we're going to have a stream that'll be me, my wife, X-Ray Girl, uh, Lofty Pixels, and uh, my friend KJ, who uh, doesn't have a channel, but, you know, he, he, he knows his stuff when it comes to the uh, animated Japanese motion picture series. But, uh, yeah, that, that's all, and thanks again for the invite. And no problem. Had a good time, as always, and sorry about the growling puppies. <laughs> <laughs> Moo, what are you up to, mate? Hey, hello, hello. Uh, I'm just uh, chugging along. I mean, people might have noticed there was no Forge this week. So ah. what's, what's what's going on? And uh, there's probably no Forge next week as well. Yours. Because this is, I'm, I'm, I'm working on something else right now. I'm not going to tell what it is yet. Uh, but I'm working on more scripted content uh, that should hopefully come out faster in the future. Of course, as you're idea. explaining that, I get a face full of crotch. On screen. <laughs> yeah, I just saw that as well. <laughs> Here's some scripted content. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I'm uh, I'm working on that. Uh, we'll see. Maybe maybe I'll have more news next uh, over the next week. We'll see. Mm. So yeah, next forge is probably going to be uh, the John Wick Four one. Uh, and yeah, I'm I'm playing Wu Long on stream though. I still do some some gorming yeah. trumbles. So I've uh, been playing it most of this show. <laughs> Ooh. No, well, look at you. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm probably play playing some more of that tomorrow. Just playing some Wulong, Fallen Dynasty, Chinese demon man people with uh, ancient Han Dynasty. Yeah, that's that's it. Check it out. And... We are about China. 
video? Uh, you know the deal with me. Uh, writing convincing arguments that are well considered is hard. Uh, to stay away. <laughs> <laughs> you can find Theo's videos in broken up script format on Discord. <laughs> <laughs> It's really, hard. it's really hard to be found. We need to find an editor to just go through and just piece together the Theo yeah, videos. Cool. <laughs> like, no, seriously, there's some gold here. We just got to get someone to copy and paste all the right things. We've got like three to four different uh, Google Docs that I just type in from time to time, and <laughs> I like the discipline to actually finish anything, so that's great. Uh, bring your rags. What about you, lads? Oh um, gosh, um, I've got some things that I'm starting to work on in the background, but I uh, won't really say what they are quite yet. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think everyone will uh, will like it once they start to come to fruition and get uh, put out there. I, th I think people will like it. I like fruit. Uh, I'm fruit, working, fruit but great. the I guess the the relevant update is uh, the e f EFAP TV for Mando season three. I'm working on it. Uh, they are going to be uh, exclusively uh, edited by Fringy for the most part. I yeah, imagine the finale so, we yeah. might do half and half because that's going to be like twice as long, more than likely. Yeah. So ideally, the goal is going to be to make sure that those are those are done um, before the next episode comes out. But that's what that's what I'm working on right now. Um, and, um, so yeah. Yeah, and it's with because like I did the Last of Us one solely, and so it's if he's working on well, Amanda ones. Last of Us is still ongoing. Yeah. So. There's no way to, but I mean, in terms of you guys, you're going to be getting lots of EFAP TV. Well, so, right? why not announce it? For, if anyone watches Real BBC, I was I was forced to watch the Gotham Knights trailer, and, uh, <laughs> and it would seem yeah, like yeah. Uh, I will be too busy to edit anything if we did that, and Fringy will be editing Mando, so it's impossible. Unless, of course, and he has agreed, meme repository to edit. EFAP TV Gotham Knights. So that will very likely be coming to your viewing pleasure. And and the obvious question Yay. I think some people will highlight, we'll probably mention it in the first episode. It's like, well, how could you be watching that and not finishing Batwoman? Batwoman is Das Bullshit's realm, and they are still being produced. I I'm not gonna say how many, but there are thing that there, there are Batwomans available. We've been keeping up a tradition almost of them being between each of the anniversary parts. And that'll likely continue until they're all finished, and then we'll find a way to deliver them to you. But, you know, Batwoman will be finished eventually. It will. Um, but the point, the broader point is, you're getting a lot of EFAP TVs, all right? So, well, and then, chill out. Uh, the minis are all getting <laughs> created as well, and uh, we're still yeah. ahead. Uh, we still need to take a gap. Mm -hmm. And that's probably going to happen when The Last of Us finishes up and I release the Supercut. I'll probably uh, yeah. take a week off then, and we might be back up to normal at that point, but... Whoa. Yeah, it's uh, I th we've been doing pretty okay in terms of topics. We've been all over the place lately. There's a lot fun. of stuff, and yeah, um, lots of media coming out, so that's, that's oh, handy. and EFAP movies. Good God, you guys might be getting yeah, the tidal so wave of EFAP movies as soon as everything's <laughs> in order. Yeah, I was about to say, I'm also working on a little e EFAP, a little EFAP movies <laughs> and EFAP movies, um, but I'll keep that one a surprise for now, which one that'll be. Mm -hmm. So plenty of things on the way uh but for now we're gonna we're gonna sign out and in, uh, like i said for, as for super chats we'll continue to release all of them at least once per week and they're gonna be as between like two and five hour segments i'd imagine it just seems to better work with segmenting everything that way especially because it doesn't create more overflow um but obviously we appreciate every last kind message and uh, for keeping us company this whole time we like to know i know a lot of you say it out there that you want more gaming efabs and it's good to know that they are interested in it's just that uh we try and find them that fit here and there especially with games that we can mm. show some interest in instead of just playing something that's out that's new like we yes. like none of us gave a shit about hogwarts i'm sorry we just yeah, didn't I just care, don't care. It's, i'm not sorry care. harry potter well, it's I, so sorry. <laughs> I didn't give a shit about it but i actually played x-ray girls copy with steam family sharing and i, I finished the whole game it's actually all right, all okay, right. it's a lot like an arkham game it's it's an arkham game if you're a wizard instead of batman oh okay um <laughs> Why is that Batman right. isn't a wizard? Uh, all right, well, the first one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Besides With that, enough preparation. That exactly the I same. Think, <laughs> I think a lot of people need to also remember that watching a bad movie is a two hour investment, and right. playing a game is a 15, 18, yeah. 20 hour investment. So just consider that. It's one of the reasons why there probably won't be as many gaming EFAPs as well. It's just that it takes like 10 times the length to go through a game and 
play it and you know that sort of thing so just oh Especially, we gotta pick him wisely we gotta really pick those games bad. wisely i think, I think yes. we need to get good it might just be a skill issue honestly. oh that's right <laughs> yeah, just, just ah, complete a game in like an hour it's easy it's it's speed speed run. Run. yeah I did, did scale the... Atomic Heart down from its highest difficulty once I saw how damaged spongy the enemies were with that initial melee weapon you get. So, yeah, that's the kind of thing I hate. Like... I don't like spongy enemies. A I started, I started a normal, and then I went up to maximum when I when I uh, basically maxed out most of the skill trees because I was grinding so much for items I couldn't pick up. <laughs> 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 so I eventually just cranked yeah. it up to the top. So I did like the last probably two three hours on the maximum skill uh skill level which basically made the guys a bit hit a bit harder and and a little more tanky but wasn't a huge difference really um when yeah, is moobly doobly gonna play og re4 so if if new re4 is coming out in 19 days then i'll probably do classic in like 10 days from now yeah, uh, yeah. oh yeah, yeah that's oh yeah i need to get on that as well then the yeah. um i recommend already. the re4 hd project uh mod that texture pack is uh, it's uh, the intention the artistic intention of all the original textures is there it just it scales a lot better and it looks well really i think nice. i'm probably gonna stick to is the pc raw vision just so that the the change to the new one will be as high oh, okay. as yeah. possible you know uh I'll try and remember and learn everything so that we can see how it all changes, and then we'll do an EFAP episode yeah, on it soon after, I imagine. Anyway, <laughs> thank you all for joining us. I hope you have a good evening, uh, afternoon, or morning, whatever it may be. Take care now. Uh, Toodle pip and cheerio. Goodbye, guys. everybody. Bye, we'll everybody. see you later. Bye. And oh, I'll give you one last crispy critters for the road. No. And no. Quan critters. critters. Oh boy, them critters sure are crispy. Not me though. I'm fluffy <laughs> and soft.